Good morning, afternoon, and evening gamers. The boys and I are here to take you on a journey through the Mass Effect trilogy. Joe, Donald, y'all locked in? Hell yeah, Barack. I'm ready to save the galaxy from the Reapers once again, so long as Sleepy Joe doesn't hold us back from success. We haven't even started the damn game yet, and you're already trying to beef, Donald. We're beefing because you think we're playing as a goody-good paragon when Renegade is the way to go. I am not going to let you dictate things here, Donald. This is a joint effort, and you're in my house. Welcome yeah, all right, buddy. It won't be your house after I win it back in a year. And That's we're already off to a riveting start. Let's just get things started here. The boys and I will take turns playing in each episode. Donald won our rock, paper, scissors competition earlier, so he's first. Thank God for that. I'll set us on the right path early on. My first order of business will be creating the most accurate version of Shepard possible, which is a male, renegade, soldier Shepard. Female Shepard is just as valid as male Shepard. I want to romance Ashley, and that means I have to go male. Donald, we're going to go male Shepard because we're all dudes but you are absolutely not going to have full input in how we customize Shepard. All right, fine, I can be a team player so long as the two of you don't try to make okay. Shepard into some kind of loser. Okay, now what are we gonna name this guy? Just leave it as the default name and move on. Why would we leave it as some boring crap like John Shepard? Commander Shepard deserves a first name that has character, a good strong name like Donald. We are not naming Shepard after you. And because I don't want to be here for seven hours arguing about which first name we should give him when no one even uses it. Luckily for you, I already thought of this. Let me see the keyboard, Donald. What the... What is that supposed to be, Barden Joe? Jesus Christ, Barack, how long did it take you to figure that out? Bro, all you wanted to do was name Shepard after yourself. At least all three of us are represented here. Barton Joe Shepard will go on to save the galaxy from the threat of the Reapers. I'm not gonna lie to you, Barry. You were not cooking when you came up with that name. Shut up. If we had things your way, we'd be calling him John. Data corruption detected. Please reconstruct profile. Spacer. Dog, can you let the options appear first? Why are you trying to speed run the customization? And why would we pick Spacer when Earthborn is a significantly better origin, especially because we are Earthborn? Spacer clears on the basis that you get to speak to Mama Shepard. Just break even with Colonist. Your origin barely matters outside of a specific quest line. Okay, well, I'm picking Soul Survivor so I can relate with Ashley being the sole survivor of her unit on Eden Prime. Why are you so convinced that we're romancing Ashley? What if we end up with Liara? Or, and hear me out, we romance no one at all and hook up with Miranda in Mass Effect 2. We're not waiting until the end of Mass Effect 2 to get a romance scene. Well, I'm gonna pursue Liara while I'm playing. Joe, I will destroy you if you sabotage my relationship with Ashley. Donald, you already get to play first. You're letting Joe and I have some input. And I say, we go the ruthless route. Okay, well now I get to pick something and I say we play Mass Effect 1 as a Sentinel. Hell no! We're not playing Mass Effect 1 on that boring ass class. Can't you at least wait until Mass Effect 2 when it's good? Donald, it is Joe's turn to pick something. And if he wants to pick Sentinel, then that's the way it has to be. This is literally not even at all. All I've picked is Shepard's gender, which doesn't even matter. You're letting Joe set the gameplay for us. We should play Vanguard so we can be ready to play it when it gets really good in Mass Effect 3. Donald, I'll tell you what. You let me pick Sentinel here and I'll let you romance Ashley without any resistance. I'm gonna hold you to that, Joe. You betray me and I'll make you regret it. There you see, we don't have to fight about this. All we gotta do is compromise where possible. Aha, but now I get to select shotguns, so I get to play what is basically a Vanguard class. If all you wanted was shotguns, we didn't need to make the deal, Donald. You would have gotten to pick it anyway. No take backs, Joe. That's the art of the deal for you. Always trade so you come out ahead. For what it's worth, shotguns will make up for Sentinel's lack of damage, so it's not the worst pick in the world. All right, well, now we're at the part that gets complicated. Barry, I'm going to let you know right now we're not making Shepard black like you always do. That's fine with me, Joe, but why did you say black all hard like that? Bro, let that 20th century Joe Biden slip out there for a second. Wrap it up, Donald. I need to get to bed, and I'm not trying to watch you mess with the face sliders all day. What do you mean you need to get to bed? We're like four damn minutes into the recording. Screw it. If we can't agree on how Shepard should look, we might as well do the most unique thing we can manage. Now Shepard has red skin. This Shepard is about to look awful. Wait, why are you making him so old, Barry? Because the two of you bring the average age of this group from well-aged to completely geriatric. Bro said he's well-aged. Barack, my boy, I've seen pictures of you with your shirt off. The dad bod is slowly becoming a grandpa belly. You look at my shirtless photos often, Donald, or was that just on the one occasion? Just checking to see if my boys are looking good, and I'm not gonna lie to you, Barack, I'm not impressed. Yeah, all right, brother. 
Don't think I didn't see you lie about your weight. Donald really said he's 215. What you trying to hide? Donald, if you're 215 pounds, then I'm an even 120. All right, all right. Finalize the customization so we can finally start the game. I There's stopped paying attention. What the hell kind of shepherd is this? The best kind. Red skin, blue eyes, and purple hair. It fits all three of us. Ain't no way Ashley's gonna lay up with this abomination. No need to judge a book by its cover. Donald Barden Joe Shepherd is a goat who will have no problem pulling a romance in this game. Well, they'll definitely stand out looking like they fell out of a space clown car. All right, what difficulty are we gonna play on? Insanity. Normal. No, if we play on insanity, this playthrough is cooked. We'll never get it done. No, you'll never get it done, Joe. I'll slam insanity, no problem. You, on the other hand, are very uninspiring. Joe, today's the day you get through the series on insanity. Even if Donald and I have to hold your hand two thirds of the way. Well, if we end up stuck somewhere for several months, I don't wanna hear no belly aching, I warned you. All right, game is finally set up, Donald. You have full control now. At least with this origin story, I'll have all the justification I need to destroy every Batarian in my line of sight. Well, you needed a Come reason to Shepard. slaughter Batarians? Not You're really, but it's comments. nice to be reminded that Batarians get everything they deserve. All right, enough yapping. Iconic moment ahead. Slavers attacked Mindwar. He got most of his unit killed on Torfin. He gets the job done, no matter what the cost. Is that the kind of person we want protecting the galaxy? Nah, man, is that the kind of That's haircut kind of you want protecting the galaxy? the galaxy? Bros Barber really f his shit right, up. You're just mad you could never pull it off like Barden Joe Shepard. Barry, I'm telling you, man, that name really is not it. Just for that, I'm gonna keep referring to the player character by their full name for the duration of the playthrough. We're not even 10 minutes in and this is already turning into a train wreck. Anyway, do you guys think we'll still be around in the year 2148? Will we be around more than 100 years in the future? Gonna take a wild guess and say no. Joe, before worrying about getting to 2148, why don't you focus on making it through 2024? I gotta get through 2024 so I can see that brand new shiny Nintendo Switch console. Another Nintendo console that runs on hardware that can barely hit 30 FPS. You're just mad the Switch outsold the PS4 and has better games than the PS5. Goddamn man, I've experienced this opening more times than I can count and I never get tired of it. You know, it's pretty crazy that Mass Effect is filled with cutscenes with no way to skip them and no one cares. Only Zoomers with the attention span of a small dog need skippable cutscenes. What's the rush? Just sit back and relax. I kind of get the need for skippable cutscenes, but it's true people fly through games these days. People have already got 100% completion on Spider-Man 2. Like, goddamn, did you even taste the game? That's because Spider-Man 2 is like 18 hours long and people think that's going to beat Baldur's Gate 3 for game of the year. Baldur's Gate is too hard. It wouldn't be hard if you'd learn how to read your damn abilities. Okay, you know what? The way Shepard looks is kind of growing on me. I told you, Barton Joe Shepard can absolutely pull whenever he wants. It takes true confidence in yourself to look like that, and there's nothing sexier than confidence. I'll concede on Shepard's appearance, but a mishmash of our names is a wide miss. Going back to what you said before, Donald, I'm surprised to hear you like Baldur's Gate. Personally, I think Tears of the Kingdom will win it all. More like Tears of Boredom. Nintendo really sold y'all a $70 DLC and you ate it up. Ain't no way people are still calling Tears a $70 DLC. Brussels. Prove me wrong. Shepard. Donald, you didn't even play Tears. You just looked at Shepard. clips on TikTok. Doesn't matter because we all know Pikmin 4 is all the true game of the year. Another Nintendo baby game. Bro, you don't know nothing about Pikmin. The game would break you harder than Elden Ring and Sekiro put together. Joe, I'm not hearing you talk about FromSoft titles when you can't even beat Mass Effect on its highest difficulty. Nihilus gave you a compliment, so you hate him. There's Caden Alenko putting a damper on a peak opening to the trilogy by being a total wet blanket. I always forget that Caden is technically Shepard's first and longest serving squad mate, yet manages to be among the least popular because he's a boring human. Well, of course, you're in a sci-fi space universe who's trying to spend time with the humans. Show me the hot aliens. We'll bang, okay? You know, Commander Shepard never actually says, we'll bang, okay, right? Everyone got that from an old YouTube poop forever ago. Damn, you really had to be in the trenches back then cutting random pieces of dialogue so you could make characters say random BS. So now artificial intelligence allows you to come up with whatever you want. Status report. Just cleared the mass relay, Captain. Stealth systems engaged. Everything looks solid. Good. Find a comm buoy and link us into the network. I want mission reports relayed back to Alliance Brass before we reach Eden Prime. Aye, aye, Captain. Better brace yourself, sir. I think Nihilus is headed your way. He's already here, Lieutenant. Tell Commander Shepard to meet me in the calm room for a debriefing. You get that? Don't commander? be an asshole, Donald. I am the renegade. I treat everyone right. with complete you disdain. The off and now I'm going to pay for it. Don't blame me. The captain's always in a bad mood. 
Only when he's talking to you, Joker. Wait, why the hell did I get Paragon points for that? You picked the option where you agreed that Nihilus being on the ship was suspicious. Goddamn, from moment one, the Paragon Renegade system is terrible. Agreeing with a correct observation is Paragon? Stop by and talk to Navigator Presley. I don't know why it's not like Presley ever has anything to add. Basically, all of this man's dialogue is right Commander. here in this Looks conversation. Like we had a smooth run. You heading down to see the captain? I'm on my way to give him a status update right now. Gotta say, they sir. missed an opportunity not making Presley a bigger part of the team, the especially when he becomes Shepard's second-in-command on the Normandy. Presley might officially be our XO, but my second-in-command is Garrus and always will be. Spectres are elite operatives, top covert agents. Why send a Spectre, a Turian Spectre, on a shakedown run? It doesn't add up. I'm not gonna lie to you, I'm not trying to hear about Presley's worries. You gotta listen to Presley's words for the immersion, Donald, even if it's information we already know. No shot you go through every dialogue tree every time you play. He does, every single time I caught Barry playing Mass Effect, he was listening to the most long-winded dialogue from D-list NPC characters. Well, we're not doing that while I'm holding the reins. Don't come crying to me when you're missing crucial information. It's okay, because a far superior NPC stands before us, Richard Leroy think, Jenkins. Commander? We won't be staying on Eden Prime too long, will we? I'm itching for some real action. I sincerely hope you're kidding, Corporal. Your real action usually ends with me patching up crew members in the infirmary. Marines are meant to fight. You just fix us up. Hey, hey, gun. watch the attitude I with Dr. Chuck Westano. She don't know you, little bro. I'll I've speak to her however I want. That, but it's foolish to go looking for trouble. You could both take a lesson from the captain. He's not afraid of combat, but he knows the value of restraint, too. Sorry, Doc, but this waiting's killing me. I've never been on a mission like this before, not one with a Spectre on board. Good Lord, he looks like a beet. How the fuck his lips the same shade of color as the rest yeah, of his face? Stop talking about my glorious king, Barden Joe Shepard, like that. The glazing is insane. Everybody knows what you can do. This is my big chance. I need to show the brass what I can do. You're young, Corporal. You have a long career ahead of you. Don't do something stupid to mess it up. Worry, I'm surprised sir. they didn't We're just stick a red shirt on Jenkins with how obvious this is. The it's waiting. the hat. Notice how no one besides Jenkins is ever wearing that cap. I mean, listen, with that name, he's either going to be the biggest badass in the galaxy or he's going to be dead within the next five minutes. No in-between on this. Nihilus was an underutilized NPC, in my opinion. I agree. I think we should have gotten a mission or two with him before he fumbles on Eden Prime. The last thing we need is another bird stinking up the place. I think Nihilus has a decent background. Born in a mercenary outpost and forced to join the military. Being an outsider made Nihilus' time there difficult, but he was still top of his class. Plus, he survived an encounter with Samara, which is pretty crazy. Yeah, because he ran like a coward, bro wouldn't run the ones with Samami. But how safe is it, really? It'll be fine as long as Alliance Parliament doesn't try to tax them on tea. The last time one of our empires did that, the colony turned around and kicked their ass. Does the United States even still exist in Mass Effect? Canada still does, and there's no way the USA fell before them, so it's still around. This mission is far more than a simple shakedown run. I already figured that out. We're making a covert pickup on Eden Prime. That's why we needed the stealth systems operational. What's the payload, Captain? A research team on Eden Prime unearthed some kind of beacon during an excavation. It was Prothean. What else can you tell me? This is Big Shepard. The last time humanity made a discovery like this, it jumped our technology forward 200 years. But Eden Prime doesn't have the facilities to handle something like this. We need to bring the beacon back to the Citadel for proper study. Obviously, this goes beyond mere human interests, Commander. If the Asari are any example, then finding a beacon on one of our planets is a human interest. It's not like any of the other Council races would have done anything with the warning the Protheans leave us. The Turian Counselor could have had the warning grafted into the folds of his brain, and he would still dismiss the claims by the time we reach Mass Effect 2. Nihilus isn't just here for the beacon. He's also here to... Since when do we answer to the Spectres? You're smart enough to know how things work, Commander. The Alliance has been pushing for this... Renegade Shepard really does prioritize being an asshole over being intelligent. Does this version of Shepard look like the kind of guy that wastes time thinking? I'm just matching appearances. I imagine Barden Joe Shepard is the tough but lovable type. Probably has a pet cat or something back home. how far the Alliance has come. I was impressed when I studied the reports from Torfin. A grim business, but you got the job done. That's why I put your name forward as a candidate for the Spectres. 
The concept of specters is crazy. Hey, bro, you committed a war crime. Why don't we give you nearly unlimited power and authority within Citadel space? The crazy part isn't that Shepard kills all the Batarians on Torfan, even the ones who surrendered. The crazy part is that Shepard got a lot of their own people killed as well. On top of that, the loss of so many soldiers drew Shepard's commanding officer at the time, Major Kyle, totally insane. Transmission from Eden Prime, sir. You better see this. Bring it up on screen. You'd think video footage in the 22nd century wouldn't look like you filmed it using the camera on the Nintendo DSi. In their defense, this is probably being transmitted from light years away. We are under attack, taking heavy casualties. Me and the boys watching the most insane video posted on Live Leak circa 2007. Not enough gore in this video for it to be posted on Live Leak Donald. Damn, look at the flaming crater down there. Must have been a wild gender reveal party. Somebody was doing some serious digging here, Captain. Your team's the muscle in this operation, Commander. Go in heavy and head straight for the dig site. What about survivors, Captain? Helping survivors is a secondary objective. The beacon's your top priority. Approaching drop point one. Nihilus, you're coming with us? I die faster on my own. On my own. I'll put a little respect on Nihilus's name. At least he understands ahead. that the only gun you need is a shotgun. The mission. Otherwise, I want radio silence. Ready and able, sir. The mission's yours now, Shepard. Good luck. At long last, it's time for me to feast. My Shepherd taste for blood can't be sated. Fun fact, Jenkins can apparently equip any armor in the game, but it won't show any visual differences. How do you even figure stuff like that out? Probably messing with the save editor or something. Hey, Donald, you're gonna wanna go to the right and go pick up the gun modification that's hidden there. Oh God, don't tell me you're gonna backseat us all game. If you're gonna miss crucial pickups, then I absolutely am. Yeah, I'm sure this high caliber barrel one was super crucial. Barry's about to have us out here looking through every uncharted world. Hey, whoa, whoa, Donald, what did the gas bags do to you? The longer I go without killing some geth, the more of the gas bags I wipe out, even if I have to exterminate the total population. You guys think gas bags make good pets? They would if Donald weren't shooting them. Yeah, they make good pets right up until they bump into your wall, and suddenly your entire house is filled with a toxic gas. If filling your house with a toxic gas were enough to preclude something from being a pet, then it's a wonder why Melania hasn't kicked you to the curb yet. You're implying that I smell bad? Yeah, never mind the part where he said you're Melania's pet. You know, Shepard is kind of the one who sent Jenkins out to die. There is a cut dialogue line where Shepard tells Jenkins to take the lead, too. Jenkins! How dare they do that to the young lord? Bro, Donald, you shot that gas bag instead of the drone. Indiscriminate destruction. Wait, that's it? I need more. If only we'd been a bit faster, we could have saved Jenkins. It's our fault. We weren't worthy of having him on our squad. We'll see that he receives wow, Donald, the Paragon the option, what's come over you? But I'm just showing Jenkins a little bit of proper respect. Aye, aye, sir. Our morality is going to be so split by the end of this. Well, that won't really be a problem in Mass Effect 1 as long as we all agree to put our points into the Intimidate stat. I don't want to put points into Intimidate. Charm is better. Joe, we're going to need to commit to one of them if we want this to go well. See, Joe, this is how you do it on Insanity. Bro, it's Eden Prime, not Vermeer. Nothing you're doing is that impressive. Donald out here really trying to end the gas bags as a species. Now here comes my wife, the glorious and attractive America First Ashley Williams. Interesting that Ashley's shields held up to the drone blast, but they apparently ripped right through Jenkins. That dude kind of looks like he's enjoying whatever those geth are doing to him. Uh, never mind. I think the bots saw the term blow your back out and took it literally. Oh 
Oh my god, Eden Prime sucks. You get a taste of combat and then it's over before you can even enjoy it. You were popping off when you realized that you were getting to play first. We were patrolling the perimeter when the attack hit. We tried to get off a distress call, but they cut off our communications. I've been fighting for my life ever since. Uh, I just noticed Ashley's left eye is facing one direction while her right eye is facing forward. God damn you, Barack. I'll never be able to unsee that now. I guess Ashley has a prosthetic eye and no one ever noticed it. Any idea what kind of enemy we're facing? I think they're Geth. There's a crate with some scorpion armor on your right, Donald. Barack, shut the f up. I know there's a crate there. It's in plain sight. I think the B in Big B Obama must stand for backseater. Has anyone ever stopped to ask how the Geth spikes turn people into husks? They're called dragon's teeth. And no, the lore behind these things isn't exactly clear. They just convert victims into husks. It's got them looking like the old lady from the chocolate episode of SpongeBob SquarePants. I remember when they first invented chocolate. Sweet, sweet chocolate. Who the hell is they? You remember when they invented chocolate back in 1900 BC? Apparently I can't quote one of the most iconic SpongeBob scenes without y'all making it about my age. You know, Donald, I respect the energy with which you play, but that balls to the wall business isn't going to work once we get off Eden Prime. See, that's your problem, Barack. You think holding right up in a corner somewhere is how you play this Bio, game? But side. me personally, I go say. balls deep. Maybe we'll know Haven't you heard the saying? What did you just call me? Donald, did you just have a fucking stroke? What was that? It means hesitation is defeat. Haven't either of you played Sekiro? Donald, the sound of you speaking Japanese is probably the biggest insult to Japanese people ever. Eh, well, I don't know about that one, Joe. I can think of at least two other pretty big, rather explosive offensives that occurred to Japanese people. Anyway, my point is, if you don't play to win in this game, you will lose. That's why I'm a better player than you, Barack. Not even in your McDonald's-induced fever dreams are you better at Mass Effect than me. Wait, so all I have to do is just hold W and shoot to win? Uh, no, Joe, your problem is a bit more within. Gotta learn how to crawl before you can walk, Sleepy Joe. And needless to say, you're still trying to figure out how to sit yourself upright. Oh, God, you're still alive. This is what happens when you drink the Grimace Shake. Joe, why are you always approximately four months behind on memes? Do people still say Riz and Giet, or did those fall out of favor already? Yes, but we need to leave that sh in 2023 when we get to 2024 because the former was overused back in March and the latter is constantly misused. Barack, I'm not going to lie to you, but backseating the use of slang is the most terminally online thing I've ever heard. As opposed to randomly dropping Sekiro quotes in Japanese? That door is closed. The security locks the gate. Oh, Christ, I forgot about these things. Not going to lie to you all, I'm probably going to mod the Mass Effect 2 versions of these out when we reach them. Humans, thank the Maker. Hurry, close the door before they come back. Oh, it's my boy, Manuel. What are you doing here? So what do you guys I think about the theory that Dr. Manuel here was actually indoctrinated? I think the guy just needs his medication. He definitely has a screw or two loose, and that's coming from me. It was moved to the spaceport earlier this morning. Manuel and I stayed behind to pack up the camp. When the attack came, the Marines held them off long enough for us to hide. They gave their lives to save us. No one is saved. The age of humanity is ended soon. Only ruin and corpses will remain. I mean, he's got to be talking about the Reaper harvesting there. Well, if we can explore his dialogue a little, I think we'll find a bit more insight into just what's wrong with him. Genius and madness are two sides of the same coin. Is it madness to see the future? To see the destruction rushing towards us? To understand there is no escape? No hope? No. I am not mad. I'm the only sane one left. I gave him an extra dose Yeah, all that is cool and all, but I got somewhere I need to be. Oh, come on, Donald. Well, you cannot silence the truth. My voice must be heard. Shepard really swung with everything they had there. That might have been a little extreme, Commander. Shut up, Cage. No one asked. around whacking people in the head. Uh, what's going on with Shepard's movement? Is there a fucking inverted control setting in this game? What the hell? I've come across this bug a few times now. Normally I would just exit the game, but I think it'll go away if you reach the cutscene coming up ahead. Good to see Mass Effect 1 still has its issues. This your favorite game in the trilogy, Barack, for real? Listen, Mass Effect 1 has its issues, but at least it actually has a good ending. 
Jesus, I hope that's the last we see of that. We're just in time to see the elite specter Nihilus Creek take down the big bad guy and save the day on Eden Prime. Real talk, Saren has cybernetics all over his body and no one thought that was weird. As it goes, Saren wasn't supposed to look like this on Eden Prime and only gets his cybernetics after he's implanted later in the game. There's a mod out there that'll make him look normal here. This isn't your mission, Saren. What are you doing here? The Council thought you could use some help on this one. I wasn't expecting to find the Geth here. The situation's bad. Don't worry. I've got it under control. This is what happens when you don't pay attention to the vibes. What is Say whatever you want about Mass Effect 1, but damn if it doesn't have the best landscapes. I won't lie, this is the one area Mass Effect 3 is lacking. You don't get gorgeous views like you do here on Eden Prime. It's crazy because the remaster didn't really improve the game that much. A little flair here and some improved resolution there. But really, Mass Effect 1's art direction is simply peak. I'm surprised the shotgun is working from this distance. It's because of the high caliber barrel one I had you pick up earlier, you're welcome. Yeah, I don't think you're killing the geth from there, Donald. Geth putting up a damn barrier like a coward. Skill issue, Donald. Man, f this. Oh, now he's just going for it. Little bitch, I hope you like my barrel nine inches deep inside your flashlight eye socket. Donald talking to the NPCs like they're a 13 year old in a COD lobby. Joe, if this were a Call of Duty lobby, the things I would say would get this entire channel demonetized the instant the video is uploaded. Also, Barack, you seriously backseated me about two useless pickups, but didn't tell me I needed to use my skill points. Oh no, oh sh**, my bad, Donald. I thought you had it. I thought we didn't want Big B's help anymore. Whatever, man, we got one of the coldest renegade lines coming up here in a second. So these guys are just watching us break into their little hiding space? Everybody not like they can do anything about there. it. We're coming out, we're not armed. Is it safe? Are they gone? We took care of them. Those things were crawling all around the shed. They would have found us for sure. We owe you our lives. Uh, I still can't believe it. When we saw that ship, I thought it was all over. It showed up right before the attack. Knew it was trouble the second I saw it. So we made a break for the sheds. What else can you tell me about the ship you saw? I was too busy running to get a clear look at it. I think it landed over near the spaceport. Tell them about the noise, Cole. That awful noise. It was emitting some kind of signal as it descended. It sounded like the shriek of the damned. Only it was coming from inside your own head. So these guys are probably indoctrinated, at least a little bit. I don't think literally every bit of exposure to Reapers leaves you indoctrinated. Hey, Cole, we're just a bunch of farmers. These guys are soldiers. Maybe we should give them the stuff. Jeez, Blake, you've got to learn when to shut up. You holding out on me, son? If there's something you're not telling me. Some guys in the spaceport were running a small smuggling ring. Nothing major. In exchange for a cut of the profits, we let them store packages in our sheds. You greedy bastard. You weren't running for your life. You were running to check on your merchandise. No, it's not like that. I just, I just knew there were some packages here, something we could use. I found a pistol. Wait, he found a pistol, but he said he was unarmed earlier. This guy lied to us. Yeah, Joe. I don't think weapon smugglers are known for being particularly honest. I'm only going to ask this once. Think long and hard before you lie to me again. Are you sure all you've got is one lousy pistol? Uh, no, no wait, I just remembered. I, I just had it in my pocket. Might as well take that too. That's everything, really. Who's your contact at the spaceport, Cole? What's his name? He's not a bad guy. I don't want to get him in trouble. Besides, I'm not a snitch. Would you rather be a snitch or a corpse? That's a top oh, 10 shepherd line right there. That line was cold as hell. Did I say oh, that I right, know. Barry? Really? You did, Joe. I'm impressed. Keep Let's it up. Try to keep things friendly from here. There's a crate next to the building, Don. I will now be deliberately ignoring any and all further backseating from you, Barack. You're lost, man. You missed a legendary sex scene over there. Okay, well, Barry, I still need you to backseat me when it's my turn. I'll make sure you get through this, Joe, so we can finally get you the insanity achievements. Commander. Poor guy spilled his blue raspberry lemonade Kool-Aid on the floor and just couldn't cope with the loss. Can't blame him. There's no feeling you know worse than preparing a tasty drink for yourself and then spilling the entire thing. Now you're thirsty and have to clean up a mess. 
Wait, don't, don't shoot. I'm one of you. I'm human. Your friends seem to relax. He let his guard down. And Saren killed him. Shot him right in the back. If this happened in 2023, the year of our Lord, this guy would have caught the entire exchange on his phone and the video would have been on the internet with millions of clicks within an hour. For real, I can see the title now. Spectre, Saren Arterius catches Nihilus lacking on Eden Prime. Oh, and what's that? No watermark? This is my best video yet. They killed everyone. Everyone. If I hadn't been behind the crates, I'd be dead too. Your call's contact here on the docks. Your boy That's snitched on you. Ring. What the hell would a bunch of backwater agriculture colonists need what? guns and grenades no. for anyway? Who's the buyer? I mean, maybe they just want to have a good old fashioned American get together to shoot and blow stuff cares. up. Not That's like they have much else to do here on Eden Prime. If they aren't getting attacked by Geth, they're getting attacked by Cerberus. Who'd want to attack Eden Prime? We're just a bunch of farmers. Hasn't How's this guy seen any know? alien movie ever? They always strike the small little American rural grenades. town first. I seriously yeah. don't get why movies yeah. always think yeah. aliens have an My intense interest over, in places like Naperville, Illinois. Too many people died here for you to start jerking me around. Renegade Shepard okay. has the best right. bullshit detector there in the galaxy. Could be worth a fortune. Experimental technology, top of the line. Take it. I don't need it. I didn't want anyone to get hurt. Really, I'm sorry. We need to find that beacon before it's too late. Take the cargo train. That's where the other Turian went. I, I, I can't stay here. I need to get away from all this. Kind of crazy to let this guy go when he's a valuable witness. Nah, a traumatized dock worker could never be a good witness for anything at all. All right, time for the final push on Eden Prime with this goaded soundtrack starting up. I'm running for it. Uh, bad idea, Donald. The big geth is about to run someone over. You got lucky, Donald. Caden took care of it. About time he made himself useful. Ooh, Donald, I don't know about the free run when you're still missing three-fourths of your health. Get off my back, Barack. I got it. You didn't get that grenade toss, though. Joe, take notes. When you're low on health, use your Medigel. And that's how the real gamers do it. You barely used any of your abilities and almost died. No need when my gun is all I need to win. Damn, Saren was really going to nuke the entire colony. Hey, uh, Donald, you just ran by one of the explosives. I'll get it later. Bro's going to run out of time and fail the mission. It's a five minute timer, Joe, not one minute. I have plenty of time to increase my kill count and then disarm the bombs. What do you mean, increase your kill count? Whoever kills the most opponents is the better president. And who do you think is keeping track of that? If no one keeps track of it, I'll just say I won. I'll say you won right now because I'm definitely not keeping a kill count, but I will be keeping a death count. Sniper, sniper, sniper. I see it, Barack, Jesus Christ. Donald about to end up with the first death of the trilogy. No shot, I'm letting myself die before you do, Joe. Now watch me. Ooh, okay, Donald, I see you cooking. Oh, f Almost got caught lacking there, Donald. I just want to point out that if I hadn't picked Sentinel, you wouldn't have the barrier ability and you would have died here 100%. Don't pat yourself side, on the Donald. back too hard there, Joe. All you did was pick the class. I'm the one who did all the work. See, this is why you disable the charges first. Now you have to backtrack around the landscape to do it. Hey, Barack, you let me play the game how I want, and I'll let you play it the way you want. And then once you do disable the charges, you have to run back up to the top to progress the mission. You just turned what could have been one trip into three trips. Yep, yep, yep. If I'm being honest, Barry, you're being kind of cringe right now. If being right means I'm cringe, then I'm a cringe lord. Bro said that with his entire chest. I'm just saying, we got people watching here and I value the time of our audience. Man, Barack, they don't care. 
They're probably just using this as background noise for something, so the longer the episode drags out, the better for them. I suppose that means I don't have to feel bad about dying 1,200 times. I'm sure the viewers will appreciate that, Joe, but I sure won't, and neither will my storage space. We should set up a drinking game. Every time someone dies, take a shot. Okay, so you just want to give everyone liver failure, Donald. I cannot morally agree with a drinking game based on deaths, because I will definitely be responsible for ruining tons of people. Drink responsibly, everyone. Don't tell me what to do, Barack. You know, they really should have gotten rid of the fatigue when they remastered the game. Why is the N7 super soldier here getting winded after a small sprint? Let's see you try sprinting covered in armor and carrying four guns on your body. I'd pay to see Donald sprinting at all. Time for the final battle. About damn time. We'd have gotten through this sooner if you didn't triple the length of the bomb section. Maybe I just wanted to prolong our time together. Oh, uh, you really mean that, Donald? Hell no. I only did it because I knew it would piss Barack off. Ha! Donald, I think you got it. I got it when I say I've got it. Okay, Donald, there's quite a few pickups in this area that you might want to grab. Ah, uh, I guess I better grab everything before Barack throws a fit. Listen, you'll thank me later when we have enough Omni-Gel to crack all these boxes so we can skip this stupid-ass decrypting minigame. Plus, we need gear to equip all our squad mates in the next part. We're a little broke at the moment. The only ones broke here are the two of you. Imagine being in politics for 40 years and not being filthy rich. You were really in this trash game for the love of it, weren't you, Sleepy Joe? It always has to come back to money with you, doesn't it, Donald? Ah, oh, Donald, you missed the cutscene where you look at the crater Sovereign left. Here I'll describe it. It's a giant burning circle in the ground. There, you didn't miss anything at all. Normandy, the beacon is secure. This is amazing. Why in the f*** don't we ever call the Normandy in for firing support during a mission? It wasn't doing anything like that when they dug it up. Something must have activated it. Roger, Normandy. Standing by. You know, I wonder what would have happened if the Vermeer survivor wasn't stopped by Shepard. Would they have been killed by the beacon, or would they be the ones to save the galaxy? Given Caden's L2 implant and migraines, I'd imagine his head would have exploded. What do you mean it's too dangerous? Help me. Caden really said, let's leave Shepard to tweak out in peace. You know, the Perk 30 is good when it ends with an explosion. Well, that's the end of the game. Shepard dies, the Reapers win, and the harvest continues. Holy mother of God! Donald, calm down. It's just titties. Nothing to freak out over. This is how I knew Mass Effect was going to be a peak game. Well, there goes any and all women who might watch this. They managed to save the colony. And the beacon. One of the humans may have used it. Ooh, he's mad, getting angry. If Saren and Sovereign didn't want anyone using the beacon, they probably should have just skipped nuking the colony and taken the beacon with them. Nah, that would make too much sense, Barry. Bro putting his rank-ass breath all in her face. This human must be eliminated. Nah, come on. People got all angry about Miranda's ass shots, but nobody talking about the matriarch's boob window. Why are you calling her the matriarch? Did you forget her name, Donald? We're going Doctor, to call her the Doctor matriarch Chuck going forward because up. accurately pronouncing her name is something well beyond our capabilities. You had us worried there, Shepard. How are you feeling? Has anyone ever told Ashley she has a severe case of resting bitch face? I mean, her entire unit did just get wiped out not that long ago. Can't imagine she's exactly happy. How long was I out? About 15 hours. Something happened down there with the beacon, I think. It's my fault. I must have triggered some kind of security field when I approached it. You had to push me out of the way. What are you going to say, Donald? I'm trying to get with Ashley, so I'll play this cool. Where's the beacon now? What happened to it? The beacon exploded. A system overload, maybe. The blast knocked you cold. The lieutenant and I carried you back here to the ship. I appreciate it. 
What the fuck is that smile? All he did is say thanks. I'm so in. I told you, Joe, Bard and Joe Shepard can pull. The bar for the fellows really is rock bottom these days. I also noticed an increase in your rapid eye movement. Signs typically associated with intense dreaming. Literally, all three of these dialogue options result in the same thing. And to think people were upset, Mass Effect 3 got rid of the middle dialogue option like it was ever anything special. Destruction. Nothing's really clear. Hmm. I better add this to my report. It may... Oh. Captain Anderson. How's our XO holding up, Doctor? Well, all the readings look normal. I'd say the command is going to be fine. Glad to hear it. Shepard, I need to speak with you. In private. <laughs> private. I think it's about time to wrap meeting. this up. Joe is clearly tired if he's laughing at the word Sounds private. Like this a common occurrence or something? I'm sure not familiar with the Barack and Sleepy Joe lore. When Joe gets tired, his sense of humor fully deteriorates to that of a seven-year-old boy. Couldn't go two minutes without him laughing at the thought of the word duty. Ha <laughs> ha! Bro said duty. Learn something every day. I didn't do anything wrong, Captain. Hopefully the Council can see that. I'll stand behind you and your report, Shepard. You're a damned hero in my books. That's not why I'm here. It's Saren, that other Turian. Ever notice Saren how Anderson says, says Turian with a hard T? I mean, Anderson fought in the first contact war. It shouldn't be surprising that he isn't all too fond of Turians at the moment. A rogue specter's trouble. Saren's dangerous, and he hates humans. Who doesn't hate humans Why? at this point? Humans hate humans for crying out loud. Taking over the galaxy. A lot of aliens think that way. Most of them don't do anything about it. You know, except for the fucking Batarians who just enslaved tons of our people in only 30 years. If you vote for me in 2024, I'll teach those rat bastard Batarians a lesson. You were there just before that beacon self-destructed. Did you see anything? Any clue that might tell us what Saren was after? The actual answer is I'm not sure because the beacon vision is not clear at all. Just before I lost consciousness, I had some kind of vision. A vision? A vision of what? I saw synthetics. Geth, maybe. Slaughtering people. Butchering them. We need to report this to the Council, Shepard. No disrespect, Captain Anderson, but I can already tell you how much of a waste of time that is. What are we going to tell him? I had a bad dream? We don't know what information was stored in that beacon. Lost Prothean technology? Blueprints for some ancient weapon of mass destruction? Now, Whatever. the ancient weapon of mass destruction Seven. is located on Mars, but you don't know that I yet. Know if only the Protheans put the blueprints to the Crucible in more than one Even damn beacon. Are a blight on the galaxy. This attack was an act of war. He has the secrets from the beacon. He has an army of Geth at his command. And he won't stop until he's wiped humanity from the face of the galaxy. Another classic three options, same outcome dialogue wheel. I'll find some way to take him down. It's At least I'll fast. find some way to take him it's down is another peak shepherd line. He can go anywhere, do almost anything. All right, that's all she wrote for today's Mass Effect journey. Next time your boy Big B Obama is going to get us through the Citadel missions. We're finally going to get to see if Barack's gameplay is as good as his knowledge. All right, I need, I need to get to bed. Joe's about to pass out, so peace. What's good? We're back at it with Mass Effect 1. I've relinquished control of Shepard to Barack for the day. We're going to have a highly productive day today. I'll be running through the main mission on I'm the Citadel, okay, and we'll pick up some side missions along the way. Barry, we're not going to sit here watching you run around the Citadel all day. Don't worry, Joe. I know you need your beauty sleep, so I'll try to be as efficient as possible. And I'll mostly just take care of side content off screen anyway. You're a good soldier, Williams. You belong on the Normandy. Why are you picking the Paragon options with Ashley? Aren't you worried about splitting our morality? Donald seems dead set on romancing her, so I might as well play wingman and help him out here. That's my boy Barack. Good looking out. I'll remember this when you try shooting your shot for Miranda. While we're here, did you boys see that N7 Day trailer? What do you mean, trailer? All we did was watch 35 seconds of some faceless individual walking. I thought it was pretty cool the way they broke it up over a few hours. You're really that easily entertained, Sleepy Joe? Listen, my take on this is the same it's been since the next Mass Effect game was announced. All I need from BioWare is for them to recapture what made Mass Effect what it was all those years ago. I don't care if we're playing Shepard again or not, and I don't care if we're in the Milky Way or Andromeda. I don't even care if they canonize an ending. Just please, for the love of all that is holy, 
make Mass Effect great again. Dan Barack casually dropping a 2008 presidential campaign level speech, and it's about Mass Effect of all things. Bars like that are what made me follow you, Barry. I still got it. But back on the topic of this Mass Effect game, by the end of the day, Bard and Joe Shepard will be the first human specter. Oh, Christ, you weren't joking about using the full name. Good hey, I got the I viewers on my back with this one. Numerous comments that. agreed that Bard and Joe Shepard was straight gas. I still think we should have named him Donald. I always wish I had a son named after me. Uh, Donald, I'm pretty sure you do have a son named Don Jr. Then I want another, preferably better one. Yikes, okay, why don't we watch this iconic moment in peace? sizes and everything. Why so touchy, Joker? I'm just saying you need firepower too. What would Joker know about firepower? Bro would break his pelvis with a single thrust. <laughs> Don't come after my boy Joker like that. He pulls the hottest synthetic in the galaxy. Well, Edie's only competition are the flashlight heads, so it's not like Joker could get anything other than a W. Speaking of which, the N7 Day event also showed us some artwork that revealed a ton of Milky Way species, including the Geth. And I even think there may have been a Raloi in the image, too. The hell is a Raloi? The last thing we need is another species of bird aliens. Anyway, the geth in the image was seen wearing clothes. About time the bots discovered the concept of drip. All I'm gonna say is if the geth are around, that means destroy isn't canon. Hold the L Donald. Or it means the catalyst was full of shit when it said all synthetics would die, as I always suspected. God willing, the next Mass Effect game puts this topic to rest. This is an outrage! The Council would step in if the Geth attacked a Turian colony? The Turians don't found colonies on the borders of the Terminus systems, Ambassador. See this right here is some BS. The Council are the ones that set humanity up to colonize near the Terminus system. See, I told you Ashley always had a point about the aliens. Citadel Security is investigating your charges against Saren. We will discuss the CSEC findings at the hearing, not before. Well, that sure went well. Someone remind me why we're supposed Captain to save these guys again. I well, I can't say for certain crew. which one of us will be Does in control at the end of Mass Effect 1, but if it's me, I can tell I you for certain we'll have a different reports. set of alien counselors in Mass Effect 3. They are. Come with me, Captain. I want to go over a few things before the hearing. Shepard, you and the others can meet us at the Citadel Tower, top level. I'll make sure you have clearance to get in. And that's why I hate politicians. Same, Ashley. Same. Donald, you're sitting between two politicians as we speak. And I only tolerate the two of you on a good day. First order of business is coming over here and starting the chain of missions that lead to an extremely vital cutscene. Oh, God, here we go with Barack talking to any old random NPC. Well, I'm just going to close my eyes for 30 minutes, wake me when the Spectre ceremony starts. I'm telling you, stick with me here, and you won't be disappointed. Alarmed response. You overheard that, did you? Genuine response, I suppose I will listen since I enjoy the way the Elcor speak. It is the Asari consort's fault. She's the one who started all this. What did this Asari do to get you so upset? I cannot speak more about this problem. It is too sensitive. Suffice it to say, she has compromised my authority as a diplomat. Huh, we should get Bill in here. Where I'm sure both he and this Elcor have a lot in common. Bro is like, I did not embrace eternity with that woman. Gotta imagine any relations between Asari and Elcor are purely mental. There is a massive size difference here. Okay, now we can stop by and talk to the Elcor and Volus diplomats. Oh God, Barak, come on, man. Who even are these two? They provide a window into the Elcor and Volus species. Mass Effect 1 is carried heavily by its world building and it is vital. We give every species their due attention. We don't care. Fine, fuck you guys. Try to give you a greater appreciation for the Mass Effect universe and you throw it in my face. All right, we're at the Citadel Tower and right ahead is our boy Garrus Vakarian. Give me more time. Stall them. Stall the council. Don't be ridiculous. Your investigation is over, Garrus. Another common Garrus L. First thing this guy does is fail to prove Saren guilty. It's too bad Garrus wasn't the one investigating you, Donald. 
Garrus you might have there. gotten away with everything scot-free. Uh, pretty sure Garrus would just beat the piss out of Donald and then say, now talk. Bro is not Batman. Sounds like you really want to bring him down. I don't trust him. Something about him rubs me the wrong way. But he's a specter. Everything he touches is classified. I can't find any hard evidence. I think the Council's ready for us, Commander. Good luck, Shepard. Maybe they'll listen to you. Garrus, my boy, this is going to be a very long and irritating journey of the Council doing everything but listening to Shepard. Bruh, you just know that in the next Mass Effect game, if Shepard is the playable character, the Council or whatever authority figure 100% will not listen. If that happens, I'm airing this bitch out. No hesitation. Wouldn't even be that hard either. I mean, we're in the meeting location for the Council carrying our full set of firearms. This would be the easiest assassination attempt possible. Which makes it all the funnier that Kai Maybe Lang fails to Come kill on. even one of the counselors. The Geth attack is a matter of some concern, but there is nothing to indicate Saren was involved in any way. The investigation by Citadel Security turned up no evidence to support your charge of treason. An eyewitness saw him kill Nihilus in cold blood. We've read the Eden Prime reports, Ambassador. The testimony of one traumatized dock worker is hardly compelling proof. There is no f***ing way this works in a universe with cell phones. Even in 2007, people knew to whip out the camera when some wild stuff was happening. Even if there was no video, you could take a picture. Not to mention that security footage surely exists. Also, the f***ing computers we have grafted into our arms. This must be your protege, Commander Shepard. The one who let the beacon get destroyed. You're the one who destroyed the beacon. Then you tried to cover it up. Shepard really said, no, you. your own failures. Just like Captain Anderson. He's taught you well. But what can you expect from a human? I've never seen anyone drop a human with a hard N, but Saren sure Saren made it work. Saren despises humanity. That's why he attacked Eden Prime. Your species needs to learn its place, Shepard. You're not ready to join the council. The fuck you mean your species? To Need to learn your place is absolutely wild. No right Imagine say saying that about a real life race. Black people need to. Uh, Donald, as your friend, I'm going to stop you from finishing that sentence. While this kangaroo court case continues, did you two see the Game of the Year nominees for the Game Awards? I see all the Potterhead seething that their childhood wasn't good enough to be nominated. Come on, Donald. Hogwarts Legacy isn't that bad. It's a wizard game with fewer spells than there are in Elden Ring. Plus, if you wanted to play a mid-open world game, you could just play Starfield. Which also didn't get nominated, proof that Baldur's Gate absolutely clears. Donald, I'm really confused by you liking Baldur's Gate. Don't you find turn-based combat boring? Uh, Barry, it's not the gameplay that Donald likes Baldur's Gate for. Is it the story? I mean, it's all right, but hardly anything to write home about. Think about it, Barack. What can you do in Baldur's Gate that you can't do in any of the other nominees? Even Spider-Man 2 doesn't let you do this? I'm genuinely clueless on this one, Donald. For crying out loud, he's talking about having sex with the bear, Barack. What? You can have sex with everybody, including the Druid Halson, who can transform into a bear. That's absolutely peaked Barack, and there's no argument. I... I don't even... I don't even know how to respond to that. Come on, Barack. why do you think Donald likes Mass Effect so much? Am I the only one here who actually likes this game series for the universe it takes place in, and not the attractive aliens? All I'm saying is, if Starfield had hot aliens for you to sleep with instead of 100 loading screens, it would be the game of the decade. Never mind game of the year. Unfortunately, Bethesda just doesn't know what to focus on. I am pleased with Mario Wonder making the nomination as well. Hearing why Donald likes Baldur's Gate 3 only strengthens my belief that Tears of the Kingdom should win. Yeah, have fun building random bullshit in that Zelda DLC. Why doesn't Link just build himself a new girlfriend? Zelda can't ever stay in one damn place long enough. Things went bad. While we're still here at the tower, we can pick up the side mission to find all the keepers. I tried doing this once and spent hours trying to find this one damn keeper and never found it. Did you check on the balcony next to the lounge in the Citadel embassies? God fucking damn it! Yep, it's always that one. I've never messed with that side quest. Is it even worth doing at all? If you care about the lore at all, Chorbin will email you in Mass Effect 2 and tell us that his findings revealed that the Citadel wasn't built by the Protheans, and that the Keepers are meant to react to some kind of signal every 50,000 years. So basically the big secret revealed here is what Shepard and company learn when they speak to Sovereign, riveting. It's a good source of credits and experience in the early game as well, for what it's worth. Then why is he doing his scanning in plain sight and in the Citadel Tower of all places? 
I'd like to do it. The council was literally here a minute ago. Don't worry, the council is so incompetent they'd probably disprove he was scanning anything. The authorities. I don't even know who you are. I'm Commander Shepard with the Alliance Military. Uh, Shepard isn't a specter yet. Pretty sure he does need to worry about the authorities. Barden Joe Shepard is the butcher of Torfan. They're welcome to try arresting us if they want. The only diplomatic immunity Shepard needs is the shotgun strapped to his back. Barack, you're not going to do this keeper BS right now, are you? No, I'll take care of it later, but I do know where they all are for the most part, so I'll grab them as we pass by. First order of business is paying a visit to Sha'ira the consort. Oh, now we're talking. Let me sit up real quick. It's pretty crazy that the Citadel has a public escort service and it's located right across from the embassies. The Asari are so base for doing that, Joe, you should try to set something like that up so it's ready for me in 2024. I mean, big bro Bill Clinton didn't need an escort service. He just invited Miss Lewinsky up to the Oval Office. Why am I hanging out with you, Barack? Bill is the far cooler Democrat. You would drop me before Sleepy Joe? Hey, at least I'm down to clown sometimes. Commander Shepard, with the Alliance Navy. Excellent. You should hear something in... Um, three or four months. Three, three or four, four months? months? Homegirl has Nobody's lost her damn mind. mind. Bruh, three or four months? Space Hub is well, free. No one realized how I readily available this genre contact. of content would is become in the else? future. Speaking of which, how is it that no one knows what here. Quarians would look uh, like? Well, I hope Even if no one took pictures future. before the morning you war, surely there's a, clients. how do I say, demand Melina. for faceless Quarian illicit content. I'm fairly certain such an industry would result in countless Quarians dying left and right. Yes, of course, mistress. The male gaze is going crazy right now. Hey, focus. We have a galaxy to save. Oh, my concentration is at its absolute peak right now. Huh. It appears the consort has taken notice of you. See, Barden Joe Shepard got it like now. that. Where do I go? Just head upstairs. She'll be waiting for you. That is close enough, Commander. Oh, God, she doesn't have any eyebrows. Asari don't actually have body hair at all. The eyebrows we usually see are just markings over their eyes. It still don't look right. It's crazy that Sha'ira of all Asari is the one people lust for. Well, if you believe in the theory that the Asari can mentally influence other species into perceiving them to be as attractive as possible, it doesn't seem too far-fetched. Ah, the classic. Bro fell for the OnlyFans girl. Happens to the best of us. Who is us? Ain't no us here. I've said it before and I'll say it again. The hub is free. Most awkward hug I've ever seen. It's the fact that Barden Joe Shepard isn't even reacting. Didn't hug back, didn't pull away, just stood there like a cardboard cutout of himself. Shepard only has eyes for one woman in the galaxy and her name is Ashley Williams. Before we go to Cora's den, we got a vital line we need to hear. This one, that Hanar refuses to listen to reason. Why can't it act in an orderly and lawful manner? Because it's a big, stupid jellyfish. I just had a sandwich filled with jellyfish jelly. It's the tastiest sandwich in the sea. The only information this guy can retain is old SpongeBob references. All right, we'll come back and resolve the cop and jellyfish drama later. An evangelical permit. At long last, some combat, I didn't realize we'd be doing all this talking. Now, Joe, I want you to take note. Unlike Donald, it's vital you actually use your abilities to give yourself an advantage. Damn, you really blew that guy up. Now that he's down, we're free to play a bit more aggressively. Talking all that shit and you just misclicked the wrong ability. Shut up, I usually have push maps somewhere else. This is what I get for letting you play first. See, easy peasy, barely took any damage at all. Yeah, all right, we'll see how good you are at the next firefight. Ah, Cora's den, now this is my kind of place. If you don't speak to Barlavon, you'll run into Rex here as well, but since we've done that, we'll just run by Harkin and General Septimus and then peace out. Don't care, didn't ask, plus you're bald. A rare W from you, Joe, f Harkin. I shoot him just for being rude to female Shepard. Don't worry, Harkin will get what he deserves in due time. Didn't know that, did you? It was all very hush hush. The first human ever given that honor, and then he blew it. Also, Harkin is literally wrong. Screwed Anderson never made Spectre so status. He was only being evaluated, same as Shepard during Eden Prime. It's just a BS rumor that a no life loser like Harkin spreads around because he doesn't have anything better to do. Garris was sniffing around Dr. Michelle's office. She runs the med clinic on the other side of the wards. Last I heard, he was going back there. I'm out of here. Thank God you don't want to talk to Harkin Barak. There's hardly any reason to. All bro does is spew nonsense about Anderson and talk about his own boring and disappointing life. 
All right, let's have a little chat with General Symptomus over here. What do you want? I'm here on Shayira's behalf. Wait, does anyone else hear that voice in the background? Good. Someone is back there gooning out of control. I've seen a lot of horrible things in my days, and there's only one woman in this damn galaxy that helps me forget it. So if you feel that way, I sure am enjoying my right ear getting the full force of the club beat every time the camera changes. Only headphone users are going to pick up on that, Barry. You gotta be brave as hell to be watching this without headphones. Especially after the whole having sex with the bear thing from a bit ago. Wait, are Turians leathery like alligators? What are they exactly? Reptiles or birds? They have avian features, but they're similar to raptors. Which makes sense since birds are closely related to dinosaurs. I didn't think I needed a PhD in biology to understand the basics of Mass Effect alien biology. The one place I always felt at peace was with her. If you ever feel this way about a girl you don't even know, try seeking a little post-nut clarity. Don't say I didn't warn you about wearing headphones. I mean, hit the gym, go out and study something, focus on yourself. Donald is the last person who should be telling someone to focus on themselves by hitting the gym. Hey, lay off, Joe. It was actually decent advice from Donald, which is a rare occurrence. Now get up and get moving, General. All right, I'll go to her. After Make sure you go to her and not come to her, General. Uh, and just like that, you're back to saying some dumb sh**. Would you be interested? Finally, we're catching up with Garrus. That was smart, Doug. Now, if Garrus comes around, you stay smart. Keep your mouth shut or we'll... Who are you? Let her go. Attaboy, Garrus. I guess he really isn't Batman because bats would have beaten them into a coma instead of executing them. I don't even know why Shepard needs Spectre status. We murder about two dozen people in our investigation and no one cares. All right, Joe, are you taking notes? It's gonna be pretty important for you to use overload in battle to weaken enemy shields. Or you can just shoot them in the head and be done with it. Use overload and shoot in head. Yep, got it. I am definitely enjoying that you picked up shotguns, Donald. Carnage is one of the best gun powers. For sure, the most enjoyable Perfect one strong time. blast and the target they melts into dust. You took them down clean. The renegade Sometimes option being praising Garrus for his quick and efficient work is pretty silly. As I'm sure many of you know, you can actually turn Garrus down here if you want. Why would anyone do that? Because Mass Effect 1 Shepard can be an anti-alien badass who only trusts humans. Not that it matters. If you don't recruit Garrus, he'll mention you rejecting him like once when you meet back up in Mass Effect 2, and then it'll be like you both have been the best of friends. If Bioware had any balls at all, they would have let you double down. I'm sure they realized having the main character of their video game be literally racist wasn't a good look. Hey, it didn't stop my boy Aaron Yeager from being the anime goat of 2023. Yeager is for life. Before we go recruit Rex, let's pay a visit to one of our adoring fans. Conrad, the goat Werner. I am so honored to meet you. Nice to meet you. And you are? My name is Conrad, Conrad Werner. They say you killed more than a hundred geth on Conrad is out here talking about Shepard like he's a LeBron I spend most Glazer. I'm trying to stay alive and help the colonists. Hey, I know you're probably busy, but um, do you have time for a quick autograph? This game is showing its age. Do people even ask for autographs anymore? Even if they do, isn't a digital autograph kind of pointless? I mean, anyone can easily replicate it. Plus, no one asks for an autograph without also asking Thanks. for a selfie. Really Joe, God damn it, it's not a selfie so if it includes another person. Hearing both of you old bastards use the word selfie unironically in 2023 was not on my bingo card. There's my goat, Uncle Erdnot Rex. As with Garrus, you are technically allowed to deny recruiting Rex here. Seems pretty stupid. Unlike Garrus, Rex is actually a useful squad mate in the gameplay of Mass Effect 1. Well, unlike Garrus, this would actually have to have an impact, right? If you don't recruit Rex, he'll be presumed dead. And his brother, Erdnot Reeve, will assume the role as Krogan clan chief. See, I wish games with these evil decisions actually rewarded you Go for being on. evil. If you reject Rex, you miss out on a useful right, no, squad no, mate no, no. and the best character Shepard, arc in the trilogy. Hardly any game, uh, you not even your beloved run. Baldur's Gate 3 gets that done properly, Shepard. Donald. Tell me about it. I want to kill the tieflings, but I don't want to miss out on my beloved Carlac. I'm not surprised you like Carlac, Donald. Warriors. Orange and red are a classic mixture. Time for a real firefight. I'll be watching you, Barack. Last time I tried this fight on Insanity, I just died over and over. Pissed me off. Wow, what a marvelous use of carnage there, Barack. Shut up, bitch. I didn't need it anyway. Peep this gameplay. You wasted push? Chill, Donald. Damn. It's not so fun being on the receiving end of the back seating, huh, Barry?
Uh, okay, no cap Barack. Watch the Krogan. It's good. Looks like Caden knocked him on his ass. Oh lord, he's coming. Literally nothing scarier in this game than a Krogan sprinting at you, but he should die before he can clap my cheek. Raid boss down. Now all that's left is the fodder. Stop right there. Don't come any closer. Both these dudes heard all that mayhem back there and just decided to stay in this room. They just like me for real. If I watch someone clear like five of my boys, I'm hanging back. Uh, well, uh, uh, screw Fist. He doesn't pay us enough for this. And just like that, these two warehouse workers are two of the smartest NPC characters in gaming. It's basic laws of Jujutsu Kaisen. Always jump the opponent, and if the jumping doesn't work, we running. Wait! Don't kill me, I surrender! Surrender? Ha, ah, bro thinks he's walking out of here just because we didn't bring Rex. If you do let Fist survive here, you'll reunite with him on Omega in Mass Effect 2. But let me tell you right now, bro is not getting out of this one. Direct consequence of messing with my girl, Tally. I don't know where the Quarian is, but I know where you can find her. That sentence didn't make any sense. I don't know where the Quarian is, but I do know where you can find her. Do you know where she is or don't you? He's stalling for time. Don't let Fist live, Barack. Nobody meets the Shadow Broker, ever. Even I don't know his true identity. But she didn't know that. I told her I'd set a meeting up. But when she shows up, it'll be Saren's men waiting for her. Tell me where that meeting is before I blow your lying head off. Here on the wards, the back alley. See, he does know where the Quarian is, bro lied to us. Right See, I might have let him go if he had just been honest in the first place. Oh, well, no skin off my back. Too many people died here, Fist. You don't get to walk away. Mmm, sounded like Fist Kool-Aid spilled out everywhere. All right, we got another fight ahead that's on a timer. I usually just run right through this and make it to tally. That might work on normal difficulty, Joe, but on insanity, you actually gotta fight like a man. Here it comes. All right, Brock, I see you trying to lock in now. See, Joe, no need to run. Just play calm and smart and things will work out. All clear. Did you bring it? Where's the Shadow Broker? Where's Fist? They'll be here. Hey, hands off, you son of a bitch. No this Turian is lucky off. Uncle Erdnot Rex isn't here instead. Dan, you know Tally don't leave the crib without her proximity grenades. All right, this fight can be a pain in the ass because these guys can sabotage your guns. Up. Yep, there it goes. Do it back to him. Quick, everyone, just turn him into Swiss cheese. Really lit that guy up. It was all for Tally. Just set me up. I knew I couldn't trust him. Don't worry about Fist. He got what was coming to him. Death is better than Fist then deserved, if I'm being honest. Should have fed him to some Varen. Who are you? You're not making my life easy, Shepard. Trust me, Udina. In a few years, I'll make sure you never have to worry about anything in your life ever again. As you know, this is where Tally will join us. Unlike with Garrus and Rex, you cannot deny her. If you try, Udina will force you to recruit Tally. Forcing us to recruit Tally is about the only good thing this snake has done in his entire life. I apologize, Commander. This whole thing with Saren has me a bit on edge. Maybe we should just start at the beginning, miss. How could you possibly turn Tally away to begin with? I mean, just look at her hips. We don't see many Quarians here. Why did Bioware think they're up? slick, though. I was on my don't think I didn't notice that the two male alien species are optional in this game, but the two female alien squad mates are mandatory. Found. That sounds completely valid to me, Barack. Excuse me, Commander Shepard. Ah, it's Samesh. We might as well speak to him since we have Ashley with us. I cannot believe you got on my case for how I handled the bomb section on Eden Prime, and now you're sitting here talking to the Apple tech support. Thank God Mass Effect 2 and 3 have less of this side mission stuff. You two are the type to run through a game once and then be upset you spend $70 for 15 hours of gameplay when there is still copious amounts of stuff to do. It is a pleasure. Respectfully, Serviceman Batia may save more lives in death than she did in life. 
Bro doesn't know who he's speaking to. You know, Cabadon. Bro is like, you met the Kudasai Shepherd summer? Oh, Jesus Christ, Donald. Stop quoting random BS you hear from anime. Well, if it makes you feel any better, the type of anime I picked that up from isn't the type you would want to watch in public. Nope, gonna stop you right there, not another word. All right, Shaira, we solved your simp dispute. Commander, we really ran around the Citadel solving this woman's work-related issues. List of Commander Shepard's accomplishments. Led the final assault on Torfan. Prevented the destruction of Eden Prime's colony. And helping Shaira, the consort. She better pay with a fat stack for all this. Don't worry, Donald. Shaira will definitely make this worth our while. I also have one more thing to give you, if you're interested. What are you offering me? I offer a gift of words. An affirmation of who you are and who you will become. I see the sadness behind your eyes. It tells a story that makes me want to weep. I woe now. I don't need this first-year psych student evaluation of my mental health. Someone should let Shaira know that people come here because they're avoiding therapy, not because they want it. your foes. Few will dare to stand against you. If I want someone to glaze me up like this, I got my boys to do it for me. It only forms the basis for your future greatness. Remember these words when doubt descends, Commander. Uh, thanks, I guess. Close your eyes and relax. Wait, what the hell is this? I told you your patience would be rewarded. Wait, are you fucking kidding me? There is literally a hidden legendary sex scene in this game. How have I never found this? See what you get when you actually explore the world around you. A little bit of everything for everyone. Yo, she went down. Bro, I'm dead. Maybe Mass Effect 1 really is the best game in the trilogy. Here, Commander. In light of your efforts with the Elcor Ambassador, I would like you to have this small trinket. What exactly is this trinket Sha'ira gives it? you anyway? The trinket allows you to access some Prothean ruins that I've reveal that the old alien species was monitoring and tagging cavemen on Earth prior to their Reaper War. I have done everything I can for you. So again, the big reveal from this side mission is something you naturally learn during the events of the main story. The only reason to do this is to sleep with the hot blue alien. They will give you strength. Wait, were Ashley and Caden just standing there watching Shepard lay up with the consort? Gonna need to explain this one to Ash later on. No, nah, no, nah, it's good. We're not committed to each other yet. At long last, it's time for Barden Joe Shepard to become the first human specter. About damn time. If I didn't know better, I'd think you were stalling, Barack. Eden Prime was a major victory. The beacon has brought us one step closer to finding the conduit. Okay, so knowing what we know now, hearing Saren say this is not actually proof of anything at all. What are you talking about, Joe? I mean, we know full well that you can make any voice say whatever you want these days. I mean, just listen. I'm Kasumi Goto, and I love Joe Biden. What the f***, Joe? Joe, that is not what the voices are for. Joe Biden doesn't have dementia, and he's never sleepy, and he's a far better president than that annoying orange-looking motherfucker Donald. Okay, that's enough. I'm revoking your AI privileges. You can silence me, but you can't silence the truth. I warned you, Barack. I told you he'd use the Kasumi voice to do this when you made it. Yeah, my bad. I'll be putting it under lock and key from now on. The Spectre ceremony begins at last. I remember actually being shook the first time it happened. Too bad all the prestige and wonder of being a Spectre kind of falls flat after this. Pretty much everything Shepard does was stuff they built their career off of. Being a Spectre merely gives us legal immunity to get the job done, no matter what. Real NPC behavior going on up in the rafters. Few fun facts about the Spectres. The very first one was a Salarian named Bilo Gurji. No goddamn way was a Salarian the first of this elite branch of space agents. I keep telling you the Salarians are underrated. Bilo used 30 civilians to flush out his target and killed them instead of imprisoning them. All the civilians survived. The council was impressed. And that's how the Spectres came to be. Makes sense the Solarian was the first. Pretty sure Morden says something about the Spectres being modeled after the Solarian STG. Spectres bear a great burden. They are protectors of galactic peace, both our first and last line of defense. The safety of the galaxy is theirs to uphold. You are the first human Spectre, Commander. 
This is a great accomplishment for you and your entire species. What's my first mission? We're sending you into the Just another casual win for humanity. Not even 100 years in the galactic civilization. And we've already got one of our own in an elite task force. No wonder the Volus diplomat hates us. We're just built better than them. This meeting of the Council is adjourned. If there's one lesson to take away from this, it's to never underestimate the indomitable will of the human spirit. Please, the indomitable will of the human spirit gets clapped by an average retail job. Supplies, you'll get access to special equipment and training now. You should go down to the CSEC Academy and... Too bad all that special equipment costs more than we can possibly afford at the moment. Don't worry. I'll run around clearing up some errands on the Citadel and see if I can't get our squad some proper funding. So what's up next, Barack? We'll start Joe off with something light. The mission to recruit Liara on Theron. Even you should be able to handle a baby bite mission like that, Joe. Don't worry, I'll make sure I double up on my doses of adrenochrome. All right, that does it for the boys and I today. Stay safe out there, drink plenty of water, sleep well, and we'll see you on the next one. Hey everybody, it's your President Woke, Joseph Robinette Biden Jr., ready to drop some sick frags as the first human specter. And the reward for the worst intro of the videos goes to you, Joe. We've got a bit of a day today. Joe will be taking on the mission find Liara to Sony on Therum. Barack, don't you think this is gonna be a bit of a tough mission for him? Kinda of weird for us to take the two easiest missions in the game, and give Joe the first filter, if you know what I mean. You'll be fine, won't you, Joe? Hell yeah, I'll be fine. I'm on my meds today, and I'm ready to lay some fools out to dry. The only way this guy can play games is on 20 doses of Adderall. Also, Joe, I need you to pretty please do something for me real quick. When you get to the top of the elevator, just go up and scan that last keeper at the top. Wait, that's what you were doing earlier, scanning the keepers? Is that why you were repeating, where is it, over and over? I couldn't find the 19th keeper, and then I realized I forgot the one that's to the right of where we meet the counselors in the Citadel Tower. I've literally never heard this sound effect in the game. See that? A easy level up, and we haven't even left the Citadel yet. Good credits, too. Uh, what's Ashley doing back there? Looks like she's back there hitting the meanest lunge. Ashley, I respect your dedication to the gains, but we got work to do. We have one more lead. Matriarch Benezia, the other voice in that recording. She has a daughter, a scientist, who specializes in the Protheans. We don't know if she's involved, but it might be a good idea to try and find her. See what she knows. Her name's Liara, Dr. Liara Tassoni. That's gonna be our wife. Hey, hold on now, Joe. That wasn't the deal. You said we could romance Ashley. Huh, what? So sorry, I don't remember that. I suppose my dementia has gotten the best of me. You're so full of shit. Barack, back me up here. Oh, nah, I got no horse in this race. You two can settle that yourselves. Joe, I am warning you, don't interfere with me and Ashley. What are you gonna do, stop me? Maybe Ashley will have an unfortunate accident at some point later in the game. You don't have the balls to leave I'll Ashley on Vermeer. You willing to bet all your money on that, Donald? I will body slam you, Joe. Well, right now it doesn't matter because we don't know who's playing Vermeer, but if it's me, I'll do whatever makes the most sense from a gameplay perspective. Well, from a story and character perspective, we all know Ashley should get left behind. I heard what happened to Captain Anderson. Survives a hundred battles and then gets taken down by backroom politics. I can't believe Anderson's career was ended by the backrooms. I've seen that game a lot. Do you guys think I should play it? Joe, you would piss shit and vomit everywhere if you played the backrooms. Back somewhere, and we're gonna find him. Everyone on this ship's behind you, Commander. 100%. Intercom's open. You got anything you want to say? All right, Joe, you have the honor of delivering the very first patented Commander Shepard speech. Let's just get this over with. Crew, this is Commander Shepard. We have our orders. Find Saren before he finds the conduit. Extremely weak start. Shut the fuck up, Donald. You're picking the Paragon options. All right, if this is going to be how it is, I might need to abuse that glitch on Novaria. Not Novaria. just for our own sake, but for the sake of every other species in Citadel space. Saren must be stopped. And I promise you all, we will stop him. Well said, Commander. Captain will be proud. The captain gave up everything so I could have this chance. We can't fail. Yes, sir. Joe, I'm not gonna lie to you. I'd think eight years with me would have improved your speech skills, but I was dead wrong. What do you mean that speech was fire? Yeah, the long pause at the end of it really shows how quickly your brain can string together sentences. Whatever, man. Anyway, we should probably go do our rounds by the crew, right? I would rip the controller out of your hands if you didn't talk to the squad. Let's start with Caden. Okay, but why, though? I'm actually pretty sure Caden doesn't have anything of note to say here. Well, there's no harm in checking especially since he's sitting up here alone. You know, staring blankly into a bright orange screen in a dark room probably isn't doing Caden's migraines any favors. Commander? What's your opinion on the last mission? 
I don't see how we could have done things any better. At least you know, I just thought of something. On Eden Prime, we watched Sovereign take off right after Saren kills Nihilus. Just trying to get a sense of where the crew But Saren is still on the planet. Why did Sovereign leave? What is this, Cinema Sins, Barack? Stop psychoanalyzing the game. Well, you were right. We'll Caden had nothing time. to say. Unsurprisingly, and to think people say he isn't boring. It is kind of sad that everyone else is down here hanging out in the hangar bay. Nice but Caden is alone on the upper deck. Time to talk to the only character in this game with an interesting background. I'm surprised to hear you diss Ashley by extension there, Donald. Listen, I like Ashley, but I'm not going to pretend her stories aren't boring. Some BS about her grandfather and something about her sister and some boy snooze fest. Well, there was this one time the Turians almost wiped out our entire race. That was fun. Yikes, and this is why I don't ask people how their day is going. You never know what they're going to say. Hey, man, dog died, fish died, cat died, mom died, train derailed, plane crashed, building eviction. Okay, dude. That was a good reference, Donald, but I understood every word that left your mouth, so it wasn't quite like XQC. The go to response to when someone asks how you're doing is to just say good and move on. it's destroying your entire species. I do wish I could tell Rex I know the genophage and the first contact war aren't the same. The first contact war was barely even a war. Maybe from the point of view of humans, I guess, but for the alien races, it was just a little incident. Oh, oh shit. Oh no, our bad. We opened fire and rained meteors down on your cities because you broke a law you weren't even aware of. Commander? What's your opinion on the last mission? Kinda wish you'd got there sooner, Commander. No offense, I appreciate the rescue. Joe, you I better be nice to Ashley. Oh, so now we should be Paragon, right? Got it. You wish we'd been able to save the rest of your unit. Yes, sir. If I had been more alert... In Ashley's defense, there was a Reaper on the scene. She's lucky she got out at all. seems plain enough to me. Be more alert. Aye, aye, Commander. What's Garrus got going on over here? I'm sure he's just Thanks calibrating the gun on the Mako or something. I knew working with the Spectre would be better than life at CSAC. Have you worked with a Spectre before? Well, no, but I know what they're like. Spectres make their own rules. You're free to handle things your way. But see, sec, you're very I cannot believe people Damn gravitated towards this guy. It's just the typical cop who's restricted by all the red tape trope you see all the time in old movies. To be fair, the most of the Spectre reason people like Garrus have, have to do with him in Mass exactly Effect 2 and 3, I don't think he was anyone's favorite in Mass Effect 1. It shouldn't matter how I do it, as long as I do it. Yep, let me just shoot this guy in both his knees because he stole about $250 out of a McDonald's cash register. Don't do the crime if you can't do the time. So you just quit because you didn't like the way they do things? Quitting a job because you don't like the way things are being done is pretty valid. I don't know why Shepard sounds judgmental here. C-Sex handling of Saren was Your ship's amazing, Shepard. I've never seen a drive cord like this before. Tally really drew the short end of the stick when it comes to the dialogue in the first Mass Effect. It's a whole lot of lore on the Geth and Quarians, but hardly anything about the girl herself. We know she likes ships, but that's a byproduct of the modern Quarian migrant lifestyle. Migrants where? What migrants? Uh, Donald, did you never realize the Quarians refer to themselves as the migrant fleet? You're telling me there's about 17 million migrants at our border right now? Donald, migrant just refers to a group of people who are immigrating between... We must build a wall, a space wall to prevent the migrant fleet from invading our space. All right, Joe, it's finally time for you to begin our first big mission. Excited? I'm ready to finally get Liara on the ship. Or, and hear me out, we leave her on Therum until after Vermeer and we get to see her go crazy from isolation. I'm not that stupid, Donald. You just want to lock me out of romancing her. You're already locked out of romancing her. You said you wouldn't. Well, we're politicians, Donald. You know the name of the game, we lie all the time. So let me drop a little fun fact about Therum. It was originally a planet called Calliston. It had a whole hub level. Shepard would get involved in a gang war taking place on a station there. And only after that do we get to go rescue Liara from the volcano we normally find her in. You're telling me that find Liara to Sony could have been an A-tier mission on the tier list if that cut content made it in? Reading through the plot line, the mission might have even made S-tier on paper. It sounds like a strong start to the main section of the game. All right, Barack, I want your help on this one. Which squad mates should I pick up? This mission is pretty much all Geth, so Tally is someone I would suggest. And since we already have biotics ourselves, I would pick someone who brings some damage, maybe Ashley. Why don't you just give Barack the mouse and keyboard, Joe? Evidently, you want him to play for you. I just wanted a tip, damn it. I can handle this. Let him cook, Donald. 
Joe should be able to handle this since it's so simple. To think we could have had a whole side story on this planet instead of dropping straight out in the Mako. Yeah, looking back, we may have been too hard on Pharos. Theram definitely isn't a better mission overall. Also, Joe, I'm gonna need you to spend your skill points. You didn't do it after we scanned the Keeper. All right, Ashley doing lunges distracted me. Well, now that we've got some time here, I take it you boys watch the Game Awards. I watched Baldur's Gate 3 demolish the competition. I'm very satisfied with Mario Wonder and Pikmin 4 getting their flowers. Huge Nintendo W, even if Zelda lost Game of the Year. I can't believe Tears lost to the bare f***ing simulator. Barack, you know full well there's more to Baldur's Gate than that, even if it is the thing that matters most. I know, I'm just being salty. Larian Studios did amazing work with the game, and I'm happy to see such passion get recognized. Still not as salty as all the Sony heads are about Spider-Man 2. Going 0-7 is absolutely crazy. You're not joking, Joe. The timeline the couple days after the Game Awards was the most coping and seething shit I've seen in all my days. You'd think they gave Game of the Year to Gollum or Redfall the way things were coming down. It's the fact that literally everyone else was quiet about it too. Starfield, Hogwarts, and even the Zelda fans mostly just kept their heads down. And it's not like we're trying to diss Spider-Man 2 or anything. It is a pretty good game. And Yuri Lowenthal is a goat voice actor, but Baldur's Gate was putting up Elden Ring numbers. You can't match that. People just have this thing about turn-based combat, and I get it. But if you like Mass Effect enough to watch us play it, you'll probably like Baldur's Gate 3 as well. Has a lot of the same stuff. Great characters with romances, world building, and unlike in Mass Effect, your choices actually matter. But let's talk about what we all really watch the Game Awards for, the trailers. See that new free God of War DLC? I did see that. I also saw Black Myth. Wukong is finally on its way next August. The character design looks immaculate. And don't forget Dragon Ball Z Sparking Zero. Gonna need to pick up three backup controllers, about to bust so many control sticks and beam clashes. All right, Joe, you know you got those cannons coming up next, right? I got this, Barry. I appreciate it, but I don't need the help. All right, big dog, good luck. Joe is showing us why people over the age of 80 shouldn't be allowed to drive. It's a good thing Secret Service takes you everywhere. Man, I can drive. It's just the Mako handles like a drunk rhino. Hey, uh, Joe, you're going toward the wrong... Barack, I said I got it. Leave me be. Okay, all right, fine. Don't say I didn't try. Like you said, Barack, let him cook, even if it means he's gonna burn the house down. No fires in my house, just straight gas. Uh-huh, look at you. Not even close, baby. Why are you even using the pistol? We have a perfectly good shotgun. I selected Sentinel for a reason. If I wanted to use a shotgun, I would have picked Vanguard or Soldier. You should have at least equipped something other than radioactive ammo. We're fighting Geth. I'm sorry, who's playing right now? Is it you, Barack? Because I could have sworn it was me. You know what? You got it. I'll keep my mouth shut. What the hell are they shooting at? What the- Barack did try to tell you that was the wrong side. Well, you might as well destroy them now, Joe. Fuck that, I'm out of here. Perfectly good experience points, gone to waste. I would start running, Joe. Oh God. All right, Barack, I'm sorry you can help me. Are you sure? I'd hate to have to backseat you. No, it's fine. I'm in over my head. I don't remember anything about this game. All right, dog, I got you. Why don't you two get a room or something? You're just mad you and Pence aren't boys like us. One other thing I just read about, apparently E3 is well and truly dead now. Has been for years, Barack. Anyone who's been paying attention knew E3 was a walking corpse of a convention. It's just a sad farewell. So many hype moments in gaming happen there. Like the reveal of Twilight Princess back in 04 or Mega Man being revealed for Smash Wii U. For every hype moment, there's embarrassing ones too, and I think it's nice to get gaming news every couple of months from Nintendo Direct's and PlayStation State of Play. Coming up on the last stretch of the Mako section here. About time, I was getting tired of this. Theorem is a pretty bad Uh, excuse me? What the f Huh, well that's a new one. Joe, what in the hell did you do? I didn't do anything, I was just driving. Go back and look at the footage. The Mako just randomly clipped through the ground. Barack, you wouldn't happen to know anything about this, would you? Gotta be honest, I have well over 1,000 hours in this game series between the original trilogy and the legendary edition. And I've never had the Mako do this. Absolutely insane that this would happen while we're filming. Well, at least it makes for good content. So, Joe, how does it feel to get the first death of the series? Bro, this is not the first death, not to a fucking glitch. I don't know, man. That sure looks like a critical mission failure to me. Imagine losing to some bad geometry. I'll just record this and put an asterisk next to it. We'll decide if it counts later. 
Okay, now let's just run this back nice and slow and hopefully the ground doesn't decide to eat us again. I'm gonna have to go back and see if I can replicate that on my own. I'm genuinely curious as to what occurred there. The case against Mass Effect 1 continues, Barack. I don't see glitches oh, like God that in Mass Effect 3. Well, I don't know, Donald. Maybe something silly will happen now that it'll be on camera. Hey, Joe, get back inside the Mako. What do you mean? Why? You wanted my help, so just trust me. All right, I guess. Now drive it into the gap in the wall there. Oh, I know what you're doing, Barack. A classic. Come back. You got to hit it dead center. Wait, no f***ing shot. Bruh, that's crazy. See, that's the duality of video game bugs. Sometimes the terrain swallows you up and forces a game over. And other times it lets you sneak the Mako where it doesn't belong. Has this always been like this? I know for a fact it existed in the original Mass Effect one, and considering that this is a relatively popular bug, I'm sure BioWare knows about it too. I guess they just decided not to fix it for the remaster. A rare BioWare W for that one. Nintendo could learn a thing or two from them. Seriously, do they have to patch out the duplicate bugs in Tears of the Kingdom? Farming dragon parts is a pain in the ass. How do people even find things like this out? No clue but I'm thankful for it because the upcoming fight against the Geth is pretty difficult while you're on foot, especially for the level we're at now. Does the game think the Mako is the squad? It's something like that. To be honest, I don't remember what this cutscene looks like normally. I've always brought the Mako through here since realizing I could. I think the squad is supposed to be reacting to the arrival of the Geth units in the armature. Well, these Geth are in for a surprise now that I'm pulling up with a giant tank. It's only fair. They're dropping heavy units down on us, so let's meet them with equal firepower. I don't know. It feels kind of cheap to win like this. I'm surprised, Donald. Aren't you always going on about how a win is a win like all FromSoft fans do? A win is a win, but that doesn't mean I gotta like it. This is like using magic in Elden Ring. Sure you won, but at the cost of your pride. My pride ain't worth a damn. I sold that when I became president. Joe, that Geth armature is not a bunch of kids going through a crosswalk in a school zone. Oh, so when we touch the lava, we start burning, but when I push the armature into it, it's all good. See, the game cheats, so you might as well cheat back. Well, that was easy. Well, now it's time for you to ditch the Mako and fight head to head like a real man. Barry, you don't suppose we can squeeze the Mako down the tunnel, do you? Sorry, Joe, but you're gonna have to take it honestly from here on. All right, let me cook here. You're lucky Tally is taking care of sabotaging the Geth for you. Joe, I'm begging you, please swap to the shotgun. You don't even have a gun power. No need, the enemies die all the same. Okay, okay, Joe, ability usage, that's what I like to see. Say whatever you want about the ammo type I'm using. Watching them melt into a green mist is satisfying. Now, I may not want to romance Liara, but I won't lie, I'm very happy to see her. As Donald alluded to earlier, the longer you put this mission off, the more deluded Liara will become. Exactly how much time passes in this game anyway. Are you okay? Well, not to get too much into the math here. But when the Normandy isn't using mass relays, it's still traveling between star systems faster than the speed of light. So we're talking days between every mission, at minimum. I was when the Geth showed up, so I hid in here. Can you believe that? Geth, beyond the veil! I activated the tower's defenses. I knew the barrier curtains would keep them out. Barack, you said the Asari don't have eyebrows. So what are those above Liara's eyes? They're extremely convenient-looking forehead markings that resemble eyebrows. Is the eyeshadow Liara clearly has on her face also convenient face Sarah. markings? Listen, don't cross-examine me on this. BioWare went out of their way to make Liara look effeminate, even though the Asari are monogendered. Take it easy here, Joe. This fight can press you if you aren't careful. It's over for them. I have the high ground. Yeah, I don't think you're gonna be able to get them all from up there. You're right. This calls for a little bold action. I'm the bold action man. Uh, that's a sniper laser, Joe. Nope, that. Not feeling so bold now, are you? Okay, Joe, I like what I'm seeing here. Ability usage, steady aim, and good game sense. Even you gotta admit this isn't too bad a look, Donald. All this proves to me is that Mass Effect 1 is piss easy. 
And just as I expected, he starts throwing. It's okay, he actually remembered to pop his Medigel for one. Okay, never mind, Joe, get in cover. Joe Star family secret technique. You're lucky the Geth are terrible shots because one or two more blasts and you would have gotten a legitimate, no one doubts it. Game over. I take back what I said about game sense, Joe, you gotta start using cover. It's okay, I'll win this fight no matter what. How much goddamn health does this thing have? You ran from the fight and it replenished its shields. What did you expect? Thank God it's over. The final fight for this mission is not going to go well, I can tell. Oh God, what was the pattern for this? Down, left, right, up, left. Bro got that memorized like it's the Konami code. Fun fact, on the original Trilogy PC version, the sequence was randomly generated each time a saved game was loaded. That sounds annoying as hell. The solution back then was to just mash the four directions until you got lucky. Uh-oh, Shepard forgot which way to look while walking again. Well, you somehow fixed it, Joe. Good work. How are you rolling into every known bug in this game? I guess I'm just lucky or unlucky, I suppose. You know, I'm wondering if these Prothean ruins were actually some kind of prison. Not a bad theory at all, Donald. I can't think of why else these containment fields would be here if it were just a mining planet. I guess that would also explain why Liara's biotics apparently don't work. Otherwise, she could surely break herself out. Why is every interface in the Mass Effect universe holograms? Is this really the future we're headed to? It wouldn't be that bad if it weren't for the fact that you can see straight through it. How can you even see what you're hitting? Out of this place? There is an elevator back in the center of the tower. At least I, I think it's an elevator. It should take us out of here. Come on. I, I still cannot believe all this. Why would the Geth come after me? Do you think Benezia is involved? Siren's looking for the conduit. Think fast, Miss Prothean expert. Okay, goddamn Ashley, the watch the attitude. I don't know. What the hell was that? The sound of an average That's earthquake in California. Correct me if I'm wrong, but taking the elevator here isn't exactly the right idea. Well, Joe, we it's either you risk the elevator collapsing, in which case we all die, or we do nothing Joker, and get to get enjoy being airborne, trapped until several hundred Undone tons of earth and magma rains down upon us. In which case, we still die. Good point. We better get the hell out of here. He needs to move back. Are you ready for your final boss, Joe? I'm not afraid of this Krogan. You should be. He's the most aggressive bastard I've seen. Real talk, Joe. You're going to want to hold your metagel and barrier for do or die situations and disable those geth immediately. I have a strong feeling Tally isn't going to last very long Charge. here, so it'll be up to you and Ashley. <laughs> In a worst case scenario, use Unity to bring the squad back up. Uh, he's not moving. Ain't no way. What? Why is he just standing there? He's a Krogan in Mass Effect 1. He's supposed to run up and beat the hell out of you. There is absolutely no goddamn way you're getting another bug or something. The Battlemaster isn't even shooting his gun. That's the Geth. He's finally moving now, but it's too late. This is free eats. I, I am legitimately flabbergasted. I have never seen the Krogan Battlemaster be this passive. I expected a comedic series of Joe getting washed by the Battlemaster over and over again until he begged one of us to do it for him. I feel robbed of something I desperately wanted to see. Why is he not committing to the charge? What the hell is he doing? It's like playing with a bronze Reinhardt in Overwatch. That was actually completely embarrassing for the Krogan Battlemaster. Why does it sound like you two wanted to see me get my cheeks clapped? Because, because we, we did. did. This is actually extremely disappointing. I was so hyped to find out you'd be playing third Joe, specifically to see you get bodied on this mission. Well, excuse me for being a bit better than you all expected. A bit better my ass, more like just really lucky. That Krogan should have been running a train on you. Close, Commander. Ten well, that all went well, a successful mission on Therum. So what did we learn? That Joe is apparently the luckiest bastard in the universe. But sometimes when you're driving around and minding your own business, a sinkhole can appear and just trap you underground. Yeah, I gotta say, I definitely experienced some new things in the game today. Ashley getting stuck doing lunges on the Citadel, the Mako falling through the ground, and the Krogan Battlemaster apparently forgetting he's a Krogan. I don't have a lot of experience dealing with your species, Commander. Oh, don't worry, Liara. I'll make sure you get all the experience you need with our species. Joe, for the last time, we are not romancing Liara. You can't stop me from rizzing her up when I'm the one in control. How old are you exactly? Whoa, Joe, you can't just ask a woman her age like that. Damn. I hope I look that good when I'm your age. A century may seem like a long time to a short-lived species like yours. 
But among the Asari, I am barely considered more than a child. Barely considered more than a child? No wonder you want to romance her, Joe. Motherfucker, you've been the biggest simp for the Asari in all our conversations. Don't try to fling that at me. We've got mad receipts on you right now. I've got my own theory on why the Protheans disappeared. With all due respect, Commander, I have heard every theory out there. The problem is finding evidence to support them. The Protheans left remarkably little behind. What does she mean, so remarkably little? Did not want the we sneeze and stumble upon Prothean stuff all the time. Apparently, the key to finding more Prothean information is to travel with the main character of the but series. Here's the incredible part. The rest of you, dismissed. Mission reports are filed, Commander. You want me to patch you through to the Council? Patch him through, Joker. Joe, Setting you better be getting now, ready Commander. to do what I think you're going to do. Of course, there's report, only one reason to actually to talk to the Council. On the Normandy. I assume you're taking the necessary security precautions. Lier is on our side. The Geth were trying to kill her. Benezia would never allow Saren to kill her daughter. Maybe she doesn't know. Or maybe we don't know her. We never expected she could become a traitor. At least the mission was a success. Apart from the utter destruction of a major Prothean ruin. Was that really necessary, Shepard? Fuck you, Sparitus. I don't need this. <laughs> Communications cut, Commander. Ah, uh, it never gets old. One last thing before we end here. I'm gonna start the dialogue with Liara. Commander, you son of a bitch, don't you dare. You Do something me? about it. You I'll just speak better. to Ashley and lock How her in right then and there. You won't be playing in the next two videos, Joe, and I know Barack has my back. I already told you I want no part in this. You're in good In fact, maybe I'll just stir the pot a little myself. What do you mean by that? I'm just going to put in here that if the two of you pursue your romance options at the same time, we're in for a bit of an awkward confrontation. Come on, Barry, be cool. Either you two work this out, or I'm sabotaging you both. You can't be serious. It's already been worked out. Joe agreed to let me romance Ashley if I let him pick Sentinel. You both have until I'm in control of Shepard again, but for now I think that's all we have for today. Donald, we gotta come to some kind of agreement or neither of us is romancing anyone. We already had an agreement. I'm not gonna let you gaslight me into thinking otherwise. Hey Barry, can I do the outro this time? Sure, you did well today, bugs aside. Y'all stay safe out there, uh, drink plenty of water and uh, what is it, something about sleep? A terrible intro to go with a scuffed outro. Why am I not surprised? We'll see you on the next one. What's good, y'all? We're back at it again with Mass Effect 1, and I want it to be known that Sleepy Joe Let's Go Brandon Biden is a filthy liar. Cry about it, Donald. I'm on my villain arc right now, so I'm backing out of our deal. As you can all see, the negotiations have fallen through, and now we're split on who we're going to romance. I've seen a few folks in the comments suggesting we put it to a community vote. Absolutely not. I'm not losing a popular vote for a third time. Anyway, here's Kaidan aggravating his migraine by staring directly into a bright screen. What's the game plan for Donald today, Barry? After much convincing, I've gotten Donald to engage in some of the it's side missions, the so he'll start out on the Citadel today, Thoughts? starting a lot of questions. Then he'll head off to Pharos and start the mission there, and then I'll pick it up next time. Right. Thank God for that. I am not in the mood to play tower defense against the Thorian Straight Creepers. Up. There's something wrong with all of this. This Saren is looking for records on some kind of galactic extinction, but we can't get backup from the Council? Sorry, Commander. There's writing on the wall here, but someone isn't reading it. People call Caden boring, but he's actually spitting facts right here. Caden is a sensible and well put together squad mate. And that does make him boring. People like Jack and Grunt because they're both crazy and violent. Making enjoyable fictional characters is like making a well seasoned chicken breast. The mental illness adds spice. Without that, all you have is the plainest, whitest chicken imaginable. In Caden's defense, his background is actually pretty interesting. The thing is, he's worked through all his problems before he joins up with Shepard, unlike every other squad mate. ...evaluation of our abilities so an understanding of biotics could be compiled. Anything you need, Commander? What's your opinion on the last mission? Dr. Tassoni. Seems like a sweet girl. Easy on the eyes. See, Donald, you and Caden have so much in common, you're both Asari enjoyers. A broken clock is right twice. No, Commander. Just art appreciation. Art appreciation is a pretty PG-13 way of saying you're undressing someone with your eyes. Commander, you have a minute to talk. Oh boy, here we go. I keep an open this is the conversation with Ashley that has done irreversible damage to Ash's reception among the Mass Effect fan base. All right. I know things are different aboard the Normandy, but uh, I'm, I'm concerned about the aliens, Vicarian and Rex. With all due respect, Commander, should they have full access to the ship? 
Ashley, god damn it, they don't have you full don't access to the ship. You're standing right across from Garrus. Ashley is valid. It's only been like three decades since the first contact war. You can't trust Turians. What's crazy is that Ashley brought up Rex and Garrus as potential threats but is ignoring that Tally is literally studying the Normandy's engine. It's no secret that Ash has a soft spot for Tally. I'm sure they both get along over their hatred of the guest. Yeah, see, the only alien that's hanging around engineering is Tally. Rex states in Mass Effect 3 that he only hung around in the cargo bay and Garrus just calibrates the Mako. How do you get from relying on ourselves to mistreating our allies? I don't mean we should mistreat them, Commander. I just think we should be prepared to go it without them. Ash is right. As Mass Noble Effect 3 pretty much confirms now. that the Their aliens will always the prioritize themselves. <laughs> the Council's had a grudge against us since the first contact war. You mean since we blew those damn much. Turians up I like we did dodo birds? Look, if you're fighting a bear and the only way for you to survive is to sick your dog on it and run, you'll do it. No, the f I won't. Yeah, all right. Ashley is way off base here. I'm fighting alongside my pup. Ashley clearly hasn't seen that video of the Australian guy who squared up with a kangaroo to rescue one of his dogs. Bro punched the roo and it was straight flabbergasted. Thing was like, did this motherfucker just stick me for real? Terra firma is a pack of jackals. The founders had ideals. Ashley is hilariously misinformed about terra firma. The organization can't be older than 26 years since it was a response to the first contact war. The founder was forced to resign due to a kickback scandal, and the current leader, who we know as Charles Saraceno, is being backed by Cerberus as they assassinated his opponent in 2173. Barack, you were president for eight years and a senator for three years before that. Why in the hell are you so engrossed in the politics of Mass Effect? I told you, I'm in this for the world building. This sh runs deep if you actually pay attention to it. I get enough of this political sh in my day to day without thinking about it while I'm gaming. I'm surprised you get any of it at all the way you be dozing off on camera, Joe. Damn, you know it's free eats when even Barack is clowning on Sleepy Joe. All right, I can see where your concerns are coming from, Williams. But this is a multilateral mission. You're going to have to work with aliens, like it or not. It won't be a problem, Commander. You say jump, I say how high. You tell me to kiss a Torian, I'll ask which cheek. Oh, are we giving out kisses on command? Would you kiss anyone I ordered you to? That depends, sir. If you ordered me to kiss a superior officer, that would be a violation of the regs concerning fraternization. That would make it an illegal order. I'd be required to decline and relieve you of command. Well, okay then. The worst she can say is no, my ass. She just threatened to end Shepard's we'll career. Later. I've said it before and I'll Looking say it again. Dating in the workplace is like eating where you shit. Ashley is so right for that one. Top of my class in flight school, I earned that. All those commendations in my file, I earned every single one. Those were Joker earned all his commendations just like how he earned his place on the Normandy by stealing the ship what are you talking and about? taking it on what a joyride. Even Joker mean, didn't think that would work out for him. You you Unreal know. respect to Joker. Stole the Normandy, flew okay. circles around the Alliance this. Marines, and was Real made the helmsman on the galaxy's the finest ship. Properly, they're basically hollow, too much force, and they'll shatter. Even with crutches and my leg braces, it's hard to get around. Do we One ever see Joker static. with crutches or leg braces? No, but granted, that's because he's glued to his seat 90% of the trilogy. In my hands, and I'll make her dance for you. Just don't ask me to get up and dance unless, you know, you like the sound of snapping shin bones. Okay, we're dropping on the Citadel. What do I need to look out for here, Barack? We got a call from Nasana Dantius, so you're gonna to wanna to talk to her. There's Emily Wong, Rita's quest over in Flux, helping out Dr. Michelle, dealing with Chorbin's fight with his partner. There's a whole lot for you to do, Donald. I hope all of this ends with a legendary sex scene or something. No, but it does end with us getting a lot of experience and credits. Oh God, not this guy. F that, I'm walking past him. Okay, or it'll just force me into the conversation. Can't escape your superior officers, Donald. I might have to talk to him, I'm but I'll be damned if I'm going to salute him. Is there something you need? Let's get one thing clear, Shepard. You might be a specter to the aliens, but to me, you're just another junior officer. Be respectful. What are you going to do about it, Milk Hale Love I Bitch? Fire me? I'm a specter. I'm outside your chain of command. That's not even a joke, Admiral or not. He has no right entering the Normandy or even speaking to Shepard like this. If Mass Effect leaned more in the role play aspect, Shepard would be able to distance themselves from the Alliance. I can advance our interests to the Council. You still know what color your blood is, Shepard? I'm about to show you what color your blood is if you don't get out my way. Hey, Donald, if you hate Milkailovich so much, I think you ought to know he dies if you save the Council. You mean I have to choose between the Council and this douche? Tough decision on one hand, the Council. But on the other hand, Boris over here. This experiment 
diverted billions from our appropriations bills for this only billions huh i guess military system. funding didn't keep no, increasing into the 22nd century i would have expected us to be well into the hundreds of trillions by then commander. normandy is an alliance warship i'm pretty sure you can tell the admiral to get bent if you want to donald Nah, that wouldn't be as satisfying. I want to force him to change his mind. Ah, uh, good old gaslighting never gets old. Won't be long. Commander, I'm not happy. Sounds like a fairly common situation. Shepard with an attitude is one of my favorites. I like to think renegade Shepard is fully aware they can get away with almost anything and loves flexing that fact. Commander Aft of everyone else is inefficient. What if he needs to discuss with the operators toward the bow? Just hear no better, you loser. If you can't hear me yelling you know orders from the back, the you better acquire a hearing aid or something. With the best DIs. A fair point. I suppose the design has no chance of becoming standard. No need to worry about a generation of recruits learning things bass backwards. I had to shake my head at that drive core of yours. 120 billion credits of element zero to make this thing able to move without giving itself away. You realize we could make drive cores for 12,000 fighters with that money? What good is it? The Normandy's stealth drive is probably its most important feature. Without it, Shepard would never have been able to make successful drops during the events of Mass Effect 3. I'm glad and that we're managing to keep the, the renegade options open. Aircraft, submarines and tanks. Damn, Shepard casually flexing their PhD in history. It's easy to think of Shepard as just some jarhead soldier. But the character is actually fairly intelligent when it counts. Krogan? Asari? Torians? Dog, we just heard this from Ashley and we're having it drummed in some more. It doesn't even matter if Garrus is on the ship. The Turians co-built the Normandy with the Alliance. They know all its capabilities. That's right. If I want to invite every Asari from Korra's den onto the Normandy, you better believe I will. You want them on board that bad? Fine. Don't quote regs at me. You have anything else to say, Commander? Any other just What the f for this What's the morality business? requirement for these options? Uh, I believe it's nine charm or nine intimidate. Yes, We're well, probably well, meant to I do side quests before this. the snap inspection. This one is my sir. bad. It's I'll good. We mental boomed this guy into giving us a better report. It will not be as negative as I planned. Good hunting, Commander Shepard. Make us proud. Commander Shepard, sorry to bother you. Uh, what the hell is this now? Oh, I'd completely forgotten. This is the quest that has to do with Shepard's origins from Minduar. Mass Effect 1 has to be the only game where this stuff is relevant at all. It's interesting how it all ties together. Naturally, if Shepard was a colonist, they grew up as a farmer and the raid occurs when they're 16. If you're Spacer, it's actually Shepard's mother and the crew of the SSV Einstein who respond to the attack. And it's there that Hannah Shepard's friend Ernesto Zabaleta gets his PTSD. It's too bad they weren't able to factor this stuff in more in the later games. It's pure copium to hope for this, but imagine a Mass Effect game with the same levels of role-playing as Baldur's Gate 3. You're going to OD Barack. BioWare barely has the resources to make Mass Effect 4, much less make a game of the same scope as Baldur's Gate. Donald, you're literally a billionaire. Why don't you use all that money to fund the next Mass Effect game instead of buying more McDonald's every day? And give up my three times a day Big Mac? Never gonna happen. Donald, don't do it. Don't do what? You know damn well what. You're talking to Kalisa. And I know this is a renegade run and all. But we live in the year 2023 at the time of recording. And probably 2024 when this video goes up, punching the reporter is gonna be a bad look. I'm just giving the fake news media a little preview of what's going to happen if they badger me during the 2024 election cycle. Brother, you're not beating the allegations on this one. Not going to lie, I'm actually with Donald on this one. Punch reporters out in Minecraft. Saying in Minecraft doesn't make it okay. We do not condone violence against the media. The media! Donald, you are not Senator Armstrong. Nano machines are not saving you here. Come on, Barry, you're telling me you never at least thought about punching some news motherfucker out. No, why would I do that? My whimsical charm is enough to disarm any heckler. Have you encountered any situations where the Citadel asked you to place its needs before the needs of Earth? See, the f kind of question is this. The kind of question that gets you punched out by a space marine? I suppose there is a decent payoff in Mass Effect 3 if you assault Kalisa twice in the trilogy. She'll duck you in the final confrontation and then even knock Shepard flat on their back. Should we be spoiling things that'll happen in the third game? I mean, there's zero chance I'm letting Kalisa flatten me. The trilogy is over 10 years old, and while we appreciate your attention, this should not be your first experience with the Mass Effect trilogy. Play the game yourself first. 
Do you think it was appropriate to hand Earth's most advanced warship over to the Citadel? Oh my God, she's really starting to piss me off. Donald, don't do it. You're not playing the Dark Urge right now. You don't have to be evil. Have? I don't have to be anything Barack. I want to be evil. Yes, Donald, let the hate flow through the you. Alliance uniform. And if you think anyone other than me says where the Normandy can go, you're sadly mistaken. No offense intended, Commander. No offense I'm intended. Sure she just pushed me over the edge. Superior. Sticks and stones, course, Donald. If I had a stick or some stones, I'd hit her with them. One last question, Commander. Rumors back home say you're tracking a rogue specter named Saren. Do you have any comment on I'm that? I'm gonna do it. Donald, don't do it. I'm in favor of this renegade behavior, Barry. You're outvoted. You can just end the interview peacefully or throw the council under the bus. Or I can hit her with one of these. I've had enough of your snide insinuations. Ha! Did they use some stock punching sound effect? You I'm very disappointed in you, bitch. Donald. Oh, please, Barry, get off your high horse. You know that's better for the content well, sure anyway. Some things are not worth the content. Barton Joe Shepard's reputation has been ruined. Please, it was ruined the moment we made him look like Mr. Potato Head took up a career as a circus clown. I'm pretty sure I picked up the OSD in Fist's office. We just forgot to turn it in. What do you mean, we? You said you'd do that. Well, I was thinking about doing this stuff off screen, but I think some of the folks wanted to see some of this stuff. Another quest with more fake news media. Hey, lay off Donald. Emily Wong reports on the real stuff. She does good work. Here, Commander, for your trouble. This bag feels a bit light, Wong. I had to kill Donald, chill out. They're worth more than your offering. I didn't tell you to kill Fist. We're two for two on assaulting the media. Where's Diana Allers so we can make it three? Here. You know, I forget all the time that there's another club on the Citadel. You pretty much don't need to come here until the very end of the game. But In Flux contains part of a trilogy long side mission that involves Conrad Werner. Is this the one where one of the sisters, I forget which one, saves Conrad from dying in three? You got it. And fun fact on this mission, it was originally going to be about Shepard reuniting two sisters who worked separately involving Rita and her sister, who was named Ari. The end goal would be either Rita is fired or Ari is rehired. Sounds like a downgrade from what we have now. Probably unlike the cut content on Therum, this is far less detailed. Not to interrupt this super fun bit of trivia, but why in the f*** does the music keep bouncing from right to left? Yeah, it's annoying me. The song isn't even good. Afterlife clears any club that's on the Citadel. Ah, uh, yes, Afterlife. The place where Batarians spike the drinks they serve to humans and where a serial killing Asari might assault you. Exactly. Sounds like my kind of place. Great. I need those supplies for my clinic. I can't. You can and you will, or your story won't stay secret for long. Dr. Michelle just can't stay out of trouble. If we had a nickel every time we saw this woman getting blackmailed, we'd have two nickels. Which I know isn't a lot, but it's weird it happened twice. I do love these kinds of side missions. They give us a Citadel that feels more alive than either of the two versions we get in Mass Effect 2 and 3. Does helping Michelle do anything for us? Aside from doing things out of the goodness of our hearts, she'll give a discount on her products at the end of the mission. Isn't she an option to join the Normandy in 3, or am I misremembering that? If you somehow fuck up bad enough that Dr. Chakwas dies on the suicide mission, you can recruit Michelle to replace her. You can still bring Michelle if Chakwas survives. You just have to turn the ladder down first. I want that free discount, so just point me towards them. Maybe I can get you out of this. Tell me what they want. I have to give some of my medical supplies to a merchant in the markets. They expect delivery today. Give me your contact's name. I'll deal with this guy, whoever he is. Deal with him? But won't they expose my past? The only thing they'll be exposing is their internal organs. They won't bother you again. I guarantee it. Hey there. Oh, you're not c are you? I took care of all the keepers, but we still have to settle this little dispute between Chorban and his partner, Jali. Sounds like a snooze mission to me. I don't even know who this Volus is. It's not a super important mission. I don't think it has any consequences that reach into Mass Effect 2 and 3, either. We've scanned all the keepers already, so it hardly matters. He's changed. Hi, I'll be with you in just a sec. We probably should have gone to see Jenna first and then talk to Jaleed since Rita's mission also takes us there too. Jesus Christ, do you need to optimize literally everything about this run? I'm surprised you don't have a speedrun record of Mass Effect 1, Barry. Now, if you don't mind, I need to get back to my customers. This isn't the game, Jenna. These people are dangerous. You want to know what's more dangerous? Talking about Jenna's undercover work and earshot of her targets? I can take care of myself. I need to go. I'm not
not a stripper. I don't get paid to stand around and look pretty. Tough girl. Detective Chellier, coming up. No offense, Commander, but what the hell were you thinking? Who the hell do you think you're talking to? Chellick here handled the case of two quarians that stowed on a Turian freighter, but he was kind enough to forego the charges. Why is this important? One of the quarians was Tali Zora. And now you have my attention. Unfortunately, Chellick isn't all too fond of quarians. He doesn't listen to Tally when she tries to present her evidence on Saren. Bro could have been the hero who helped us take down Saren, but he got in his own way. There's also a bit of inconsistency with Chellick. In Mass Effect 2, Emily Wong will report that Chellick succeeded Executor Palin as the head of CSEC. However, Palin is still in charge during the Mass Effect Retribution novel, which is after 2. It seems to be a leftover from cut content, wherein Palin would be killed by the Geth during the end of Mass Effect 1. Seems like Mass Effect 1 has a lot of cut content and storylines. I'll cut her loose, even get her out of Kor's den, no strings attached. Meet our man named Jax. Pick up the mods and bring them back here. That'll give me everything I need. Where can I find this, Jax? Have you checked Jax Summoner's is down Rift? In the lower level of the markets. I'll send word through our channels that you're the buyer. Good luck, Commander. Hey, there are rumors on Oh, the crap. That you've been made we should have gone to the markets through Cora's den. Incredible. Now we have to talk to Conrad. Come on, Donald. Conrad isn't that bad. Right. He may not be that Conrad. bad, but Conrad is a bit we of a fool. If you don't be nice to him here, he'll run off to try to prove himself to Commander Shepard. Even while you're out there kicking he attacks a group of Turians and is killed. That says a lot about you, Shepard. Hey, can I get your picture? Sure, no problem. Just hold up your gun. Perfect. Yikes, this is not a flattering angle for Shepard here. Weren't Garrus and Rex in the picture too? Thanks again, Commander. I'm gonna hang this in my living room. My wife will love it. Bro's showing off a picture of his crush to his wife. But you're gonna tell me everything. You boys can what go. you do here hardly matters. You can kill Chorbin if you want. The only thing we'll miss out on is the email where he talks changed. about his discoveries. Hey, I'll probably let him live. I want to keep Everything myself fresh for the beginning of Pharaoh's. Over our heads. I'm not trying to kill him. The lead's job was to disseminate our initial findings. But he decided to keep the data for himself. Maybe to sell it. I don't know. I should kill both of you idiots. I should kill them for this waste of time mission, but I'm feeling generous today. Uh, we have already scanned all the keepers. Shouldn't Chorben know that? He should, but it doesn't seem as though there's any dialogue for it. Even Bioware didn't think anyone would be down to run around looking for bugs to scan. Thank you, and happy scanning, Commander. Thankfully, both of our missions for Chellick and Dr. Michelle are right here in the same area. I'll start with the business for CSEC. I'm down for killing a Krogan. I wouldn't, Donald. Hold it. You get better rewards for solving things peacefully. A mod upgrade, some credits, and experience points. Granted less experience than if you kill him. Classic renegade results in an overall loss for the player. God damn it, let the next Mass Effect have a more rewarding pure renegade experience. Here you go. Shut up, Morlin. Last stop is to deal with the doctor's problems with the geeky Solarian. After this, we'll make a quick round on the Presidium, and then head off to Pharos. Leave the doctor alone. Or you'll have to deal with me. We can end this if you just bring me those supplies. Otherwise, I'll start telling people about the doctor's little secret. Her secret stays buried. Or I bury you. Shepard does not miss with the one-liners. Never hey, seen a more bitch-made Krogan than this here. guy right here. This if this was Rex, hard. he'd relish the chance to fight us. Well, that had to be the easiest Krogan to beat ever. Thank you, human. It is good to see him humbled so. The thug said he worked for a man named Bane. Interestingly Bane. enough, this do-nothing side mission transition straight into one, you could argue, is fairly important. What do you mean, Barry? This leads us into UNC Missing Marines and then UNC Cerberus. It's our first exposure into Cerberus, and we get to see just how bad the organization is. You say that like it matters. Despite everything we see in the missions, Shepard will be forced to work with Cerberus throughout Mass Effect 2. I, I, I know. I just think Is it's cool how this ties back to helping Dr. Michelle, which seems fairly unimportant at first glance. I heard what happened under the Artemis Tau Cluster. The Council wasn't too happy about the destruction of those Prothean ruins. This isn't a game, Ambassador. Wait, Shepard's I didn't know Udina and Anderson Sarah's comment on your galaxy. previous missions. I mean, I think that's I know, understandable. I just try to be Coming all the way back here after every single mission when you already have enough to do with the side missions seems tedious. 
Good thing Mass Effect 3 put the quantum entangler communication to use. You need to ask about Baines, Donald. Oh, shit. Looks like I'm not the only one with a yes, failing man. memory. Fuck you, Joe. What do you know about Armiston Baines? We're going to need to go talk to Admiral Kohoku after, but we'll do it later. Baines is dead. Has been for quite some time. Time to catch up with Nasana. I don't have any eyebrows, Dantius. I don't care if they technically don't have eyebrows. Asari should just draw them on so they don't look like a blue Voldemort. It wouldn't even be that weird. They already wear eyeshadow, so makeup isn't a foreign concept. You know, as cool as it would be to explore the Mass Effect universe, it sure seems to be a lawless world. People are always getting ganked in space. Well, think about it. Space is a big, empty void. All you gotta do is commit your crime and leave immediately. Could be decades before someone finds you. Probably helps that the entire Terminus system is one giant f the rules portion of the Milky Way that the Council has no control over. Slave was demanded a huge ransom from me in exchange for returning. We get the diplomat sister and we hold a ransom for one million credits. Do you want me to deliver the ransom? I've already transferred the funds to the account they specified. So I just paid the ransom. Now she's still missing. And if anyone finds out what I did, I could end up in jail. Then why in the hell did she to choose to meet up in a back. public lounge in the we embassies? Everyone I've can hear her admitting to wrongdoing. Nasana might as well have told us all this when she called us on the Normandy. A small mercenary band operating out of the Artemis Tau cluster. Now here's a topic you two should find interesting. I don't care what you The validity think, of proven medicine. What are you talking about, Barry? Just listen and you'll no, find out. Hold up, these two are named don't Petrovsky. Could they be related to the general by the same Can name from the Omega anything? DLC? That's a good call, Donald, but I'm sure it's just a coincidence. I'm not sure if too many people know this, but these two return in Mass Effect 2 and 3, still having arguments about the very baby they're referring to here. refused to let the baby undergo gene therapy in utero. Ooh, I know where this is going now. gene therapy was common. My husband Jacob died from a rare heart condition several months ago. There's a chance that the baby could develop the same heart condition, but routine gene therapy can eliminate it. A very small chance, Michael. And extranet reports say the therapy could harm the child. She'd been browsing Spacebook a little too it's often. It's less dangerous than the genetic enhancements that every soldier in the Alliance receives. Yeah, I don't think raising your voice is helping what here. What are the chances that your child will develop the heart condition? According to the doctors, there's a 1 in 50 chance. 1 in 50 is pretty f***ing high, I'm not gonna lie. I'd rather avoid the disease altogether than have to go through treatment my entire life. What are the chances that gene therapy could hurt the baby? 1 in 300 at most. But extra net articles say there could Well, it's just basic math at this point. Gene therapy about. wins. Donald, are you being for real right now? Understand. What? What's the problem? The if medicine is proven to be safer than the alternative, so she should get the gene therapy. I'm literally speechless hearing you say this right now. I really don't get why you're surprised by my thoughts. This is just what makes sense. Got a moment. Who the fuck is Helena Blake? I can't say I'm familiar with this NPC. She's just your friendly neighborhood grandma, except instead of giving out cookies and milk, she gives out guns and grenades. Now that's my kind of grandma. Fun fact, her voice actor Jane Singer also voices Shepard's mother, Hannah. So she's literally our mommy. Anyway. We will be completing her mission in the future, so we'll set the consequences of dealing with her on the back burner what do you for now. Get out of this? We finally turned in the missions to Chelik and Jalid. Now we can get on to the good stuff. Commander, Still one last thing, our little origin story mission. She's back there. Yes, sir. Behind those shipping containers. I've got a sniper position, but I don't think we'll need it. She's whoa, whoa, danger. what the hell is the sniper for? Yeah, I don't think we need an extra set of eyes on the mentally unstable woman. Anything I should know about this Barack? I always pick Earthborn Shepherd. Donald, you're really going to need to at least try to be a decent human being here. Well, that won't be happening. Donald, you'll get less experience if you let the Renegade outcome play out. Oh, for fuck's sake, why is Renegade even a path in this game? Is it safe to assume that the Renegade outcome is that sniper being put to use, Barry? You got it. My name is Shepard. Lieutenant Gerard sent me to talk to you. What's your name? Animals don't get names. Animals? The masters put their symbols on her. Hot metal all over her back. She screams when they do it. For the like, three people in the Mass Effect fan base who don't hate Batarians. You must have a name. I think this conversation will change your mind. Can you remember it? She remembers a lot of things. Telephone. They call her that. She... she doesn't remember the rest. 
What's this feeling? Leave I feel. Her alone. Do I feel bad for this girl? It's a Christmas miracle. A Donald's cold you. and gray heart is finally okay. feeling sympathy for another person. No, she's no good. Don't want to be handled again. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. My bad. Donald, what happened? are you legitimately feeling sympathetic right now? Yes. No, I don't care. She sees them. They're yelling. Run, hide. They hit the masters. But the masters, they have lights and hoses. Daddy's. He's melting. Holy shit, did they use flamethrowers on them? This is some Germany in World War I type. Look, stupid, stupid. Talitha, you got this. Pull it together. Actually trying to prop her up, Donald. You do you care. Shut the f up, years, Barack. I'm not doing this out of sympathy. I just can't to stand to see someone so weak because strong. of the Batarians. Those She's bastards stupid. don't deserve to live at all, much all less rent are. free in someone's head. That's what the masters say. She sees them. Mommy and Daddy. Burning in white light, melting, going to pieces. They can't even say anything to her. Barry, I need you to let me play the Arrival DLC when we get to Mass Effect 2. Get in line, buddy. I'm the one pressing the big red button. Can she stop remembering now, please? I'm going to take a step towards you now. Okay? You're actually playing this perfectly, Donald. If you step forward too often, Talitha will unalive herself from the stress. So long as you keep talking to her, things will go well. If she dies, that means the Batarians win, and I can't have that. Donald cares. It's in his own little weird and twisted way, but he cares all the same. Why are you alive? Why are you? Why aren't you like her? Broken. Only fit to dig and carry. Because I'm unbreakable like Captain America's shield. Uh, Donald, I'm pretty sure Cap's shield has been... Joe, I saw Endgame. Don't f*** up my analogy. I got buried under rubble. If they saw me, they left me for dead. Dead animals can't work. You lose your mommy and daddy, but you don't dig, you don't carry. You stand up. She wishes she could stand up. I'm going to take a step towards you now, okay? Don't let the Batarians win, Talitha. Please don't touch her. She's dirty. You'll catch it. So interesting note on this. If you force Talitha to use the sedative, it's something Shepard injects into her arm. But if you give it to her, she takes it as if it's a pill. Damn, what the f***? She took that pill raw. No water, no bread, just down the hatch. This is powerful stuff. You won't dream at all. You're about to get that good sleep. like that. It hurts when she... And I remember me. She wants to remember. Damn, did we just let her fall onto the hard ass metal floor? Well, if the meds didn't knock her out, the fall sure did. Donald, I'm proud of Is you. It over, Commander? You came down from the same place I at the start of the episode and assaulted Kalisa, but you that came back up and helped a girl Didn't suffering from down. PTSD it's find just, peace. Hey, I don't get used to it. The only thing to do now is to fuck up some Batarians in the name she of Mindwar. If Shepard is 28 or 29 at the One start of the trilogy and was 16 when the raid on Mindwar happened, this would make Talitha what? It's 18? Something like that, Batarian stole her entire childhood. It's the certainty. Message coming in. Oh God, what now? Time for you to reap what you sowed, Donald. Oh please, they're not gonna do anything to me. The brass isn't happy with the way you treated her. This comes straight from the Joint Military Command. Am I supposed to care? I would watch the attitude, Donald. That's Admiral Hackett you're speaking to. She wasn't gonna let the facts get in the way of the story she wanted to write. Commander, if she had done that at a bar, she'd go home in an ambulance. See, even Hackett care. knows what she deserves. Can't mistreat the press. Just wanted to let you know what the response was back home. I won't keep you any longer. Fifth Fleet out. Now, at long last, we're finally going to Pharos. Planet looks like sh from all the way up here. The Council for Real gave us all the ugliest colony planets they could find. Eden Prime was the best we got, and that got blown up by a Reaper. Now we got some good planets like Beckenstein and Mass Effect 2. Ah, uh, look who it is, the legendary David Al Talakani. A shame we forgot to include him on the tier list. What makes this guy so great? How could you forget what David did for us, Joe? I'm drawing a blank. Help me out, Barry. Just watch and listen, Joe, and you'll witness the greatness of David Al Talakani. Please, 
Up the stairs past the freighter. Oh, sh he saved us from that shot. Who knows what would have happened to Shepard if David hadn't been standing there? How dare they attack our good friend? The Geth will pay for this in blood. Don't get too reckless, Donald. We're not counting that glitch from Therum against Joe, so first to die is still up for grabs. Don't worry about me, Barack. This is light work. I might be worried if this was the tower defense run, but these Geth are nothing. You might want to watch that sniper, little bro. Not even close, baby. Liara and Rex was a good combo, Donald. Lots of CC with biotics, adequate damage, and you handle tech. Well, I figured I better leave you with a decent team. You'll need it to prevent yourself from dying on this planet. Uh-huh. I'm pretty sure I'd have been fine no matter who you left me with. And you say I'm overconfident. Why is the Geth moving all sexy? Um, excuse me? What, we went over this during the smash and pass tier list, Barry. Joe, you dumbass, we did that with Bill, not Barack. Yeah, speaking of which, I changed the password to the account. I'm never letting either of you upload filth like that ever again. Don't be such a loser, Barry. The video did well. You three buffoons put the husk in smash, talked about using female Turian head fringes as handlebars, and the Citadel keepers have a dumpy. The fuck is wrong with you? Ah, oh, Commander. I'm glad they finally sent somebody to help us. Fi Dan and Arcelia, two nobody NPCs. Arcelia. Sorry, Commander. Everyone's on edge since. Watch out! We've got gas in the tower. All right, time for me to clear my Protect final challenge for the, the day. Colony. Protect the heart of the colony, Donald. Hey, uh, Donald, you might want to play carefully here. This battle is actually kind of. Shut the fuck up, Barack. I'm tired of you backseating me. I can handle the combat. All right, fine. I'll keep my mouth shut. Don't say I didn't try to warn you. At least he's using his powers now. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy, give me some more. Little too eager with that push, Donald. I'm about to push you. Why can't I back up? It placed a shield behind you. What the f kind of 1,000 IQ play was that? Turns out the Geth aren't so dumb after all. Light work, no reaction. Perimeter clear. Who's ready for round three? Good movement, Donald. I like what I'm seeing. Told you I had this in the bag. Donald, there's a laser on you. Oh, fuck. Well, there goes Liara. Get ready to use Unity, Donald. I'll drop it if I see Rex start to go down. For now, the two of us have it. Donald, you might be throwing right now. You are the last person to be backseating me, Joe. That dash wasn't soon enough, but you're lucky you had Barrier up. Thankfully, my name isn't Jacob Taylor. Donald, turn around. Oh, shit. Heal Donald. Yo, let's no, fucking go. No, 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 God damn it! no, fuck, shit, fuck you. Well, I'll be marking this down as the first, nobody doubts it, death of the series. God fucking damn it, are you kidding me, stupid fucking sniper bitch? Hey, Donald, big fella, what happened? Wasn't I supposed to die first? Did you lose the plot or something? Joe, I will fucking headbutt you. That's a real pretty critical mission failure, Donald. Imagine losing to a single Geth sniper. Absolutely could never be me, ha ha! Donald, do you want some help or not? I don't need any damn help. All I need is some peace and quiet so I can focus. Yeah, Barry, let the big man focus. He gets nervous when he has a crowd. I am gonna fucking eviscerate these damn bots and use their wires to decorate the White House when I win it back in 2024. All right, Donald, time for round two. Where in the fuck is that sniper at? Bro is real life mad right now. Get these goddamn shields the fuck out my face. Those shields are the only thing keeping you from getting eaten alive. There's the fucking sniper.
You want to play rough? Okay, say hello to my little friend. Okay, well now you don't have to worry about dying a second time from the exact same enemy. Hey, uh, Donald, where is Rex? Wait, where the f*** is Rex? No, not again. Get the f*** off me. Ooh, you got lucky. Okay, I'm not even clowning you anymore. Where the hell is Rex? I think he might have gotten trapped on the other side of the door. You gotta be f***ing kidding me. You're welcome to go check if you want. I don't think you can open the door, but it's worth looking. God damn you, Rex. Stop eating so much Varen and maybe you'll be able to keep up. Yep, looks like he's trapped on the other side of the door there. God damn it, fine. Liara and I will win this alone. Let's do this. Watch that destroyer, Donald. No more gun for you, bitch. The red and blue duo got this. You're shooting a corpse, Donald. One geth left. Only one, it's Leroy Jenkins time. <laughs> Liara, you stole the final shot. Well, I hope that made up for Joe getting bailed out by the buggy Krogan warlord last episode. I'm about to be sleeping soundly knowing I no longer have to worry about dying first. Mark my words, Joe. By the end of this, you will have the most deaths. Just wait for Grissom Academy. Bold of you to assume I'll even be playing the Academy. Rex, you big fat son of a bitch. Where were you? Bro was sitting back laughing at you and Liara. The tower's secure. Thanks to you, Commander. I just did what I had to. Well, well I think that about side. does it for the boys and I today, and I gotta they say, what an eventful day we've had. No matter what else happens in this series, I want you all to remember that it was Donald who died what first. Do they want? Yeah, well, we can't all get lucky and be saved by the NPC's AI taking a fat dump on itself. Sounds like copium in its rawest and purest form to me, buddy. Next time, I'll take over and conclude our mission on Pharos. How do I get that? We'll also be taking care of the few side tasks on the colony as well. It really is for the best that you're playing most of Pharaoh. Seeing Donald here, I'm pretty sure he'd get by. Fuck you, Brandon. Step closer to Sarah. Then maybe I can get this colony operational again. We'll get going then. Good luck, Commander. And we'll get going too. All right, y'all stay safe out there. Drink plenty of water. Get some sleep. I hope y'all enjoyed your Christmas and New Year and we'll catch you on the next one. We're here, y'all, back at it with the Geth Crisis on Pharos. Get out your blankie, your glass of warm milk, and your favorite teddy bear, because we're about to get some beauty sleep with this one. Barack and I had a long talk before we began the video, and I actually managed to convince him to not waste time on the BS side missions on this planet. Didn't take much convincing, to be honest. If I were alone, I'd do them no problem. But the Pharos side missions would be terrible for the content. What were they again? I remember something about getting some batteries. There's the power cells, the batteries, as you call them. Then there's hunting Varen meat for the colony, fighting some geth in the tunnels, and restoring the water supply. I did not sign up to help build and maintain the Pharaoh's colony's infrastructure. None of those missions even count for anything going into Mass Effect 3. There is one task regarding a Gavin Hossel that does have a tiny bit of relevance. We'll delve into it when we get there. Barry, I saw a fella asking if there was any cut content in Pharos that might make it a better mission. Sorry to bear bad news, but not really. The most notable thing I saw was some cut content for an acid landmine, which would have been an additional obstacle in the Thorian's lair. Oh, hell no. The last thing this godforsaken assignment needs is a poisonous swamp. The hell do they think this is, Blight Town? One thing I can give Pharos here is its Mako section. Out of the first three main missions we get, it's the most appealing. Not exactly a tall order. The alternatives here are Noveria and Therum. All three get gapped by Vermeer and Ilos. I'm not even going to lie to you all. I'm not looking forward to the Thorian lair today. At least you're playing it. We have to sit and watch you. It's easy to miss your first time, but there are some pockets here where you can find a geth or two and some decent equipment. Jesus Christ, it looks like under the bed in here. This walkway can't be for anything important if there's no lights.
Where's the geth at? Barack, do you not see it? Oh, sh No goddamn way did you just get jump scared in Mass Effect. Shut up, man. It's dark in here. I told you, Barry, you're getting old too. Your game sense ain't what it used to be. My game sense is perfectly fine. I beat Baldur's Gate 3 on honor mode. Yeah, after five attempts, one of which involved you getting bodied by the brains at the beginning of Act 1. How exactly can they see us from where they are? This goddamn wall. I guess Democrats love losing to geometry. Yeah, and I guess Republicans like dying to get snipers. Hey, last I checked, the most recent president to get sniped wasn't a Republican. Good fucking God, Donald. Come on, man. It was 40 years ago. We're well past the moratorium date. Time to visit some of our favorite non-player characters in the entire franchise. That's now I know it's not my dementia Relax, making John. me forget They're who in the f*** is Ethan yeah. John. A man who probably dies in 95% of all Mass Effect want? 1 playthroughs. Command not for no Shepard. reason. In the confrontation with Jong, in order to solve you things see, without killing him, you need an insane 10, intimidate, or 12 charm Jesus, points. Juliana. Which is I'm not an amount you'll have face. if you happen to take on Pharaohs first. On or if you just straight don't focus on putting points into morality. By Alongside Jong, we have, have other iconic characters like Juliana, Arcelia, Fi Dan, Exogeny Security 1, and his brother, Exogeny Security 2. I can forgive Pharos for being a dull mission with dull side missions, but holy hell, the characters have to be better than this. It's probably not a coincidence that the mission featuring a human colony has the most boring side characters. Those headquarters are private property, soldier. Remove the geth and nothing else. I'm not interested in your company secrets. Man, why do they give the option to say shut up? and have it be something completely different and significantly less funny. Shut up would have hit a lot harder because it would seem like Shepard just flat doesn't care about what Jong is saying at all. Like, what's he gonna do about it? Not only is Shepard a fully trained Alliance Marine with a small armory on their body, we're also a Spectre who has diplomatic immunity. If we want to go through their company files, we will. Of course. And please remember, if you see my daughter... Okay, here we go. Let's talk about the only side mission on Pharos that matters. Got a bit of a problem. The mission is called Pharos, data recovery. And put simply, all we're going to do is go find a terminal with Hossel's data, save it to an OSD, and bring it back to him. If you do that, then complete the separate side mission called UNC Asari Writings. Purchase the Elkos Combine Armory License and manage to keep Conrad Werner alive in Mass Effect 2 and 3. You'll be rewarded with Conrad's dissertation as bonus war assets. How many war assets are we talking here? Four. If I get the the f do you mean four? Like 400? No, I mean four, as in the 4th of July, the four seasons, the four elements, the four beetles. A single digit. So let me get this straight. We're being asked to go recover Gavin's data and bring it back to him. Then we're expected to go to a bunch of random planets to find the 16 Asari writings. Then we're expected to know to buy that specific armory license? Lastly, we have to not get Conrad Werner killed. Is that correct? Well, to be fair, you only need 10 of the Asari writings to get the extra war assets. And this is the only side mission on Pharos that counts for anything at all later in the trilogy. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, remind me, where exactly did we rank Pharos when we were covering the missions last year? I believe we put it in D tier. And last I checked, you were the one advocating for Pharos. Yeah, I'd like to backpedal on that. Pharos could probably go lower. It's always good to come over here and grab some clutch ammo mods. I can usually never get this door open. If you're not on a tech class yourself, it's always worth it to bring Tally with you. I don't bring Tally with me for the tech. I bring her so I can look at her. So when we peep this malfunctioning object, the Geth armature will wake up. Screw that. Good luck, Barry. It's not really that hard. Watch and learn. Random bullshit. Go. All of that for a drop of blood. All a part of the setup, Donald. Sabotage is a crazy power. Oh, you're charging up your final flash? Sure would be a shame if you just weren't anymore. Barack, why did you use neural shock on a geth just then? Why not? Might as well throw the kitchen sink at it. Fair, there's no kill like overkill. Oh, look, a little snack for Rex. Damn it. Well, good thing she missed. Our shields would have protected us, no problem. I don't know about that one, Joe. This is a cut scene. That single shot could have killed one any one of us. What do you two think Varen tastes like? Probably like chicken, space Who chicken to be exact. What are you Probably tastes here? like you're going to get scale itch. Barack, I asked how they tasted, Everyone not whether we wanted to smash one or not, besides we put the Varen in pass. Thank I God for that, because I about lost hope control. for the two of you and Bill. I'm guessing they're here for the Thorian. What's a Thorian? 
The Thorian is an interesting alien. That was underutilized in the story. It's just a giant plant, Barack. I swear I saw one of them in the garden section at Walmart. No what wonder can Walmart employees you know can, can never escape Thorian? despite how shitty the job is. I the Thorian is in there making them return to the building. Anyway, the Thorian is confirmed to predate the Protheans. We have no idea how long it's been around. You Could be more than 50,000 years. Maybe it even dates back to the time of the Leviathans. Is it a coincidence that the Leviathans and Thorians have similar mind control abilities, which is also an ability that the Reapers adopted for indoctrination? I don't think it's a coincidence at all. The Thorian and Leviathans were able to evolve without the Reapers' influence and achieved mind control abilities. Mass Effect seems to be implying that becoming a species that controls thralls of lesser species is the apex of life. That would explain why biotics are so overpowered. You control things with your mind and the dominate power allows you to overwrite the will of other organics. And with that, I can now confidently say that the control ending is the best ending. Shepard imposes their will on the Reapers, allowing the Milky Way to reach a new level. And that's why we'll be picking control when we reach the end of the trilogy. Well, hey, now, I don't think so, Barry. We all know the audience would much prefer we end on Destroy. Besides, ED makes it clear that Synthesis is the end-all be-all goal for the galaxy, not Control. We're not picking Synthesis either. We can put it to a vote, and we all know Destroy will win by a lot. Yeah, and that'll be the only popular vote you'll ever win, Donald. I know you're not going to remember saying that come November, Joe. But don't worry, I will. Stupid machine. Hey, there's my favorite Krogan NPC. Poor bastard is having some IT issues. I wonder what Krogan do when their tech isn't working. They probably either shoot it or kidnap a Solarian off Surakesh. Damn it! Tell me what I want or I'll blast your virtual ass into actual dust! And it seems this Krogan is choosing to shoot it. Well, no need to worry. We're a Sentinel. We can help him out. ...security exemption or make an appointment with... Stupid machine! If there is nothing else, please step aside. There is a queue forming behind you for the use of this console. Looks like bro decided he didn't want to pay for tech support. God damn, what is this, a game of Overwatch? I can't tell what's happening. If this were Overwatch, you'd be shooting that Krogan for five minutes while two healers had heart attacks trying to keep him alive. See, that's how a Krogan is supposed to act. Joe, you got mad lucky with the Krogan Battlemaster on Therum. Hey, don't blame me because your little ruse to have me die over and over again didn't pan out. Not to worry, Mass Effect 1 is easy mode. We will see you get clapped up in the sequels. I don't know, the only one getting clapped up is you, Donald. Hold on, the Geth are having a prayer session. That's enough prayer for you. Praise the sun! Do they ever explain what that glowing white orb is supposed to be to the Geth? Probably some kind of Reaper tech. The Geth do see them as gods. All right, getting to Gavin's data isn't exactly free. We've got three Krogan we need to get past. What are these three even doing here? They're probably buddies with the Krogan who was having tech support issues. I'd guess they left him behind. Choo-choo, motherfucker! Damn, he got floored by that shot. Now his buddy wants some? It bears repeating that Biotics in Mass Effect 1 are stupid broken. I can't even blame them for nerfing Biotics in Mass Effect 2. These three Krogan wouldn't be this free. Oh, shit. Okay, I take it back. Good sirs, you're not free at all. How the hell are you getting out of this one, Barry? You forget, we're on the Sentinel class. This is still free eats. Jump him! Let him get up, let him get up. Poor bastard didn't stand a chance. Now, Joe, what do you think you would have done if you had played that instead of Barack? They would have been too scared to face me head to head just like the Krogan Battlemaster. Hubris comes before the fall, Sleepy Joe. Oh, this puzzle, I can never get it on my first try. Joe, it's basic edition. Shit, no wonder you were a C student and finished in the lower 12% of your class, Joe. Yeah, all right, buddy. Why don't you release your grades to the public to see? Hell no. The fact that you did that and I didn't is proof enough that I'm smarter than you. Light work, no reaction. All right, Barry, don't pat yourself on the back. I'm pretty sure you just remember the buttons instead of actually doing the math in your head. Y'all don't let the overly sophisticated way Barack talks distract you from the fact that in college he lied about being a Marxist to pick up women. Don't hate the player, Donald. Hate the game. Bro said, player, I know for a fact that little strategy of yours didn't work. Does Michelle know you did that? All right, chill, chill.
Keep those colonists away from the Normandy. Gun them down if you have to. Uh, will do, Commander. We'll fire off a few warning shots. That should send them running. Joker, that's not what I ordered. Warning well, shots, bro. We're well past needing a warning. We you can't seriously want Joker to shoot the colonists dead, right? Do I look like I'm smiling, Joe? Well, yes, actually, you are smiling. Well, I'm not, and I say Joker should turn the colonist into a glass table, if only to shorten the length of this mission. So we definitely can skip this and just head on back to the colony. But we really should go turn the side mission into Gavin. Yeah, I'd sure hate to miss those four crucial war assets. Hey, you never know, Donald. Four war assets might be the make or break in getting the perfect destroy ending. Damn it! Come, come out where I can see you! All of you! Oh, Jung, my poor friend, you're gonna regret this. <sighs> Shepard, damn it. I knew it was too much to hope the Geth would kill you. This man thought the I Geth would kill Shepard. facts about you in the exogenic database. I know what you did on Torfin. There's no reason for this to get bloody. If you know what we did Not on Torfin, time, then you know bloody is the only you way this can end. And let them go. You, you don't understand. It's not that easy. Communications are back up. Exogenic wants this place purged. Good. This I want this place purged come, too, so John. I can skip the Thorian's lair. Just round up all the colonists and drop a fat it's nuke on the place, you? Vermeer style. There's something here far more valuable than a few colonists. Are you gonna tell them about the Thorian, or should I? So you keep saying. But well, fuck me sideways. We actually have enough intimidate points. What? No, I want to see Jong die. I've actually never gotten this before on my own. Ooh, new experiences for everyone. You're a bean counter, Jong. I'm a specter. Tell me, how good are those odds? Okay, well, that was a pretty shitty renegade line. I told you we should have just killed him. That would have been so much funnier. Right? You willing to bet your life on that one, Jong? Exogeny will send more assayers. They'll know what happened. So I know this is a mostly renegade run and all, but we're gonna have to save all the Zeus Hope colonists. Barack, that's like 30 goddamn Paragon points. Yes, I know, but this is another one of those situations where picking the Paragon option is numerically the superior decision. We're more concerned with the numbers and not the morality of just glassing a bunch of people. Setting morality aside for better numbers? Nah, couldn't be us. Anyway, if we're doing things for role play, sure slaughter the colonist, I don't care. But if you're looking to maximize your war assets for Mass Effect 3, you do need to save the people of Zoo's hope instead. Most of the time, the game is good about substituting war assets for renegade decisions, but not here. Isn't it some paltry amount of war assets or something? It's 30 war assets, which, yeah, isn't exactly a significant amount, but it's the principle. If I slaughter the colonist, I want to get something out of it. See, that's your problem, Barack. You need an incentive to be a cold bastard in video games, but me? I do it for the love of tormenting people, ruining their lives, crushing their dreams. When people go to sleep, I want them to think about everything they lost because of me. Uh, in a video game, right, Donald? No, not in a video game at all, Sleepy Joe. You see, as the owner of several successful major corporations, I have to destroy innocent souls every day. Funny story, the first time I played the game, I wasted the grenades on the Thorian Creepers because I thought those were the colonists we were meant to be saving. Bruh. Shit. You're better than me, Joe. I did intend on saving the colonist, but I forgot to equip the Thorian gas grenade mod, so when I tossed one at the colonist, they just got vaporized. Do either of you know how to read? Hey, don't blame me. The game doesn't exactly tell you that you're meant to be throwing the grenades at the named NPCs. I didn't even realize these people had names my first time around, aside from Phi Dan, I guess. Okay, and now we embark on what is perhaps the worst stretch of gameplay in any of the Mass Effect games. We're looking at damn near 30 minutes of just shooting Thorian Creepers. Well, it's gonna be 30 minutes for us. All of you are getting the abridged version. Unfortunately, Mass Effect 1 gameplay just isn't good enough for something this drawn out to be acceptable. How the hell is Liara already dead? Holy hell, this looks terrible. I actually feel bad for you, Barack. I'm starting to wish we didn't do Pharos until after Vermeer so we could no-diff all these creepers. Hey, Barry, it's a real bad look that you almost died, and this is literally only the first wave. Okay, hold on now, Joe. You're getting a little too confident for my liking. This dude gets to cruise by while Barack and I tackle the difficult stuff and he starts getting a big head. Sounds like copium to me. Maybe you guys have a skill issue. My biggest regret of 2023 was teaching you how to use copium and skill issue. Thank God for biotics, because without them, this would be nigh impossible. If you just let me pick soldier, we'd be demolishing the enemies with overwhelming firepower. I do wonder what designing this mission was like for the folks over at Bioware. Did no one at any point ask if this was too many Thorian creepers? 
You know what this reminds me of? The end of the Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword, when Link has to fight through a horde of Bokoblins to reach Zelda. Yeah, except there, Link is a one-man army fighting a bunch of level one goons while we're still building our character up against opponents that can kill us with their vomit. Always important to pick up the extra grenades here. Shit, I wish I'd known those were there. Uh, audio check? What the hell is going on now? Is this another bug while we're recording? Okay, seems the audio works perfectly fine in the menu. I feel it bears repeating that Barack's favorite game in the trilogy is this bug-ridden disaster. Okay, but I've never had this happen while I was playing alone. Not in any of my playthroughs in the past, and not when I've spent time gathering footage for all of the older videos. Only now, when we're actually playing the game, is all this stuff happening. Wait, we're back. I wonder if it's something about crossing that threshold up ahead. I'm thinking it's the gun being shot. Damn, the shotgun is so powerful it breaks the barrier between the game and real life and destroyed the audio. Okay, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna run back to the elevator and take it up to the Mako section and see if that fixes things. Yep, that did the trick. Well, for what it's worth, the audio breaking was about the most interesting thing this section of the game has offered. Damn it, I did not want that grenade to attach to the creeper. You know what I just realized? The creepers have hands like salad fingers. Good Lord, what an insane throwback, Joe. What was I even doing back in 2007? I can't tell you what you were doing, Barack, but I can tell you that you looked a lot better back then. Crazy how eight years turned you to dust and bones. Well, unlike you, I was actually doing the job. Yeah, and while you were doing the job, I was doing your mom. Haha, <laughs> he got you there, Barry. The both of you. All right, that's like four waves of Thorian creepers down. Oh my God, that was four. And there's like a dozen of them to go. Right to fight it, but it gets in your head. Hey, uh, I'm pretty sure we still have a grenade or two left. We can save Fi Dan. Why is Barden Joe Shepard holding his gun out? Just neutralize him. So we're just gonna let this play out for no reason. Mass Effect 2 would have made this a Paragon or Renegade Once react, so we'd at least get to choose if Fi Dan lived. There's absolutely no need for him to unalive himself here. We can cure him. Uh, we could cure him. We're way past the gas grenades working now. And the most pointless video game death goes to you, Fi Dan. Congratulations. I get why that was written into the game. It's supposed to be this whole look at how strong his willpower is moment. But it kind of falls flat when Shepard could have easily saved his life. Straight up the best thing about this entire mission is that little song that plays right before you enter the Thorian's lair. Oh God, those 32 Paragon points are killing me. It'll be okay, Donald. Barton Joe Shepard is still the biggest and baldest space marine to ever exist. Did you just say, and baldest? Fuck it, I'm not fixing it. All right, we just need to find this creature and determine what, what it, that it's is. It's uglier than I remember. Disturbing. We are going to need bigger guns. Is there a particular reason we can't just evacuate all the nearby civilians and have the Normandy drop a payload down on top the Thorian? If we could do that, I'd elevate Pharos to an S-tier mission. There's so much liquid coming out of it. POV, you're looking at a female Satoru Gojo fan when he has more than one second of screen time. Gonna be a Sahara desert down there with Gojo being sealed for the time being. Ooh, a green Asari exotic. Invaders. Ugh. The Asari clones used to be fucking nightmares in the original Mass Effect one. They would pop up and immediately drop Shepard to the ground with their biotics. God help you if you had any Thorian creepers on you at the same time, because then it would be GG. What's the best way to handle the Thorian lair, Barry? Honestly, throw up a prayer and hope for the best. It's not so much hard as much as it is annoying and tedious. You're more likely to die because you let your attention slip than you are because the game challenges you. If they had cut this section down to, I don't know, about half the amount of Thorian nodes, I wouldn't hate it as much. We said something a few episodes ago about us being too hard on Pharos and that Therum was probably worse. Well, I'd like to retract that one. It would have been nice if Therum were more fleshed out like that cut content implies it could have been, but at least it's short and to the point. Drop in, blow up some Geth, meet Liara, kill a Krogan, simple as that. Well, now begins the tower defense run. I'm gonna catch up on my sleep. Oh, no you don't. You two are gonna talk while I try to deal with this BS. 
We do have a little something, something to talk about here after all. Not to get all sappy, but the channel cleared 10,000 subs at the end of last year, and that's just a massive W. Yeah, when we started this last year, we had no clue it grow so much, especially not so quickly. I always knew, after all, I'm here, the true man of the people. I see so many people talking about watching the super long compilation of the mission rankings over and over. Naturally, it features my finest moment of stopping the Reapers, no matter the cost. Anyway, we're really locked in here going into 2024 with plenty of new ideas and more Mass Effect content. Y'all know we got you. Okay, second to last Thorian node here. Oh, hell no, not the stairs. Not gonna lie, I am not looking forward to this. And you said they wanted to put acid mines here? As if the 100,000 Thorian creepers wasn't enough. Being out of Medigel while Liara has no health is gonna be... Okay, never mind, she's already dead. I'm so damn stupid. I'm pretty sure we have regen mods for our armor. Why haven't I equipped them? We're almost there. We're so close to the end, Barack. I want off this damn planet so bad. Whoa, what the f <laughs> Stop f***ing laughing, Joe. I can't even clown you, Barack. I blinked and then you died. What the hell was that? For crying out loud, it's my fault. That vomit attack was meant for Rex, but I got caught in it trying to go for a throw. We're so goddamn squishy on Sentinel and don't have any toxin resistance for our armor. For all the shit talking we've done, Pharos, it's caught two bodies in this playthrough and neither of them are mine. Let's go. And of course, you're the only one who won't have to play the mission. Smell that? Smells like coke. The two of you and all the damn viewers were so sure I'd be the one struggling the most. And I'm the only one who hasn't died at all. The game needed to throw me a glitch just to take me down. I'm just built different. Joe, I want to argue with you, but I'm actually real life mad right now and I need to focus. Donald, you take care of it. Sleepy Joe, I'm gonna let you know right now that the more sh talking you do, the more I'm gonna throw it back on you. You're gonna do what? Heavy pause on that one, Donald. I'm never letting you handle my trash talk ever again. What? Throw it back like I'm gonna give you what you're giving me. Nah, man, that is not what throwing it back means. Good God, it's over. All of you didn't see it, and trust me, you didn't miss much. I still can't believe for two seconds that it wouldn't have been easier to just call the Normandy in to bomb this ugly-ass piranha plant. Doesn't look like that Thorian creeper in the background is done yet. Well, now that we're finally here, I might as well let it slip that you can technically get the zoo's hope colonist war assets without saving the colonists themselves. Excuse me? Like most things in Mass Effect, whether the colony survives or not is dependent on a math problem. How did you you need at least 13 that? points. My name the colonist, side missions, I sparing Jong and Shiala all contribute points. We could have killed all but one of the colonists and convinced Jong to help us to save the colony. Why didn't we slaughter the colony? We spared Jong? It didn't cross my mind until just now, to be honest, and it really doesn't matter. Ain't no way I'm doing the side missions to save the colony anyway. Saving Jong is such a rare occurrence in these games, I wouldn't be surprised if most people didn't know that. Benezia underestimated Saren, as I did. I was a willing slave when Saren brought me to this world. He needed my biotics to communicate with the Thorian to learn Quick question, why exactly did Saren need Shiala to communicate with the Thorian when he has the Matriarch with him? You know what, Joe, that's a really good question. Then why were the Geth trying to destroy the Thorian? After Saren had what he needed, the Thorian became a liability. Saren knows you are searching for the Conduit. He knows you are following his steps. He attacked the Thorian so you could not gain the cipher. Saren did a piss poor job at attacking the Thorian. It's still here without a scratch on it. Why didn't Sovereign just obliterate the entire colony like it did the spaceport on Eden Prime? The more and more I think about Pharos, the more and more I start to realize it doesn't make sense. He must understand their culture, their history, their very existence. I need the cipher. There is a way. And that way involves us having a little bit of intimacy. Hold on, the Asari can transfer information mentally. Why do we spend the entire game trying to verbally convince the Asari counselor that the Reapers are real when we can show her? You think Counselor Tavos goes around embracing eternity with just anyone? Who do you think she is, Liara? Shiala? The counselor has standards. So are these words what counts as foreplay for the Asari? Asari really wants you to recite the entire Bible in Japanese before they let you hit. Donald, what in the fuck are you doing? Donald, it was a joke, and since when do you actually speak Japanese? 
Wait, is he literally reciting the Bible in Japanese? Bro is so horny, he willed himself to learn a completely different language. Donald, bro, I respect the energy, but the Asari are not going to let you hit. You don't know that. Just wait. I'll recite the entire Bible, and one day beautiful blue aliens will come from the sky, and I'll be the one they abduct. Donald, I don't think the Asari are looking for a 295-pound, nearly 80-year-old man who looks like a burlap sack to add to their gene pool. They embrace with Krogan all the time. My brother in Christ, your physique is not comparable to a Krogan's. As you see here, postcoital activity with the Asari involves glaring at each other menacingly. Okay, the jokes are nice and all, but I feel it's worth pointing out that Shiala and Shepard did not mate here. We know Barry, but that's more boring. It's better for the drama if we pretend Liara lost her chance at Shepard's first time. That would definitely explain why Liara embraces eternity every chance she can get. Girls trying to set the record straight. The experience of an entire people. It will take time for your mind to process this information. We should get you back to the ship where you can be monitored. I'm sorry if you have suffered, but there was no other way. You needed the cipher. In time, it will help you understand the vision from the beacon. Is there any merit to killing Shiala? Not really, though it does paint Shiala in a positive light. Now that you're free of the Thorian, she faces her death bravely, way. accepting it without protest. Like How could anyone execute such a blue beauty in the first place? Greatly played a role in their suffering. I would like to make amends. Commander, you look pale. Pale is not how I would describe Shepard's face, Liara. We're more like a dull shade of red. I just need some time to let this cipher do its thing. I might be able to help you. I am an expert on the Protheans. If I join my consciousness to yours... Uh-huh, you're not slick, Liara. Make some sense of it, she says. Netflix is like, are you still watching? And it's just two Asari having a mind meld party. Hey, how do you think the Asari bonding process works with more than two individuals? Oh God, stop right there, Donald. No, no, this question needs answers. Do you think Asari can have a threesome and a mind meld? You're thinking too small, Joe. Why stop at a threesome? Why not 10 or even 20 different Asari? all engaging in the bonding process simultaneously. What would happen? Nothing would happen. Stop talking about this. Oh my God, Donald, you're right. Some kind of a sorry bonding process orgy, a bonji. Holy rare W. Joe, we're on to something here. Wait, wait, wait. What if all the Asari transfer their genetic information into one individual? The same thing that happens if we pour all our genetic information into one individual. You don't get a mix, just one offspring of one person. Well, what the f Barry? No one said anything about real people? This is completely fictional, you sick freak. What the hell are you thinking about over there? No, 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 I'm not hearing that from the two of you. You did the alien smasher pass. Yeah, that's all imaginary Barack. You're the one that brought this into reality. Ugh, I hate the both of you so damn much right now. What's our next move? The council? Y'all know what time it is. Patch him through, Joker. Setting up the link now, Commander. Commander, is this some kind of game? Are you calling in a report just so you can cut us off again? You know it. Ha, that's the best one. That never gets old, does it? Not at all, Joker, not even a little bit. Well, with Pharos complete and the council ignored, that does it for us today. Next time, Joe will engage in some side missions. Until then, stay safe out there, drink plenty of water, get some sleep, and we'll see you on the next one. All right, boys, let's get it. Time to show these two how to really play the game. This guy has been going on and on about how he's been the only one to not die for days. Let him have his flowers. Donald, Joe's skill developed a bad reputation, and it's ultimately it our own car. faults for letting ourselves die. Yeah, getting angry about it won't do anything. Just take notes from me. Anyway, we're about to get the prompt to go to Vermeer, but we won't be doing that today. Instead, Joe is going to partake in a few of the more vital side missions. This might be the only time the council has ever been of any help to us. It would be pretty funny if they gave us the prompt to hang up and we just miss out on the Vermeer mission. So Barry, what challenges am I going to get to clear today? We should get the mission to go to Luna to deal with the rogue VI. You'll also do Helena Blake's missions, UNC, Missing Marines, and the mission to rescue Nasana Dantius' sister. It would be fair to let you all know how we're handling the main story going forward. First will be Novaria, then we'll tackle Bring Down the Sky, then we'll finish things up with Vermeer, I loss in the finale. So we're not doing Pinnacle Station. Why in the hell would Pinnacle Station be on the schedule? I don't know, I think some people care about it. All 12 of the people that like Pinnacle Station are welcome to play it on the original Mass Effect one, or to mod it into the Legendary Edition. 
it's not seeing one second of time in these videos. Tell us how you really feel about it, Barack. Listen, I can't imagine playing Pinnacle Station when the Armax Arena in Mass Effect 3 is a much more enjoyable experience. Now, if we're done talking about irrelevant DLC content, Joe will be heading to the Citadel for a brief moment to talk to Admiral Kahoku to get the missing Marines mission. While we're here, I figure we might as well pay our final visit to Conrad. Careful, Joe. If you tell Conrad to piss off, he'll end up dying trying to jump a squad of Turians. Unreal respect to Conrad for trying to fight some of the birds, even if he dies. Don't worry, I'd at least like to see him in Mass Effect 2. What if? You signed me on as another Spectre. April Fools isn't for Conrad, another couple months, Werner, but that was a good head one. Nearly enough times to make that seem like a good idea. Joke if you want, but there were people who didn't believe in you. Yeah, and Conrad. You outright, but the difference between you and Barden Joe Shepard is his willingness to commit war crimes to get, to, do get the job done. to get the job done. Conrad, you have no Whoa, idea. Whoa, holy shit, Joe. Well, color done. me impressed, Sleepy what? Joe. I didn't think please, you had that in you. Please, One bit of trivia that I'm aware of myself is that Conrad will accuse you of putting a, a gun in his Conrad. face no matter you what. So I might as well give him a reason Go to say home. it. I thought you were a hero. Is he crying? Conrad said he's aware of what Barden Joe Shepard did on Torfin, but is surprised we put a gun to his face. He should be lucky he's not a Batarian because, oh boy. Well, that ends the Conrad Werner arc. Oh, you know, I forgot Emily Wong had a second mission. I'll talk to her on our way out. First comes the Admiral. It's probably just another fake news media story. Congratulations on becoming the first human Spectre Commander. Fun fact about Admiral Kahoku here, well, his voice actor, Brian George, he voices Oleg Petrovsky in Mass Effect 3. And you might also recognize his voice from Dragon Age Origins, where he voices Knight Commander Gregoire. Such a minor side character, yet he has a pretty important side mission. UNC. Captain Missing Anderson Marines will begin a multi-mission assignment where we get familiar with a little black ops group known as Cerberus. You might have heard of them. Ah, uh, yes, back when Cerberus was just a tiny little black ops before they randomly become Skynet in just two years. I can shed a little light on that. You see, let's just say the elusive man has a very generous backer that goes by the name D. Trump. You're implying that you're a backer of Cerberus? I'm not implying anything. I've left a sizable sum of money in a hidden account that will gain interest until the year 2157, until the elusive man is ready to collect. Donald, don't you have a son around the age of 17 who might like to inherit some of that money instead of you leaving it for a fictional human survivalist paramilitary group? led by a man who sounds like Martin Sheen. I don't know, well, talk to Melania man, about him. I've got a proposition for you. Since you helped me get information- Well, this is the last we'll see of Emily Wong. We'll see Emily on the news, working for the Future the Content Corporation, now, which has the same abbreviation as the FCC, interestingly enough. She'll also email us after the news breaks that we're alive. She offers an interview, but we unfortunately story, don't get to meet with her. That's probably for the if best. If Emily interviewed us, Donald would want to assault her. You guys just think I'm some kind of rabid animal who goes around wanting to assault the media? Like yes. yes. Well, fuck you guys. Anyway, during the Reaper War in 2186, Emily will be reporting with the FCC and the Alliance News Network, where she'll see a Reaper descending into the airspace above Los Angeles. Ha! I, I knew California would be the first state do. to get clapped up. Emily will make it to the Almaty Airport, where she'll link up with some National Guard. Excellent. Just Unfortunately, more Reapers show up, and Emily realizes her broadcast signal has been giving her location away. Emily's final move after getting shot in her attempt to escape in a sky van is to take the wheel and slam into a Reaper, and her signal is immediately lost. Damn, my bad, Miss Wong. I wasn't familiar with your game. It might have been annoying that they killed Emily off through a series of tweets, but at least she went out like a badass, doing her job until the very end. Joe's going to go complete Emily's final mission for us, and then we'll head back to the Normandy, so we'll see you there. I'll have a better handle on all of it when my head stops hurting. Another L2 flare up. Ever thought about going back under the knife? Maybe get an upgrade? No thanks, Commander. Caden makes it feel like getting an upgrade is a risky proposition, but Jack and Shepard go through an upgrade or two during the trilogy and do just fine. It's probably the biotic version of being afraid of getting a needle in the arm. Hey, that shit hurts sometimes, and the soreness in the arm you get for about a day. Story there, Olenko. You know the records about the biotic training out on Jump Zero? They're all classified because the Alliance made mistakes. See, this is what I'm talking about with Caden. The man isn't boring. Fair. If you like hearing about world-building stuff, Caden should be the squad mate you talk to the most. 
wants He's our window into how human biotics were developed early in the Mass Effect universe. Better than Ashley just wasting our time talking about her sister or whatever. I did not really I'm gonna know romance Liara. Don't you dare, you son of a bitch! I Donald, since when are you not DTF with an Asari? We should both Your be on the same side so here. So I'm role-playing, and I believe this Shepard would pursue Ashley over Liara. We don't have the luxury of time. An Asari can live for a thousand years. Interesting we'll little lore dump here. Human life expectancy will be 150 years by the 22nd century. See, it's not impossible for me to meet the Asari. I've seen it said that the first person to live to be 150 is already alive. It could be me. Donald, your math ain't mathing. You'll be 150 in 2096, so you're going to miss the first contact war by 61 years. On top of that, the first person to live to be 150 was probably born sometime after the year 2000. You're not making it to the 2100s. What if I put my head in a jar like in Futurama? Then you won't have a body to actually do anything with the Asari. Okay, give me a few days, I'll figure something out. Donald, do you often waste time thinking about how you can meet with the Asari? Of course, why do you think I ran for president? I wanted to see if there was any top secret information on beautiful blue beauties in Area 51. Well, you had four years and didn't find what you wanted. Why are you running again? Mama Trump ain't raised no quitter. I'll dedicate my second term strictly to finding out if there are any hot aliens out there. That might legitimately be your most popular campaign promise, Donald. What can I say? I'm a man of the people. I wanted to know more about you. To understand what made you into the man you are. There is something compelling about you, Shepard. Doesn't Liara say something about rumors of Asari promiscuity and here she is playing directly into them? Like I said, Barden Joe Shepard is the man he can pull whenever he wants. But it is crazy that it takes close to no time for Liara to be interested. You can recruit Liara whenever you want. And because of that, her dialogue has to progress faster than Ashley and Kate. To act on my feelings. I thought there might already be a relationship. That's because there is. No, no, there's nothing between Chief Williams and I. Tell her Ash is special, Joe. Let or go I'm of the do fucking it. mouse, Donald. Y'all, they're literally fighting. I care about. <laughs> ha! Old man wrists over here couldn't stop me. Barry did that just lock us out? Uh, I don't think so. Wait. Too late, you annoying orange motherfucker. The two of you are fighting like Ashley and Liara are actually here. Though this is only the flirting stage, nothing has been locked in yet. I remember this Solarian geneticist I was sent to. Uh, we're getting Garrus's loyalty mission of Mass Effect 1, where we go after the Solarian, Dr. Hart. Is there any worth in doing this? I recall this mission being a bore. I mean, not really. The mission is basic, and it doesn't really do anything for Garrus's character. Though for roleplay purposes, it might be worth the trouble. It's not like it'll take long. We usually get a few of those? They got going down on the Citadel where the trade of organs is a common occurrence. CSEC can't be good for a damn thing if they let whole ass black market operations start up at the galactic seat of government. No wonder the Turian left. Sells unwanted parts through the black market, but they're not as bad as the Cyclones. I remember this one Elcor diplomat. We caught him my first year on the job. He was hacking people up and selling their organs. Jesus Christ. I often think about what it would be like to live in the Mass Effect universe. But even the more civilized areas of the Milky Way so seem like a hellscape. Imagine you go up into Korra's den one day and then you wake up in a bathtub full of ice with an incision on your body that you don't remember having. And then you say, oh, not again. Not again, there isn't going to be an again with me. You only get one freebie with your kidneys. Ain't no freebies. Why would you put yourself in a position to lose any of your organs at all to begin with? Hey, one good night in Cora's den would be worth a kidney. You can't even do anything with them. They're strippers. You're not going to get a happy ending. One Krogan testicle. Excuse me, Krogan what? You're kidding, right? Why would anyone want Krogan testicles? Some Krogan believe that testicle transplants... Is this the Mass Effect version of those ads that offer dick growth? It doesn't work. They don't work, by the way. stop them from buying. They'll pay up to 10,000 credits each. That's 40,000 for a full set. Garrus casually letting us know that Krogan have four testicles. 10,000 apiece, that's actually crazy. Hmm, I wonder how much my set would go what for. What did you do about Didn't need that visual, Donald. Don't no one want those raisins anyway. Interrogation to see if I could get them to talk. One of my detainees started bleeding profusely during the interview. We offered to patch him up and he got frantic. This is a pretty wild story from Garrus, not gonna lie. The Mass Effect universe is dark and filled with a lot of corruption. I'd have liked to see more of this kind of tone in the later games, but they leaned more heavily into the action.
Imagine growing like three or four extra livers inside you and then not getting a scent before they went bad. The real fucked up part is that the extra organs aren't even functional, so you can't drink three or four times the typical amount of alcohol to dull the pain. Surprised to see you here, sir. Thought you'd be chatting up what's her name. And the drama begins. Ashley, baby, listen to me. Is that what you said to your first you two wives after the affairs, Donald? Oof, low blow there, Joe. It's better than what Joe said to his first wife. Oh, wait. Okay, bro, all right. And Donald takes it even lower. she looks like a woman. How is Ashley going to talk about the regs against fraternization as if she didn't quote them herself earlier? So you are interested in her. And now she's twisting our words. Do the regs against fraternization even apply to Shepard as a specter? He's outside the chain of command, even if he is still an Alliance Marine. Ashley and Caden could just say they're dating a specter, not their commanding officer. Yeah, I'm still not trying to date my subordinates. That's why I choose Miranda. She might follow our lead, but she's very much in charge of her own business. I think you're just afraid of getting canceled for something, Barack. You're lucky to have a close family. Sorry, I forgot about your family situation. Family situation is a pretty interesting way of saying my family and childhood friends were either killed or enslaved by Batarians, Ashley. Don't worry, we'll get it back in blood against the Batarians. All we need is a big space rock and a mass relay. Shepard, I'm glad you're here. Good to see you smiling again. So while we talk to Tali here, I might as well keep it a buck fifty with you all. We do have the Geth Incursions mission ready, and we will most likely not be doing it. All of the loyalty missions in Mass Effect 1 are pretty uninspiring, but at least Garrus and Rex's are short and to the point. As much as I love to shoot the damn bots until they're reduced to scrap metal, Five planets of doing nothing but that single monotonous task is a bit much even for me. All of that just for a short paragraph of the Geth remembering how the Quarians lamented the loss of Rannick. It is admittedly an interesting bit of dialogue demonstrating that the Geth did at some point care enough to think about what the Morning War did to the Quarians. Nope, nuh -uh, not gonna let that robot propaganda fool me into sympathizing with the bots. Aside from that, if you give the data you acquire to Tally, she'll use it as her major discovery to complete her pilgrimage. When you encounter Tally again on Freedom's Progress in Mass Effect 2, you can point out that you gave her the Geth data to get her to believe you're really Shepard. Not that it matters. Tally inevitably believes you're Shepard regardless. Yep, there's a reason we put UNC Geth incursions in F tier after all. If I don't, it's like I failed. You're trying to make me cry, Shepard. All right, and now we have Rex's little mission where we help him get his family armor. This one is worth the trouble. It is short also. I'm not entirely sure where our morality split is at right now. So we might definitely want to complete this okay, mission to make sure Rex survives on Vermeer. Before I left, I made an oath to my father's father. You want to know what's crazy? I swore Mass Effect 2 gets a lot of flack for all the daddy issues, but Rex is the first squad mate with a loyalty mission What's that so is related to his old man. At least Rex it's had the relic. decency to kill his dad like a billion years ago, so Shepard wouldn't have to do it for him. Ah, home sweet home. Technically, this isn't home for us, as Barden Joe Shepard is a colonist. Yeah, yeah, whatever, but it's good to see the U.S. is still looking good in the 22nd century. Looks like all that global warming stuff was a bunch of nonsense. Or maybe BioWare just didn't think to put Florida underwater. It is crazy that Futurama did the lost city of Atlanta when it would have been more accurate to do the lost city of Miami. So, Joe, about this mission coming up here. Oh, hell nah, Barack. I've been listening to this motherfucker for over a week go on about how I died and he hasn't. We're taking the training wheels off, taking the pacifier out his mouth, and making him handle this on his own. Yeah, don't sweat it, Barry. This mission is just a bunch of drones or something, right? Okay, but you should at least quick sit. Nope, silence Barack. He gets absolutely no help. Let Sleepy Joe sink or swim. All right, fine. Let's see how this plays out. Uh, are you not even going to destroy the turrets? Why should I? For the experience and equipment you can get from it. Uh, who cares? I'm just ready to show I can do this. Ah, the good old Mass Effect one reused asset tunnels, the classics. Bring it on. Joe's really dedicated to using the pistol for no reason. I can already tell this is cooked. Oh, shit! How are you already at no shields and half your health? Bro's about to die on the first run. Ah! Why are you running? Get back in there, Marine! It was a strategic retreat. Now watch me. Joe, for the love of God, put the goddamn pea shooter away and pull out the shotgun. Use your powers. You're a sentinel, Joe. There you go. I told you, I'm him. No goddamn way are you surviving a second time by running away. It's a perfectly legitimate strategy, Donald. 
Don't hate because you didn't think of it first. Hey, he's got a point. He hasn't died yet, and there's only one drone left. This is ridiculous. The guy can't play at all. Got to be doing something right, considering you've died more than me. Unfucking believable. Good goddamn job, Joe. You actually managed to clear the first room. I told you I'm that guy. Oh, sh yeah, see, that's why you destroy the turrets first. What the hell kind of plot armor does this guy have to have not been killed by either of those rockets? What can I say? I guess Ashley and Caden love me enough to take those hits. Finally, some action. Joe, good lord, get into cover. You're eating damage like you think you're on the soldier class. You just don't understand, Barry. I perform best when I'm under pressure, so I let the enemy shoot me so I can enter the flow state. Gotta be the worst flow state requirement I've seen in my entire life. I don't know if you noticed, but Caden just went down. Good, that'll contribute to my locking in. Joe, if you actually clear this without dying, I will legit drop out of the presidential race. Wait, don't say that, Donald. That's too much pressure. I'll transfer my entire net worth into your bank account, too. No sh let me out. I need space. Uh, Joe? No, God damn it, no! Damn, Joe, that's too bad. You could have had it all. The presidency, the money, all of it. What an immense fumble. It's your fault, Donald. I don't need you adding extra layers to my struggle. Oh, my bad, big fella. I didn't realize you couldn't handle a few extra stakes. Well, with that, Joe finally has his first real death, and we're all tied up here at the half. Wait, what? What's wrong, Joe? Why are we back here? Doesn't this game autosave? Kinda. The Mass Effect 1 autosaves are abysmal. Believe it or not, they used to be worse in the original trilogy release. And now we've all learned a valuable lesson in quick saving. Why didn't anyone tell me to quick save? Now I have to do the first room again. I was going to tell you to do it, Joe, but Donald interrupted me. You're pampering him too much, Barack. He has to learn. He saw you quick save plenty of times during the Thorian lair. It's his own fault if he wasn't paying attention. True, but now we have to sit here and watch him do the whole thing from square one again. It's not like we have anything else going on. You finally realize the true worth of the shotgun, Sleepy Joe. Well, I noticed that the both of you have put close to no points into our sentinel skill, so our pistol is underpowered. Yeah, the shotgun is more fun. Just wait until we get those high explosive rounds. Those things are hilarious. One shot, and the NPCs just go flying. OK, OK, not bad, Joe. I'm seeing some improvement. The weight of not getting a death has been lifted. Help! Unpause, you coward. Not going to lie to you, Joe. You're completely cooked. You gotta be fucking kidding me. Turns out it's not just the pistol, huh, Joe? Well, 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 Sleepy Joe. Just like that, you have the most deaths. The natural order has finally been restored. The universe is healing. The crazy part is that this is only the first in the series of side missions he has to do. Yep, plenty of runtime for him to rack up more deaths. Screw you guys. You've been praying for my downfall for months. Don't get all pissy now, Sleepy Joe. Not after all this shit you've been talking. Thank Christ, that's over. Good work, Joe. Caden died in the most zesty pose I've ever seen. Oh, uh, they put barriers up now? Not gonna lie, it was pretty fucked up of Bioware to put class specialization behind this dull side mission. I was just about to say I would have 100% skipped this on my own. The extra lore surrounding Edie isn't really worth it, but class specialization is a really good bonus, especially since we're playing Sentinel. But I do have to agree, pretty dull side mission content overall. I suppose a fun fact or two that I can offer here is that the Luna VI's name is Hannibal, and Alec Ryder from Mass Effect Andromeda mentions the destruction of the Luna VI. Tying this side mission to Andromeda isn't exactly doing it any favors. All right, one more to go. Oh God, I'm scared. Just shoot the shield and get it over with you, coward. This is diabolical game design. The second I shoot the shield, those rockets are destroying me. Just think of hitting the pause button as entering turn-based mode in Baldur's Gate. Barack, go one video without mentioning Baldur's Gate challenge. Impossible difficulty. OK, good start. Oh, my god. OK, now don't die a third time on one damn mission, Joe. That'll just be sad. These goddamn rockets, man. We're just durable enough to eat one rocket. Is it over? I think Caden finished it off. Getting carried by Caden is crazy. I don't ever want to see another one of these godforsaken drones again for the rest of my life. No, you have got to be kidding me. Last leg, Joe. Good luck. I hate this so much. Why did I have to do the side missions? They're in the other room, Joe. Calm down. I'm surprised whipping around like that didn't shatter your wrist. Uh, OK, man. Come on. 
You'll be done soon, Joe. Just a few more drones. That's I don't good. get how this can be anyone's favorite mass effect with side missions like these. A rare occasion where Sleepy Joe and I are in sync. Barack is out of his mind favoring this game over Mass Effect 2 and especially Mass Effect 3. Sorry, I'd rather 80% of my games not being about helping all my friends with their daddy issues and having an extremely unsatisfying ending that most people in the fan base choose to head cannon around. Bro has a PhD in Yapology. Why Barack was doing another rant, I cleared those drones with zero difficulty. About damn time you did something without struggling. I did your mom pretty well without struggling just last night. Ha ha. Okay, Joe, I'll give you that one. Y'all got one more time to talk about my mother. Go on. Keep it up. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Translate, Barack. The binary here simply translates to help. Damn, I feel kind of bad now. So did Admiral Hackett lie when he said this wasn't an AI? I don't believe Hackett knew exactly what was going down here. Edie pretty much confirms in Mass Effect 2 that what goes down here was the result of intentionally creating a controllable artificial intelligence. But as we clearly see, that didn't exactly pan out. Does it ever pan out? It did with Edie. The Council also investigates this, but I'm pretty sure the Reaper War interrupted things. So what's the best bet here, Barry? Pick Bastion. Medic is virtually useless, and Bastion is top two specializations in the game. Medic, as you might expect, is all about being a support. It improves your first aid and neural shock. Donald is right. Bastion is the better option by a mile. Setting aside the fact that it makes your biotic powers recharge faster, it improves the strength of your barrier, and it lets you harm foes you capture in stasis, which is just flat out broken. Even you should be able to survive a bit longer now, Joe. I'm just glad to be off this godforsaken rock. All right, now we're going to go find Admiral Kahoku's missing Marines. What kind of a hellscape is this planet? Pretty sure it's just the average day in Phoenix, Arizona. That city should not exist. It's a monument to man's arrogance. It's Kalros. No, Joe, it is not Kalros. It is a Thresher Maw, though. Good luck. Joe, if you have any balls at all, you'll hop out the Mako and fight it on foot. Are you out of your damn mind? It's actually totally doable, in fact. It's better to do it on foot because the Mako is actually pretty weak in comparison to some of the guns you can get. It is high risk, though, because the Maw will 1,000% one-shot you and your squad. Yeah, cool. I think I'm going to keep my ass inside the heavily armored and shielded tank instead of taking on the Alaskan bullworm on foot. My name is not Sandy Cheeks. Crazy how the damn drones were a bigger threat than the Thresher Maw. This officially puts us in the same league as Rex, right? Not even close. While I have no doubt that Commander Shepard could kill a Thresher Maw, Rex did it by himself on foot with nothing more than a gun. With the missing Marines mission done, we need to go back to Kahoku to progress things, but we won't be doing that today. We'll pick it up another time. Time to go deal with, I mean, rescue Nasana's sister. I'm sure it surprises nobody. But the layout of this arena here is repeated in two other side missions, UNC, Hostile Takeover, and UNC Privateers. And let's be honest here, we know how this plays out. Nasana's sister, whom we're supposed to be rescuing, is in fact a pirate. And Nasana actually wants us to take her out to protect her diplomatic reputation. So basically, she used us to do her dirty work. And Asari can use me however they want. Well, no need to worry. Nasana will learn her lesson about using people in a couple years. Good Lord, I can taste the cold on this map just looking at it. Even the soundtrack sounds like it's below freezing. Hey, it's that one week in January where it was winter in the continental US. You know, everywhere except for South Florida, they were hanging out at the beach while the rest of us got our little taste of winter for the year. It did for real go from the coldest winter of all time before shooting right back to the middle of April temperatures on a dime. What are we doing in this frozen wasteland anyway? On our way to go take care of Helena Blake's two rival gang leaders. Right, because we draw the line at smuggling illegal tech and gambling. A little time at the casino never hurt anyone. Yeah, Donald, with your money, I don't think you have as much to worry about as the average person who goes to Las Vegas. Okay, but smuggling illegal tech is perfectly legit. Blake does say her partners sell slaves to the Batarians. Okay, and now this is personal for Bard and Joe Shepard. Uh, are these guys okay? I never noticed how finicky the enemy AI can be in Mass Effect 1. That was legit the crime boss. He just stood there and watched as you blew up a fire extinguisher and then shot him dead. I can't believe Blake needed our help with these scrubs. Why are both of these criminal organizations operating in the damn Arctic? There are mad tropical planets. I mean, if I were a cop trying to investigate these people, I would for sure let them go. Not gonna catch me in an environment that's so cold that your face hurts. I'd rather live where the cold hurts my face than deal with hurricanes. 
or have to avoid every body of water because it might have a damn gator in them. You can just say you don't want to live in Florida, Joe. All right, final crime, boss. This will go down as easy as the first lot. Not if you get sniped, it won't. Please, who do you think I am, Donald? You? I'm not dumb enough to get taken out by that obvious red laser. Uh, Joe? What? Obvious red laser, huh? There's no way the crime boss was ready to use assassination again? Hey, dumbass, there's more than one sniper. Why would there be more than one? I hope getting triple the amount of deaths that Barack and I have individually has humbled you, Joe. Man, f*** this. I don't want to play anymore. Come on, Joe, you're nearly at the end here. Ah, there's the weak-minded Joe I'm familiar with. All that energy he's had has finally fizzled out. And now we have the final confrontation with Helena. So getting into the consequences of things here, Naturally, you can decide to take Blake down here and put an end to this entire criminal organization, which is what we should probably do. Sounds boring. Give us the fun outcomes. One option is to talk Blake into disbanding her criminal organization, after which she will become a social worker on Omega. Social work on Omega? Sounds like a nightmare profession. I bet it pays well. That place is such a shithole. It's probably filled with people who need therapy. The other outcome is to encourage Blake to continue her usual operations, and by the events of Mass Effect 2, her organization will merge into Arya Talok's group on Omega. Those days are over. Well, what's it gonna be, Sleepy Joe? I'm definitely not fighting. My hands hurt, my eyes hurt, and my back hurt, and all I wanna do is get some sleep. You'd probably get a fourth death if you actually tried. You did good today, Joe. I'd say you earned a rest. I'm giving you one chance to live through this. Shut this gang down. I cannot believe you place such a high priority on stopping such petty, victimless crimes. I'm all or nothing, Blake. All crime again, must be stomped out. Yeah, pay no mind to all the crimes we're gonna commit during our journey. be arrested. I would die before going to prison. I would most certainly kill before going to prison. Gotta respect no. Blake for that. So Homegirl said she is not We're going to jail. To go. I don't ever want to see this gang again. Before we end things here, I'm gonna do Donald a favor and drop him off on Nova Rio. Gee, thanks, Joe. I totally couldn't navigate the galaxy map on my own. You're lucky, Donald. Joe got Therum, which was short, and I got that dull piece of trash, Pharos. Meanwhile, you gotta play Eden Prime, and now you're getting Novaria. Impound the Normandy? Ha, ah, good luck. If Shepard and the squad don't stop them from impounding the Normandy, Joker sure as hell will. Joe, I highly recommend grabbing Liara for this one just to add a little flavor. Yeah, pick me up Rex too. I need my big guy with me to help deal with the giant roaches. Any other requests? That's far enough. Something wrong, officer? You better hope there isn't. Ah, this Kyra is Sterling, I remember her. I your credentials. Commander Shepard, Systems Alliance Navy. The next Navy patrol is if you introduce yourself as a specter, they'll doubt You're your credentials. Home, Which is a bit odd. We're a good couple weeks removed from Shepard's ceremony, so I'd so expect that news to reach Novaria. Whoa, hold on now. One thing I think we can all agree on is not giving up our firearms. You can pry them from my cold, dead hands. This is America. Donald, you can't call That's everything in space fight. America. Why not? We're going to put military Captain bases Michael, across every down. corner of the galaxy like we, we do on their Earth. Identity. Spectres are authorized to carry weapons here, Captain. You may proceed, Spectre. I hope the rest of your visit will be less confrontational. Far it won't. True, but stairs. Matsuo doesn't have to worry about any of the confrontation. Well, we've reached the end point. It's been a wonderful day. The natural order has been restored. Joe proved himself to be utterly helpless in this game. Yeah, whatever, man. Screw this. I'm out. Yeah, it ain't so easy when the enemy AI actually wants to fight you, isn't it? Next time, Donald will get us through Novaria. And by the end of it all, we'll be one step closer to stopping Saren. Until then, stay safe out there, drink plenty of water, get some sleep, and we'll see you on the next one. All right, let's get down to business. One thing you got to give Novaria is the ambient soundtrack. We've just been listening to it vibing while we set up for the episode. This Novaria got to be the best of the first three main missions because of the wide variety of ways you can tackle getting through Port Hansha. 
You can speed run this entire thing by speaking to this Hanar Opold and agree to smuggle for him and then turn his merchandise into the administrator to get a garage pass. That's dirty behavior, don't you think? Corruption is the name of the game here on Novaria. Don't let how chill this place is fool you, it's just Omega in a suit and tie. Besides betraying the jellyfish here isn't even the most messed up thing you can do to get your garage pass. Uh, Donald, are you actually aware of what you can do here? Of course. As an expert businessman, it's natural that I would know about everything Thing you can do to get ahead on Novaria. Well, perhaps you could fill me in. I just work with Parasini. That's just watch Sleepy Joe right. and I'll show you how a real goddamn renegade player gets things no done. Oh, this is going to be a disaster. Let's I'm start with this smuggling suspected. mission. You the see, all you goody two shoes players might think to follow up on your end of the deal and grab the jellies package and bring it back to him for a measly 250 or 500 credits. But what I have planned is far better. You're going to give it to Analeas? Why the f would I help that slimy, wiggly-ass amphibian? He's probably going to give the delivery to Opold's client, a Krogan named Inamorda himself. Doing so will net you 500 or 750 credits instead. Not a big increase, but an increase all the same. You disappoint me, Barack. I thought you knew it all. What I'm going to do will be significantly more profitable and sate my need for blood. No, I know what else you can do, Donald. It's just I didn't realize you were going to go all the way like this. Just watch and learn, and maybe you'll see something new. Now that we have Opold's delivery, let's go have a word with him. Greetings, Spectre. Have you brought the package? Change of plans. I've decided to keep it myself. You cannot do that. Inamorda will be furious with this one. This one wants the other to leave now. That's the most emotion I've ever heard out of a Hanar. Now get this, we have a free ammo upgrade that we can either use ourselves or we can sell it to Opold for more than he or Inamorda would have paid us for it. Why are you going back out that way? There's one more thing to take care of, and it's the big payoff for this little side mission. We get to spill a little blood. As you might expect, Enamorda the Krogan isn't exactly pleased with being ripped off, so he's waiting for us by the Normandy. You can skip this encounter by just continuing through the Novaria main mission, since at the end of it, you just teleport back into the Normandy. Yeah, but screw that. We went around collecting some credits and finally picked up a real fucking gun. The HMW SG Spectre Master Gear Shotgun Baby. For crying out loud, I wish we'd gotten better weapons before. I had to get my ass blown out by the damn drones on Luna. You gotta learn how to walk before you can run, Sleepy Joe. Teabagging the NPCs, Donald. Have you no shame? There is literally no other reason for a crouch option to exist in this game. You automatically snap to low cover when you press up against it. Crouching can only exist so you can teabag. How can I help now we can focus on the main I'd mission. Like Novaria already proving itself to be a more engaging mission than Pharos. Yes, Just that was. smuggling side mission alone had a wider array of content. I don't know what I was smoking when I was right, defending fine, Pharos. Man. Good to see you finally switch up, Joe. It's never too late to come to your senses. You will excuse me if I don't stand up. I have no time to entertain colonial rubes. A colonial rube? You have Wait, a what's a rube? Should I be offended? No, he basically called us an unsuspected country bumpkin. All of them. What did he just call me? Did he call me a fucking commie? Easy, Donald, calm down. Who does he think he's talking to, to Bernard Sanders? I'm Donald J. Better dead than red Trump. I don't know, Donald. Right now, your face is turning from its typical orange hue to a more red complexion. You know, in the back of my head, I was considering being cool with the Solarian from one businessman to another. But to call me the C word like that? Inexcusable. He's going to get his by the end of the episode. I'm out for blood. I'll be leaving now. I trust you can show yourself out. First, we have a little bit of corporate espionage. A couple ways to let this mission play out. Don't bother going into the details, Barack. I'm planning on betraying the Asari. Whoa, betraying the trust of an Asari. What's come over you? Nothing at all. I'm just being the chaotic force I always have been. Everyone here knows who you are, Dullstone. Okay, well, if she's going to call us names, I think she has it coming. Can I help you? Mr. Vargas? Before you go and commit to your plan, Donald, I understand you, work for you should know that Saren is a That's major correct. stakeholder in Binary Helix. Were you interested and screwing in Vargas over would be hurting Saren's pocketbook as well. Yeah, I don't need to come after Saren's money. Actually, We're coming for his life instead. Isn't she right across the room? Can't she see us passing Vargas her item? I mean, Vargas didn't see us talking to her, so maybe she's being nonchalant. Craig, I appreciate your forthrightness, Shepard. Now that we know what to look for, our IT people can have a little fun with the Asari. We'll isolate their viruses and feed them false data. If you'll excuse me. 
So wait, now you don't get a reward for the mission. Not quite sleepy, Joe. Just watch. Any results? Everything went as planned. Damn, it's crazy how easily Shepard can lie. As naturally as we breathe, baby. Well, five. you might be crooked as hell, Donald, but I can't say you won't get results. You're getting the same amount of coin, Did experience, and even picking up more renegade points if you had just worked with Malene. Good day, Spectre. Now we can finally move on to talk to Lorik. Interesting facts about Lorik. First of all, he's got the same voice actor as Sovereign. Well, that's a bit unsettling. Also, if you give him the evidence from his offices, we'll get an email from him in Mass Effect 2. It appears he takes over as the administrator for Port Hanshan after Analeas is removed from power. Well, I'll never get that because it requires me to betray Gianna, which means she won't give you a smooch if you help her on Ilium. Ah, yeah. It would sure be a shame if something terrible happened to Gianna and caused her to not be in Mass Effect 2 at all. You're really going to do it, aren't you, Donald? I, I feel like you two are in on something that I'm unaware of. I wouldn't think too hard on it, Joe. It's not like either of us can stop him. Anyway, Lorik here is another character who can get you a garage pass if you're willing to give him the information from his office. I wish the other missions had this many paths you could go down. I have to imagine this is how the cut content on Theorem was meant to be. Novaria has some cut content, but most of it has to do with things after you leave Port Hanshan. So for the most part, what we're seeing is what we were intended to get. as well as a sum of credits. That sounds like a fair trade. Violence against Mr. Analeas's thugs may be necessary. Oh, I'm hoping violence against Analeas's thugs are necessary, Birdman. He's paying them under the table. Miss Matsuo is unaware of their outside employment. If he's paying them under the table, they're mercenaries. I can kill mercenaries. We could kill them even if they weren't mercenaries. We're a specter. Now you're using your head, Joe attaboy. The evidence is on my office computer. This OSD contains an encryption key to access it. Slide it into the drive and it will auto-execute. Oh, and do try to keep bloodstains off the carpets, would you? I can't make any promises, Lorik. I'm about to have that room looking like that one girl's Gojo figurine. Oh, Jesus f***ing Christ, Donald. Come on, man, not that again. What, y'all didn't like that present I sent you in the DMs? I will literally never open any video file from you ever again. Out of all the things my mental decline causes me to forget, that is the one thing I appear to be retaining. Freeze! Hanshan Security, this office is sealed. What'll you do if I don't? You're the Spectre, right? Laura Keen is under investigation. You know I'm a Spectre and, and you're still back talking me? Shake this place down. That makes you a criminal. I can kill criminals. You're bluffing. Does she not know who Barden Joe Shepard is? Major is one's life. Is calling the bluff really so wise? He ain't paying me enough to take on Spectres or Alliance troops or whatever. Smart woman, you you're never getting paid enough us, to die. We'll pretend we didn't see you. Too bad the rest of her friends decided not to leave with her. No, it's great. Time for me to go on a f***ing tear. God damn, where did that guy's shields go? We're finally in the part of the game where Shepard becomes a god. Our biotics have long duration and low cooldowns, and now we finally have a powerful gun. The only things we're missing now are high explosive ammunition and the goaded frictionless material. I don't think you're supposed to be in here, Shepard. And I don't think you're you supposed to be breathing, Kyra. Why don't we correct that? You think I'm gonna let you walk out? Uh-uh. The f*** you mean, uh-uh? She thinks her and her boys are standing up to a trained Alliance Marine, an Asari, and a Krogan. You did to cop killers on my world? You're breaking the law for bribe money. You know what we do to dirty cops on my world? Do Krogan even have cops? Shut up, Joe. Don't mess up Rex's cold retort. Uh-oh, watch out, Donald. It's a red laser, your arch nemesis. Screw you, Barack. One damn death to a sniper and you can't let it go. At least Donald and I didn't lose to a Thorian creeper. Imagine dying to some vomit. Joe, I know you're not talking when you racked up three deaths in one episode. Joe, my boy, you got clapped up by a drone and some random thug with a gun as a trained Marine. Donald, I thought we were on the same side here. Same side? With you? That's a good one. Nah, Barack can clown me if he wants. We got the same amount of deaths, but you, you gotta get on our level first. You guys all think you're so much better than me. Oh, Joe, that is the least fancy thing I've ever heard. Joe, I'll give you your props when you earn them. Just you wait. One day you'll both learn. Whoa, red flag. Allow me to reintroduce Donald, I'm going to make one appeal to you here to not go through with your plans. It's pointless, but go ahead, Barack. Take your best shot. Aside from the fact that Gianna will give us a kiss in Mass Effect 2, 
She also has an inspiring background where she grows up poor and learned how to hide herself, aiding in her ability to work undercover solving white collar crime. Barack, you just tried to appeal to me to care about a poor person who grew up into an adult who solves white collar crime. You are aware of who you're talking to, right? Barry, that wouldn't have even worked on me. Hell, I don't think it would have worked on you either. It was worth a shot. Well, for those of you who don't know, there's a few things you can do with Lorik's data. Like I said before, you can give it back to him for a garage pass. You can work with Gianna and get Anolius arrested for corruption. Or you can give the data to Anolius for a garage pass. However, there is a secret fourth option that not too many people engage with or even know about. First things first, let's go speak with Lorik so we can get the most amount of renegade points. Uh, oh, looks like Shepard forgot how to walk again. What's crazy is that despite walking forward and going sideways at the same time, the Mass Effect 1 walking animation still doesn't look as wonky as the one from Mass Effect Andromeda. Always slipping in a shot at Andromeda, huh, Donald? Are you going to tell me I'm wrong? No, you're right. Ryder runs like their body is inhabited by an alien that is trying its hardest to replicate natural human movement. You know, like the cockroach guy from Men in Black. Shepard isn't even looking in Lorik's direction. Do what I tell you to, or Analeas will find what he's looking for. Wait, hold up. Why did Donald walk past Gianna? You're about to find out, Joe. I'm in Joe. the middle of nine things, all of them annoying. What do you want now? I got something for you, Mr. Administrator. The secretary is a plant for the executive board. Why are you Internal snitching affairs, on Gianna? Because I've been too lenient with the both of you. Is this know. is a renegade run, and outside. we have way too many points in the Ms. Paragon Parson Bar for my liking. We saved the colonist on Pharos, even though we didn't need to. It's time for this Commander Shepard to be the man he's meant to be. Your mind has not been fully on your duty to me. Uh, this doesn't look I good. I don't understand, sir. I'm not losing this job. Well, Anyways, rest in peace, Gianna. If I don't report in, the board will figure it out. Put the weapon... I said I'm not losing this job! Looks like Analeus lost his job anyway. Oh, come on, Donald. Have some respect. He's getting what he deserved for calling me a commie. And don't think this white-collar snitch is safe either. Bro, Gianna did nothing to deserve that. You see, that's a true villain arc, true renegade behavior. Corporal, secure the area. Keep everyone out of here, now! Hold on, let me go steal from the Solarian. Please don't touch anything. The f*** you mean, please don't touch anything? Is she gonna stop us? Sure doesn't look like she is. Yeah, that's what I thought, lady. Mind your own business. Spectre. I've never actually talked to this bird before. Yeah, I normally walk past him. This is Lily Hirax, better known as Lee. And he's the source of some interesting cut content for the overall Mass Effect game. There's some dialogue that suggests that Lee would have examined the Mako and offered some upgrades. There's a broken prompt in the code that would have opened up a store screen. Of all the things to lose, that kind of blows. Would have been nice to upgrade the Mako so it's actually fun to drive and didn't bounce around like it's made out of cardboard and glue. Access to the garage is restricted. She sounds nervous. I'd be nervous too after the stunt you just pulled, Donald. Yes, they put the only ERCS guard with social anxiety in charge of holding the door. At long last, we're leaving Port Hanshan and getting into the shittier part of this mission because naturally all good things come to an end. What are you on right now, Donald? Peak 15 is a perfectly fine part of the game. Yeah, sure. Walking around the same tunnels we see in every side mission. And there aren't any good characters besides that Volus. Gonna agree with Donald there. We put Novaria fairly high up on the tier list, but let's be honest, it's carried by everything you can do back at Hanshan. Uh, I go through a bout of PTSD every time I pass through the Alutsk Valley. Damn, Barry, I knew people of color didn't like the cold, but I didn't know it was that bad. Bruh. Joe, you're not gonna get away with saying stuff like that by pretending to be the well-meaning but out-of-touch elderly man? Okay, like I was trying to say, I'm sure many people who played the original version of Mass Effect 1 and were unfortunate enough to forget to save are familiar with being knocked back like two hours in the progression of the game. That was only a problem if you were bad enough to be killed by anything. Couldn't be me. Yeah, okay, sure. Anyway, there was no autosave anywhere along this route to peak 15 or before you fight the matriarch. So if you lost to her, you'd be kicked all the way back to the beginning of the Mako section. I'd probably just stop playing the game if that happened to me. I'm glad I didn't get into Mass Effect until the Legendary Edition came out. It was especially annoying because back then the Asari Commandos could just knock you to the ground and then you'd get lit up by the gas. Modern autosaves has made today's gamers soft. 
Back in my day, you only had one save file, and if you got a game over, that was it. You had to start over from the very beginning. Donald, don't you ever try to call me old ever again after you just said all of that. Anyway, some interesting information about this Mako section. It was originally going to play out differently. The valley would have had more enemies and would have had gates that Shepard needed to open similar to the approach to the Salarian outpost on Vermeer. That would have made the lack of an autosave even worse. All right, we've made it to peak 15, which if you didn't know is a play on Area 51. Unfortunately, the alien species they're hiding here aren't attractive ones, just giant roaches. There was a bug right around this area back in the OG Mass Effect. If you had a newer AMD CPU, the models in the game, including Shepard and the squad, would be rendered as blocks of black pixels the moment you entered the Peak 15 garage. I remember hearing about that, proof that Intel clears. The same bug also exists when you get to ILOS. The fix for it was to go into the in-game console and use the view mode unlit command. This would remove the black blobs, but it would make the lighting look off. Donald, you're running in like you want to die. Not even a little bit. Oh, sh okay, Donald, I see you sidestepping the rockets. Doing all those renegade options got me locked in. Whoa, where did this motherfucker come from? Liara, help! Swing and a miss, Donald. That carnage blast did not go where my reticle was aiming. If this were Overwatch, it would have landed with the way they're expanding every hitbox. Hey, maybe Joe will actually be able to play a game and be good at it. I'm not even gonna bother defending myself anymore. I'm just gonna tell you to go fuck yourself. What was that? Probably debris. Don't have a panic attack. I'll protect you. Are you gonna protect us, Rex? Because the last time I had you with Liara and I, you kept your ass on the other side of the door on Pharos. Don't blame Rex because you closed the door behind you. Look out for the small green spiders, Donald. Okay, Donald keeps calling them roaches, and now you're calling them spiders. What are they? They're roaches. Look at them. They're spiders. The name Rachni forms parts of the name Arachnids. If they're spiders, why do they only have four legs? What were those? Damn if I know. But someone on this mountain does. Hold on, shouldn't Rex know what the Rachni are? Not necessarily. Rex might be old, but he's not that old. Rex did not serve in the Rachni invasion. Hell, he wasn't even alive, or at least not old enough to serve in the Krogan Rebellion. He's never seen a Rachni a day in his life. Surely some Krogan would have pictures of Rachni in history books or in artwork or something. History books? Artwork? From the Krogan, the people who bombed themselves back into the Stone Age? Yeah, I realized how dumb that sounded after I said it. Oh God, not this puzzle. F why don't we have Medigel? What's wrong, Donald? I think you'd be able to handle this. I don't want to waste time doing it. Here, move over, Donald. I'll do it. Couldn't we just break some stuff down into Medigel? Sure, if you want to take the easy way out, it's not even that difficult. If it's not that difficult, why do you have the wiki page open, Barack? Shh. Shut up, Donald. You're ruining the illusion. It looks like you're trying to restore this facility. Would you like help? How do I shut this thing up? Once again, Bioware makes the prompt in the dialogue wheel something entertaining and then has the actual voice line be way less funny. Apparently Mira's dialogue at the beginning and Renegade Shepard's response to it is a reference to Clippy, the Microsoft Office help pop up. Microsoft need to keep that f***ing paperclip in the past where it belong. It's bad enough we can't escape AI with Cortana. Not gonna lie, this is looking a little overpowered now. Staggering the Rachni with one shot is broken. Donald isn't even using any biotics. I mean, I don't need to when Liara just drops Singularity and everything starts floating like it's been filled with helium. And look at how many credits we racked up just for killing some bugs. This is definitely where Mass Effect stops being the hardest User game in the alert. trilogy. Manifactor credits are harder to come by, especially in Mass Effect 2. Like this is insane, we just picked up one of the best light armors in the game for free. The Predator armors offer the best shields and nearly the best tech and biotic resistances. Its only major competition for best armor is the Colossus armors. In case you don't know, the stuff you find is tied to your level. The higher up you are, the better the loot you find will be. By the way, Rex just sat out another goddamn firefight on the other side of that door. Maybe he just doesn't like you. 
Uh, where's my squad at? I think I see their shadows sitting behind the door there. Okay, I'm starting to think Rex is playing with me, and now Liara is in on the joke. You're lucky you noticed before you ran in to go fix the fuel line. This upcoming area can be a challenge. A challenge for you, maybe. I could do this in my sleep. And with this goaded gear and armor I've got, I'll slide right through it. Don't get too confident there, Donald. We're still a squishy sentinel. I don't need advice from you, little bro. And that's all she wrote for these weak-ass guests. Oh, I think you missed some, Donald. It's just one guy. No! <laughs> get fucked, Donald. Literally got one guy. What was that you said earlier, Donald? Something about me needing to get on your level? You still have more deaths than me? Yeah, but you're only one screw up away from it being tied up. I won't screw up again. All I'm gonna say is Big B Obama's stocks are looking good right now. Y'all better buy as fast as you can. You're lucky you get to pick up where you left off. F this geth. All geth must die specifically because of what this one did to me. Uh, we should probably make sure Donald doesn't play Rannick in Mass Effect 3. The board sent an Asari to clean up the mess. She went to the hot Finally making it to Rift Station. From her sense. We can talk about Captain Ventralis here. Is she still over there? As there's a few I'm things about him that could have been different. Our bald brother here was originally going to be a female Turian. Well, sh it's a shame they cut that out since we are in dire need of more female Turians in Mass Effect. We don't even see any until all the way in Mass Effect 3. And even then, it's only Nyrene from the Omega DLC. Apparently his first name is also Julith. Time to squash some more bugs. Hell, man the perimeter. Wait, Donald, don't use singularity. Why not? Aren't there supposed to be two rachni here? There would be, but there's a bug here where if you use singularity too early one or even both of the rachni will float into a non-accessible area and disappear. It can't be completely gone when both Rex and Liara are trying to target it. It's there. I mean, it's there on the radar, but you can't do anything to it. So what, is Donald soft locked now? Of course not. You don't actually have to help Ventralis out with the rachni you can just leave, but he won't be particularly happy with you if you come back. Well, f*** it. Not my problem. The game broke. So unlike the other main story missions, Novaria keeps offering multiple ways to go about things. You can either break into the hot labs by passing through the restricted area, or you can sneak in by doing the Novaria quarantine mission. Is the breaking in part the one where an alarm goes off and suddenly all the NPCs just turn hostile? I did that once on accident and got f***ed up. Yep, that's the one. I would do that today. But I want to fill the renegade bar up, so we'll go help the doctor out. If you head through the restricted area, you can potentially go back and get into a gunfight with Ventralis. After you win, you learn that he's not such a great guy after all. Han Olar, the Volus, will tell you he had all the civilians killed to cover up Binary Helix's mistake with the Rachni. So, hold up. When you go through the restricted area, you lose access to NPCs and don't get to engage in this other mission where you learn more about the situation. What's the payoff? Better loot, experience, credits, the thrill of battle. What else do you need? I'd like to think that the company finds our lives more valuable than their secrets. Companies valuing the lives of its employees over its secrets? Bro is completely Delulu. I killed her. It's our favorite traumatized exercise ball, Han Olar. Is his name a reference to Han Solo? If it's not, it is now. That's my head cannon. going to lunch. When the alarms went off, I ran into the tram, and I closed the doors. She banged on the window once, then they sliced her to pieces. Her head came apart like a melon. Better you than her, bro. I believe in the age-old adage, I don't need to outrun the giant roach from space, I just need to outrun the my slowest friend. It's her own damn fault anyway. Course. Assuming the doctor was another human, how the hell did she let the three-foot-tall alien with stubby legs beat her to the door? Don't you guys feel any kind of desire to throw yourself in front of a woman to protect them? Ha! No, who you think I am, Spider-Man? Yeah, my wife and my daughters. I am not a hero and don't claim to be. The Krogan wiped them out a thousand years ago. They found it in a derelict ship. And instead of frying it up into an omelet, they decided to hatch it and cause this entire disaster. If you care, Han Olar will reach back out to us in Mass Effect 2. He's seeking therapy, trying to get over the woman he killed. Olar says it would have been right for the Rachni to kill all the people here at Peak 15. And he asks why Shepard didn't show up before he killed the doctor instead of after. Olar then goes on about how he's not sure if he's really alive and thinks he is just in some hallucination before finally reaching the afterlife. 
Though if he is really alive, he offers his thanks. Damn, that's kind of sad. Of yep, crew. no jokes. We're just going to play me, that one straight. I'm a specter sent by the Citadel. There aren't any human specters. Okay, apparently these people have been off the grid for a while. God damn it, the one time we could use our specter authority and force our way past this guy, and we don't do it. What's he going to do, stop us? No one could even report our murdering this guy. Han Olar is traumatized, and we all know the Council doesn't trust the testimony of traumatized workers. And those other two scientists would prefer to keep this on the down low. Yeah, thanks for your help back there. It's not my fault the damn bugs didn't rise up out the ground. Attack, it's got to be embarrassing to have like 10 guys and to not Excellent. be able to handle Confidence. this, but Shepard clears the rachni with a small well, squad of three. So, Ventralis trying to get us to go straight to the hot labs is all a part of his ploy with the matriarch. He's hoping that we'll go down there and die, but when you don't, he attacks us since he's on the matriarch's payroll. How the hell did you fail, Donald? Shut the f up. Do I look like a doctor to you? You look like you're trying to make COVID-24. Please don't. The 2020 effect has finally ended, and I'd like to have one damn year of this decade be normal. It's an election year, Barry. It's already cooked for everyone. We'll see about that, bitch. Whoa, Rex. Oh, what? You're going to cancel Rex for calling it like he sees it? I'm about to blow her brains out all over the floor anyway. Yeah, but he didn't have to be so rude about it. Is there a nice way to go about filling someone with bullets like they're 50 cent? Okay, sidestepping two warp blasts is pretty crazy. Yeah, it's really easy to do when you're spamming the pause combat button, Donald. The Asari is dead, but don't worry, I didn't call her a bitch while I did it, so it's all good. Well, look, the guard died anyway. Good, I got something for him. Come on, Donald, you didn't even earn that. Don't need to, I take what I can get. We're nearing the end here. All we have to do is go back to the doctor, and we'll Thank be on our way to the prepare. matriarch fight. You do not know the privilege of being a mother. Oh, baby, is it good to see you? This might be one of the most underwhelming boss fights in the series. You're not joking, Sleepy Joe, as much as I like to lay eyes upon the beautiful. And might I say, voluptuous matriarch, this fight is pure cheeks. I'd say it's worse than the human Proto Reaper from Mass Effect 2. The matriarch, lore wise, is hyped up to be the most powerful foe Shepard has faced up to this point in their career. But all she does is summon a bunch of Asari commandos and some Geth, while her power level gets lower and lower. That you're insane? Evil? Should I explain how to kill you? You could have at least told us she has a massive rack, Liara. I might get a little distracted. You know, Liara becomes more well endowed when we see her again in Mass Effect 2 and 3, considering their lifespans. Do Asari titties just keep growing? My God, just when I thought the race of blue beauties couldn't get better. If the two of you are done talking about Asari anatomy, there's a boss fight ahead. Yeah, yeah, this is the least serious boss fight I've ever played. Look, all these Asari are gonna pull up and get completely demolished. Didn't this boss fight used to be a lot harder? There are some changes. Back in OG Mass Effect, the Matriarch used to throw out biotic attacks and shoot at you. But now she just sits in her bubble and waits things out as you slaughter all her units. It was pretty annoying because a random biotic stasis or warp would just fly out of nowhere and stop you. One wave down. The Asari Commandos used to also throw out their disabling attacks more often back in the OG game, like way more. I don't think I've been dropped by a biotic attack in this boss fight since the Legendary Edition came out. I'll admit that's actually a good change. Getting randomly ragdolled the very instant the boss fight starts was annoying as shit. I never played the original trilogy. Would you two ever go back to it? You couldn't pay me to play OG Mass Effect 1. There's close to no reason to go back to the OG Mass Effect other than for the sake of nostalgia, or if there's some specific mod that hasn't made it over to the Legendary Edition, though I'm pretty sure the hardworking modding folks have basically got that settled. Love the people over at Nexus Mods, love every single one of them. Too bad mods can't save Starfield from being no greater than a 6 out of 10 game. Just when I thought we were done hearing about Starfield. Why the f*** is she tired? The matriarch hasn't even done anything. You don't get it, Sleepy Joe. She's carrying two massive weights on her chest 24 sevenths. Standing up has to be killer on her back. This is not over. Saren is unstoppable. My mind is filled with his light. Your Everything mind is about is to be clear. filled with this shotgun. I expected better from Asari commandos. Honestly, same. The Asari commandos seem kind of trash. Asari military doctrine is all about ambush, infiltration, and assassination. You, 
They can't stand up to a head-on firefight like Krogan's, Turians, and even humans. How the fuck is the race filled with people who can use space magic so piss poor in warfare? The Asari for real let the Birdmen become the galaxy's police force. Sounds like working smart rather than hard to me, Donald. The Asari are the most technologically advanced race, and they got Turians and later humans to take care of all the grunt work. That's an astute observation from you, Joe. I'm impressed. Thank you. I've been doing a little reading. Nothing but a tool for Saren. He sent me here to find the location of the Mew Relay. Its position was lost thousands of years ago. How does something that big go missing? A giant space rock is one way to make a mass relay go missing. Supernova. The shockwave propelled the relay out of its system, but did not damage it. You have to stop me. I, I can't. His teeth are up my ear. But a sorry it don't have ears. It's a turn of phrase, you Joe. You should. Oh, you should. Holy Mother, shit. I hope y'all got headphones I, in. Don't leave. Fight him. You've always made me proud, Liara. Liara says her and her mother hadn't spoken in a long time, but it sounds like they were pretty close. A long time without speaking probably doesn't Die. mean as much when you live to be 1,000 years old. Oh, f So much for the matriarch not living up to her hype, eh, Donald? Well, Donald would be screwed if she had any concept of target priority. My turn. Oh, f She's cooking you, Donald. Light work. Shot her so bad she started glitching in the air. I cannot Thank you, Bioware, for this blessed camera angle. Is she standing up just so she can Three fall back down and die? Again. I still hear it like metal on metal, squealing and reverberating. Well, rest in peace, Benezia. It's a shame we can't say your name properly. Mother. Wait, Barack, you just did it. Holy shit, you actually said Benezia. Wait, Joe did it too. I want to try. Benezia! Well, I'll be damned. Well, we won't ever be saying her name ever again now, so whatever. Yeah, that's right, Bioware. Linger on the boob window for just a bit longer. I'm almost there. Whoa, bro, what? She's literally a corpse, Donald. Still warm, you know, it's the five minute rule. If there was any chance you'd be getting past the pearly gates, Donald, that comment just guaranteed your ticket to hell. Well, 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 Donald, you're getting to make the first big decision of the playthrough. He's been uncharacteristically quiet about whether he's going to kill the Rachni or not. That's because he's already made up his mind. Listen, the damn roaches were cooked the moment it was decided I'd be playing Novaria. Is there really no way we can talk you out of this? I mean, the Rachni weren't to blame for the invasion. And the queen becomes our ally if we save her in Mass Effect 3. Hell no, those bugs are relics of the past. Well, I think we all know where this is going. The Rachni queen does genuinely go full isolation and doesn't intend to ever be seen again until the Reapers drag her and her children into the Reaper War in Mass Effect 3. In Mass Effect 2, we'll have a run-in with an Asari who acts as a messenger. She expresses the Queen's gratitude for allowing the Rachni to flourish again and promises her aid in the upcoming war against the Reapers. Donald, I know you know all of this. How can you still kill the Queen? Joe, he willingly killed Gianna Parasini earlier in the episode. You know what he's about. This is actually a completely justifiable renegade decision from the role play POV. The only reason we can trust the bugs is because we know what happens in three. But in the context of Mass Effect 1, Shepard has no business keeping the Queen alive. That is admittedly fair. At this point, all we know is the Rachni waged war on the galaxy. The Queen says herself she has no clue what occurred in the war. We have no reason to trust that at this point, Joe. Also, all this reasoning is nice and all. And I'll admit you have a point, Joe, but I've made it clear I don't care. I'm turning on the bug spray. Jesus Christ, this episode was a goddamn bloodbath. Let's see, Donald killed Inamorta, Gianna, Analeas, and now the Rachni. Four NPCs that didn't need to die and did anyway. I didn't kill Gianna and the Salarian. They killed each other. Yeah, because of something you did. It doesn't even matter. It's not like we're losing out on war assets. Well, right that's now. definitely true. This episode is going to leave a bad taste in my mouth. Well, don't worry. We've still got one more stop and plenty more bugs to stomp out to the hot labs. Our last bit of cut content here is how the triggering of the neutron purge in the hot labs would have needed an arming key in addition to the code we get from Tartakovsky. The Mira VI will point us towards a Salarian named Ruan Aichion, a scientist who went insane and locked himself in a room. Actually, 
Shepard would need to either blow up the door or convince him to come out. If you blow up the door, it'll kill Ryan, and most of the squad mates won't be happy about it. If you talk him out, he'll hang out with us for a short while and then take himself out. Darn, I could have gotten a fifth person killed instead of just four. Bro will never be satisfied. Arming controls are nearby. All you do is insert the key. Then I will give Nera destruction. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Good God, Donald, the hell is wrong with you? You don't see gore like this anywhere else in the trilogy, and it really sells the horror of the Rachni. Damn. And Hanolar saw that happen to someone's head. What the f is this spit made out of? See, getting spat up on is pretty lethal. Almost had a third death there, Donald. You're slipping. Well, it's a good thing almost don't count for a thing. If Grunt were here, he'd probably say he was hungry and then ask if anyone was going to eat that. Considering Rex jokes about eating Solarian livers, I wouldn't be surprised. Not going to lie to you, Joe. I don't think those are jokes. Given the dire situation on Tachanka, I think it's safe to say Krogan eat whatever they can get their hands on, even other sentient alien species. I'd imagine a couple of baked Turian legs goes great with some fried Hanar legs as a side. You can't do that without proper code authorization. Uh, Sic Sempar Tyrannus translates to thus always to tyrants, a phrase commonly attributed to Brutus at the murder of Julius Caesar. And it was famously uttered by John Wilkes Booth at Abe Lincoln's assassination. Mass Effect really is our Roman Empire, isn't it? Who knew Shepard was such a history buff? Hey, Donald, you're going to have to run through a bunch of Rachni. And the last one we saw almost one shot you with its spit. Yeah, so what? I'm saying if there were a time for you to f up and be tied with Joe, it would be now. I'm just warning you to be careful. I'll be fine. Just watch me cut straight through like the Vanguard player I am. You're f No, I'm not. I'll make it. Get out the damn way. F you. Fuck these goddamn roaches. I'm glad I exterminated you. Ha <laughs> ha. Looks like you're finally on my level, Donald. This is such horse shit. Imagine losing when all you had to do was hold W and sprint, Donald. I'm not playing around this time. My mistake was leaving it up to the neutron purge to kill the bugs when I should have just done it myself. Not gonna lie, dying there was your just desserts for all the BS you've pulled in this episode, Donald. I hope Gianna and the Rachni Queen are looking down at you with smiles on their faces. Might as well get some free experience for my troubles. Holy hell, it's good to be off the, the frozen relay. wasteland. The Mew Relay could link to dozens of systems. Unless we know exactly where Saren's going, we'd just be wasting our time. The commander is right. We cannot rush off blind. We still need to learn more about Saren. Who put you in charge? Did the commander... Goddamn Ashley is hostile. Looking? Liara wasn't even giving orders. She literally said, the She's commander is right. She was agreeing. Sorry, you ever notice how Garrus, Rex, and Tally almost never speak up during Rude, these post-mission meetings? Well, given how Ashley just reacted at Liara agreeing with Shepard, I'm not surprised. Time for our favorite segment, hanging up on the council. Commander, do not cut me off like last time. I failed to find it amusing. But I do find it amusing. And we're out. Miss Williams. Uh-oh, drama ahead. What the hell is this? The consequences of you not sticking true to your word, you son of a bitch. If you pass through the flirting dialogue with Liara and one of either Caden or Ashley, you'll eventually be confronted and have to make a choice. Good. And now I can finally set the record straight. The deal was that I could romance Ashley if I let you, Joe, pick the Sentinel class. Liara is a better option, Donald. You can romance her here and then keep it going through Mass Effect 2 and Mass Effect 3. I may not know Ashley will leave us on horizon. But I understand the concept of jealousy. Jealous of you? You're not even our species. Okay, Ashley, Perhaps goddamn. That's why you feel threatened. I am a rival unlike any you have faced before. Hostility is a common All right, I'm not going to hold you. Liara came back with Doctor, some heat there, but I'm still picking ass Ashley. Barry, come on, back me up for old time's sake. I already told I you I wasn't like involving you. myself in this. I'm just I here for the show. Seven, which is why you must choose Ashley or me. We're not married, Shepard. You want to get involved with some alien? Go ahead. It's none of my business. Ashley is so real for that, to be honest. Donald, think about this. You can have both instead. Wait, can I pick both, Barack? You can pick that lowest option there if you want. But it defaults to Liara. Ashley will take the prospect of a threesome as a rejection. I guess she doesn't like sharing. Well, Ashley, it is. No! Yeah? 
kind of hard to feel special while you're always chatting with your little the friends. kind of middle school shit is this all we did was talk to the both of you we spoke to Garrus and Rex too want to drag them up into this as well damn you sounded kind of heated there Barack I hate the way Mass Effect 1 does romances romances are the literal only thing I will ever give Andromeda at least the squad mates don't decide to become soulmates with you just because you spoke to them two or three times no, I don't feel the same way. I was just trying to let her down easy. Goddamn dialogue wheel. Me? Well, Joe, this is the end. We're romancing Ashley. No more debate, no more whining about Liara. You understand? Oh, I understand, Donald. Trust me, I do I understand. For you to get Has this dumbass debate finally been settled? Yes, at long last, we've finally locked it in. Wait, you know what I just realized? If you do this with female Shepard and Caden, does this mean Caden sure turns down the prospect of a threesome happy. with Shepard and Liara? That might be the biggest fumble in the history of man. I don't know, Shepherd's sleeping with two attractive women at once is some teenage boy type dream. All he probably wants is love, longevity, and faithfulness. That's a surprise. In the relationship. The ago, yeah, well, he can worry man. about love after laying up with a beautiful Yours. blue beauty and no female Shepard. Bro's like gonna wake up one day thinking want. about how he missed that Let's opportunity. Let's not talk about this here. It's not really the right setting for intimate conversation. You know where to find me. Well, we've reached the end of another fire episode. With Noveria done, I'll take the wheels and get us through the remainder of our side missions in the Bring Down the Sky DLC. The wrongs of episodes past have been corrected. We will romance Ashley. Y'all stay safe out there, drink plenty of water, get some sleep, and we'll see you on the next one. This is not over. We're picking back up on the Citadel to get the ball rolling with some side missions. We're getting kind of close to the end here, aren't we? Yep. After I wrap up the Bring Down the Sky DLC, Commander, all we have left is Vermeer, I Loss, and the final battle. I found them. What was left of them. All things considered, a thresher the Thresher Maw didn't really thresher. tear Kahoku's men up that badly. That's not sure they died, but at least their bodies were retrievable. It's, it's actually kind of weird we found their bodies. All Somebody Thresher Maws do is eat or search for something to eat their Placed entire lives. So thresher Maws sound like Donald. Nest. Fat shaming, Joe? Damn it. In 2024, I had to cancel you for that. So you admit you're fat? Joe, I know you're still salty about Liara, but these insults just make you sound childish. Uh-huh. Go ahead and keep reminding me about Liara, Donald. You know, Joe, I watched the videos back and now I saw I that. Saw what? Part. What did Joe do? Don't worry Families about it, Donald. Marines Just enjoy whatever time you have I left thought. with Ashley. I hope you find what you're after, Admiral. Goodbye, I Admiral Kahoku. He was truly I'll one of many side characters. Let's go turn in Nasana Dantius's quest. Yes, Shepard? Did you find my sister? Found her, killed her, and Dahlia's guess what? Dead. You're next. I killed her myself. If you don't want to end up like her, start talking. No need to raise your voice, Commander. That Surely you was raising our voice. Nasana really to. said, "Please don't use if your big boy voice on me." My sister was a criminal. I'd be considered a security risk. I get where she's coming from. Motherfuckers found a picture of my son's cock on his laptop, and now they can't stop that talking about it. Okay then. I don't know how you hit it, but I know there's some dirt there, Joe. If you want more dick pics, you can just ask. I'm pretty sure Hunter would oblige. How about the two of you discuss that in private? I am sorry I wasn't honest with you. We have trust issues in my family. Obviously. Those trust issues will be Nasana's undoing a in a couple years time. As a token of my appreciation. I'm sure you'll find Anyone else think it's kind of weird how people can just I'm transmit credits into our high. account at the press of a button? Anywhere. No security sure. at all? But I'm the only one who can Did we sign up with direct deposit with everyone? Given that we can currently just I'm slap Omnigel on anything and open it, client list. I'm not surprised by how lax security is in Mass Effect 1. Available. That security upgrade Goodbye, is going to be annoying as fuck when we get to 2. Business with you. All right, Nasana, we'll see you later. You're on Ovaria report. While we're here, we might as well pay a visit to Udina and Anderson. I don't know what's funnier. You finding a species they thought they'd wiped out 2,000 years ago, or their reaction when they found out you finished them off. Damn, we shouldn't have hung I up last no time. Could have gotten a good laugh. You could have threatened to kill the Turian counselor when he criticizes you for wiping out the rack galaxy, nine. But you could have been more discreet. How exactly do you discreetly kill a giant like bug genocide. in space? By not and doing it. Calm them down. The council is so full of shit. They don't like that we killed the Rachni, likening it to a genocide, one they started. But if you spare the Rachni, they'll be all pissy about the potential risks to future generations. How about we just kill the council so we can stop hearing them whine about everything we do? Honestly, that's seeming more and more tempting. Allow me to be Anything you need, Commander. Now we'll make our rounds to the What's squad. The we'll likely Young make Sarah brief stops to take care of Dr. Salion and to get Rex's Commander. family armor, too. Anyway, it should set him back a bit. I'm sure Dr. Tassoni's hurting, though. Poor kid. 
damn, we killed Liara's mother and broke her heart all within the same day. That's a rough 24 hours. That was your fault, Donald. My fault? Oh, no, no, no. You were the one to pursue her when we had a deal about Ashley. All that meal has been eaten already. There's no changing it. Just trying to get a sense of where the food's at. I don't know about that. Remember Vernus? There are a lot like him. You know, taking the renegade options with Caden does result in some interesting behavior if you're a female shepherd. You can make him more bigoted towards aliens, completely undoing his growth in that department. What's the lesson they're supposed to be? That an attractive woman can make a man worse if she wants to? Caden really dated renegade femme shepherd for character development. And the crazy part is that's about as much growth Caden will ever get in all three games and it doesn't even stick. She reached for a glass of water instead of pulling it biotically. She just wanted a drink without getting a nosebleed, you know? Like an idiot, I stood up. Didn't know what I was gonna do, just something. And Vernus lost it, beat the crap out of me. Caden undersells himself in this fight. If the Mass Effect Foundation comics are to be believed, he dueled with Vernus evenly in a biotic duel while exhausted from biotic conditioning that went on for hours. Now this is the Caden I want to see, unrestricted fury. Caden got to be super underrated in terms of power. Sat down by a kid. Vernus must have hated that. He didn't have time to hate it. I killed him. Snapped his neck. They probably could have saved Getting him. packed up by a 17-year-old as a war veteran has to sting immaculate W for humanity. I guess Caden isn't so bad after all. Huffing and puffing on that Vernus pack. Unfortunately, Caden ends up losing the girl after he kills Vernus. Apparently, involuntary manslaughter isn't exactly attractive. Oh dear, I hope Liara isn't too beaten up about how things turned out. Why the hell am I the one who has to deal with the fallout from this? I feel like we're the last people who should be speaking to Liara right now. I feel a bit embarrassed about what happened earlier. You reached out to me as a No, Liara, I reached out to you in genuine affection. Give it up, Joe. It's over. The deal has been sealed. But I would still like to be friends. Wow. Can we just I'm surprised Liara is taking this very maturely despite being little more than a child among the Asari. Is there something else you wanted to ask I would have expected some kind of biotic temper tantrum. Fair enough. Are you worried that the Council might be protecting Saren? For once, I'll come to the Council's defense. I'm pretty sure they'd rather just deal with Saren quietly one way or the other. There are a lot of moments the Council was being unreasonable, but needing actual proof before charging Saren with treason wasn't one of those moments. In my opinion, Saren's too dangerous to be kept alive. Finally, this Kentucky Fried Turian is speaking some damn sense. Saren needs to be put down like old Yeller. I'd be mad as hell when the good guy just lets the crazy-ass psycho villain survive just so we can see them pull the same I'm stunt in the next movie. Way. How many times does Team Rocket need to try to steal Pikachu before Ash decides died, enough is enough? Good. The Council won't like it, but they can't stop you either. Hey, Skipper. Hello, it's Ashley, my dear. I've always liked that Ashley starts calling us Skipper. She's probably referencing Skipper Jonas Grumby, captain of the SS Minnow Hell from yes. Gilligan's Island. God damn, Joe, Gilligan's Island is 60 years old day. now. You really no. think Ashley knows what that is? I don't know. She might. The 22nd century isn't that far from now. And Since Ashley might be young, but she seems to have an old soul. Is she has an old soul, what seems you said like the last time? Donald, I'm going to put the brakes on that joke right now. In our family, it's not really a celebration, more like an obligation. Anderson and Ashley's grandfather, General Williams, get a lot of attention for their acts during First Contact, but there's another soldier who put up numbers as well. Admiral Taddeus Ahern, who commands Pinnacle Station, was credited with holding off dozens of Turian soldiers with only a few men at his side and a couple of defensive turrets for five minutes before evac arrived. Had to be the longest five minutes of his life. That's a Commander Shepard performance. Too bad bro is locked in an irrelevant DLC. On top of that, when you look into the occupation of Shanxi, it's no wonder Ashley doesn't like aliens, especially the Turians. When humanity was attempting to open a dormant relay, the Turians attacked first crushing the human fleet, allowing only one vessel to survive. I'm starting to think the terra firma guy has a point. The commander of Shanxi answered back, repelling the Turian forces which I guess the Turians didn't like because they sent more ships and started dropping orbital debris down on the planet, taking out entire city blocks. Yeah, but then we ran it back on those dumbass birds and freed Shanxi. I'm pretty sure the Turians were about to mobilize a full-scale war down on us before the council stepped in. Nope, not hearing that propaganda. Humanity one, birds zero. You're a difficult woman, hard to read, hard to keep in line. So I guess the rules against fraternization don't matter anymore.
I wouldn't be surprised if Ashley brought that up to encourage us to take her up in a forbidden relationship. She does come from a religious background, so that checks out. We better get going then. Seems I've got something to look forward to after we're done. More than you know. Now that we're done talking to our friends, we'll start by going to pick up Rex's family armor. Message for you, Commander. Just came in over a secure channel. Shepard, this is Admiral Kahoku. Time for our last no, talk no, with no, Kahoku. No, you know what that name just reminded me of, the Dragon you. Kid from Spirited Away? That's message. Kohaku, Joe. Completely different name. Surpers, an Alliance Black Ops organization. There seems to be a bit of confusion around Cerberus here, as they aren't an Alliance Black Ops. The organization was formed by human mercenaries led by Jack Harper, who we know as the Elusive Man. There's no mention of Cerberus being a part of the Alliance, aside from what Kahoku said here. It's possible the Alliance just hid that information. I suppose so. But Jack Harper and his people did work with the Alliance during the Shanxi occupation, so that might be where those black ops ties are coming from. Ain't it kind of crazy that Shepard has audio proof of Cerberus killing an Alliance admiral and the Systems Alliance doesn't do anything about it? No one is trying to go to war against Cerberus, even if Hackett and Anderson hate them. The elusive man is still out there doing good work for the betterment of mankind. You're really neck deep in the Kool-Aid, huh, Donald? What Cerberus ends up doing in Mass Effect 3 doesn't change what they stood for in the first place. Cerberus is believed to be responsible for one of Commander Shepard's backgrounds. Much like with Admiral Kahoku's men, a traumatized Marine named Corporal Toombs claims Cerberus lured Thresher Maws to the colony on Akuze, resulting in the massacre we hear of in the Soul Survivor origin story. Okay, so they're not perfect. Who is? Pure copium, Donald. This is the place. My armor's here somewhere. You can do this mission even if Rex is dead, but the armor is an antique, so it's not of any use. Perhaps we could sell it for some credits. Barry went over this before, but there really isn't any reason to do this if you have enough charm or intimidate to talk Rex down on Vermeer. Well, that's not entirely true. The armor will count towards points to determine how close Rex is with you by the time of Mass Effect 3. Whoa, what the fuck happened to that guy? Bro literally suffered instant death. He wasn't even dead, he still had health points. He just vanished. Bring it on! Anyway, Rex's armor will also go, come go, up go. if you happen to betray Rex by sabotaging the Ginophage cure. Shepard will attempt to talk Rex down by reminding him of that favor. But all that does is make Rex promise to kill you quickly. What kind of sick freak sabotages the cure while Rex is alive? Me, one time I wanted to see what would happen. Jesus Christ, Barry, you know you don't have to see every single outcome to every single game. You're not Doctor Strange. Some universes are best left unseen. If you think that's bad, just know I've seen all three of the outcomes to Priority Rannick. Too far. That's a violation, Barack. Will this motherfucker hold still? Actus is breaking your ankles, Barry. Bro was wave dashing and then almost one shot you. That was real embarrassing, Barack. Would have been nice if my goddamn sharpshooter sidekick Garrus took one shot on him. Don't blame Garrus because you couldn't land a shot. This is it. I can't believe my ancestors ever wore this piece of crap. Too bad we'll never get to see what that piece of crap looks like. I'm glad we could help you get it back. I might just be starting to like you, Shepard. Well, with that, Rex's survival is all but guaranteed. As if killing Rex was ever on the table. There's a lot of things we'll do here that differ from the norm, but offing a plot critical squad mate for his significantly less interesting brother, never gonna happen. Short little stop here to help Garrus kill Dr. Saleon. I legitimately couldn't tell you one thing about this mission if you put a gun to my head. Well, it reuses the models for the Thorian Creepers for one. This mission contributes to whether Garrus remains on his path to becoming a renegade or returns to being a paragon. If he's closer to renegade, he'll pursue becoming a specter against his father's wishes. If he's Paragon, he'll stay under CSEC. Not that it matters, the bird will end up in the same place in Mass Effect 2, no matter how he falls on the morality spectrum. Aren't working for CSEC and being a specter mostly the same thing anyway? Like, yeah, the specters have more free reign, but you're still a government lapdog. Honestly, Garrus's entire character arc screams midlife crisis. Brother doesn't know where he wants to be. 
and he ends up being an advisor to the Primarch in three after all the renegade behavior. That would explain why he comes to Shepard for guidance. Garrus is out here trying to find himself. Thank you. Thank you for saving me from Bro, this. Bro, goddamn, this is an ugly ass Solarian. That's not very nice, Donald. Bro, his skin looks like it has the texture what? of an old worn out Hart. belt. Hart. How does he look like he'd feel moist and dry at the same time? Sure Salion's face looked like you took the mouth slider Hart. in the character customization no and dragged it so low it Black went off the screen. Why does homie's teeth look like he'd been drinking nothing but cherry Kool-Aid for the last 25 years? You guys are really roasting him. him. He tricks unfortunate people into growing extra this organs in their kid, bodies Harris. and leaves them in there if you they go bad. Salion can catch these hands in these words. Okay, well, damn, I didn't expect him to drop that quick. Literally just pushed the nerd and he died. Bro got folded. Salion will die here no matter what. If you stop Garrus, you'll attempt to arrest the Salarian, but I guess he knows that prison life ain't for him. So he chooses to be gunned down instead. Well, that's one pointless side mission down. We'll move on to dealing with Cerberus on behalf of Admiral Kahoku. All right, we're at the first facility. What the hell? The bugs are here. I wiped you all out. It is interesting they use special enemies from the main missions here. How did Cerberus even come across a Rachni? All of the known ones were on Novaria. Interestingly enough, running into the Rachni here, if you do this mission first, will not change the dialogue of your squad mates. No one will recognize them. I'm gonna need you to finish my good work here, Barack. Not one bug is allowed to survive this game. That's gotta be one hell of a brain freeze for that sniper. Her final moments probably felt like drinking the coldest and crispiest Sprite from McDonald's. Extremely bad way to go. Your brain immediately flash frozen and then it spreads to the rest of you. If she's lucky, she lost consciousness. Looks like Cerberus has other bases on this world, Commander. Uh-oh, Barry the Thorian creeps are here. Don't get spat up on. It'd be a shame if you lost a vomit a second time. Oh, so now that you've both got the same deaths, you're willing to side with Joe. Bro's an opportunist, you know that. I'm praying for your downfall, Barack. Been doing it every night. Well, keep praying because I promise you I'm not dying to a damn creeper again. Speaking of which, how the hell are the damn creepers here? How has Cerberus got access to all these special opponents that we exterminate? I mean, we know Cerberus has an information network comparable to the Shadow Broker. Maybe they beat us to Novaria and Pharos and collected what they needed and split town before Shepard arrives. Okay, okay, hear me out. We know the elusive man wants to study Reaper indoctrination. What if he's collecting the bugs and Thorian creepers to study how the mind control works, just like he does with the husks in Mass Effect 3? I'm just high enough on adrenochrome to believe that, Donald. Actually, not a crazy theory. Maybe the elusive man gives up on studying the Rachni and Thorian when he realizes the Reapers have a superior mind control. Shit. Looks like we don't have to worry about who'll make video game theories. With MatPat gone, you got President Donald Trump right here. That's just a theory, a game theory. Go, go, go. Thanks for watching. Yeah, Donald, unlike the game theory guy, you wouldn't be able to go two weeks without someone canceling you. One lab remaining. Let's see what Cerberus has cooked up for us. I wonder what monstrosity Cerberus has been cooking up at the next base. Are those the damn Rachni workers? The hell are they cloning those for? Kind of feels like we went backwards in difficulty from the full-grown bugs, the mindless zombies, to the smaller explosive bugs. Ooh, that brother's floating in the air. One last stop to make, Commander. We owe Kahoku that much. This is where the good Admiral oh, met his down. end. Surrounded by the weakest foes in the game. Well, at least he wasn't subjected to being vomited on by the Thorian creepers or completely disemboweled by the Rachni. Oh God, it's Admiral Kahoku. No, Ashley, it's fucking Slim Shady. Of course it's Kahoku. So we're just gonna leave the body here? Yeah, someone will show up and get it sooner or later. We have one last stop in this chain of missions. Time for UNC Hades dogs. So Donald, sorry to have to take a dump all over your theory from earlier, but in Mass Effect 2, Miranda will tell us that the situation here is related to Cerberus's military division and not the science one. So it's likely they just wanted Thorian creepers and Rachni for shock troops. You always gotta bring in the facts to make things more boring, eh, Barry? Hey, I let you guys revel in your fun long enough. Might as well get the truth out there. Don't care. My head cannon is that this mission foreshadows the elusive man's intentions to control indoctrination. That's fine. It's not like the theory didn't make sense. Transmission coming in, Commander. I think you're going to want to hear this one. Greetings, Commander Shepard. 
And now we get to have a little talk with a shadow broker agent. They really played the long game mentioning the broker here and then not having that come full circle until a DLC an entire game later. If it even came full circle for you, back in OG Mass Effect, if you didn't have the DLC, the only times you heard about the broker was like three times in Mass Effect 1, and then all of a sudden, Liara is over here saying she's the broker. That shit had me confused. Did you For a bit, I thought she'd been the broker the whole damn time before I realized no Liara has an entire plot-relevant adventure locked behind DLC. Information that is now in your possession. Your deal died with Kohoku. Why should I help you? The Alliance is just going to file this information away in some archive. But no secret stays hidden forever. Eventually, someone somewhere will deliver it into our hands. He makes a compelling Mine's case, well Barack. Shit, y'all know how I am about chasing the bag. My morals can easily be compromised for the right price. Really, Barry? It's that easy to buy you? Okay, Joe, I know what you meant by buy you, but for some reason that made me uncomfortable. Just because you're in this lame-ass political game for the love of it doesn't mean the rest of us are sleepy, Joe. Even the people in your own party are smart enough to get rich. I don't know why you're so broke after doing this for 40 years. Sheesh, nearly 100k for that was worth it. Oh, Big Dog DLC mission coming through? There's just something about the atmosphere of Bring Down the Sky, even if it isn't a super engaging mission. Three fusion torches propelling asteroid X-57. At its current rate of acceleration... Uh, I don't know a damn thing about physics, but I'm pretty sure this asteroid is past the point of no return. Even if we do stop it, I feel like it's only going to be a matter of time before it crashes into the planet due to gravity pulling it in. It's literally going straight towards Terra Nova in this shot, like it's over. Why in the hell are we sending Shepard down onto the rock to shut off the thrusters when we can just shoot them inside the Normandy? Why don't we ever use the Normandy for any amount of firing support in any of our missions, Donald? Don't worry about it. What happens if we just sit here and wait for the asteroid to hit the planet? I'm glad you asked, Joe. Now's a good time for everyone's favorite segment, the Cut Content Corner. That name is a swing and a miss, Barack. First Barden Joe, and now that, what are you smoking? All right, I don't see the two of you jackasses coming up with anything. Anyway, the Bring Down the Sky DLC was originally supposed to be in the base game of Mass Effect 1, with the UNC prefix we see in our usual assignments. Admiral Hackett would brief us on the mission as usual, and you could even turn it down which apparently would have caused a heated response from Hackett. Is it even cut content anymore if it makes it into the game? Not really, but that aside, you would originally be on a timer. You had 60 minutes to reprogram all three fusion torches. On top of that, the terrorists here were humans instead of Batarians. That would have been interesting. What would cause humans to blow up a colony? They wanted to eradicate organics from the galaxy. That doesn't sound right. Sounds like a Reaper plot to me. No clue why humans wanted to wipe out a human colony, but hey, they changed it into a group of aliens we can all universally hate instead. Well, that guy over there damn sure didn't make it. Yeah, probably better off dead anyway. The alternative would be being a slave. Shepard said Batarians with a hard B. Probably a bit of a reach, but it does seem like Commander Shepard hates Batarians by default, even if you're a Paragon player. The pups are coming to play. Poor Varen, they don't deserve to die for the Batarians. This just proves Batarians are goddamn cowards. They send their dogs in to get killed first instead of riding into battle with them at the same time. Even the Krogan take better care of their Varen. The Batarians just created another reason for me to hate them. They're proving Ashley right about what you'd do if you had to sick your dog on a bear to save your own life. Major Commander and I ride or die together. Joe, did you name your German Shepherd Commander to reference Commander Shepherd themselves? I thought you already knew that. And didn't Commander get booted from the White House for biting Secret Service? He was just being a little silly, that's all. One of those bites put someone in the hospital. Okay, stop talking shit about my dog. We're not talking shit about Commander. The pup is innocent in all this. We're coming down on you, Joe, for not being able to train your animals better. I can come up with a laundry list of reasons you deserve to get cooked in this election, but being a poor dog owner? That's gotta be top three on the list. I am not hearing this from one of three presidents to never own a dog while in office. Better to not have a dog than to have one and have it be known for biting people. Was that you? Can you hear me? I hear you. What's going on? Who are you? My name's Kate Bowman. I'm an engineer. I was part of the team assigned to bring this asteroid to Terra Nova. 
We were attacked Wait, they were bringing the asteroid here? Probably for resource extraction. I guess that's why we can't call the Normandy in to blow things I up. Think they know the torch went out. Stay put. I'll get those other torches offline as soon as I can. Thanks. I'll contact you when I can. What is bro doing? Hey. Holy shit. Shields oh, actually doing their job in a cutscene? This is how you know this can't be canon to the games. Takes more than that one shot to bring me down. Rex got to be mad as hell seeing Shepard get shot in a cutscene and not immediately fold straight to the ground. At least Ashley or Shepard have to mag dump into Rex before he actually dies. In Mass Effect 3, the Vermeer survivor goes down to one shot in the gut despite being heavily armored. The Batarians fired up the fusion torches. You've got to shut them down before we hit Terra Nova. There are four million people down there, Shepard. I... My family. They live in Aronis. My kids and grandkids. Nice community. Good schools. I don't have time to do the math in my head. What happens if we don't stop this rock? X-57 is 22 kilometers long, twice the size of the asteroid that wiped out the Earth's dinosaurs. It would be like millions of fusion bombs striking at once. Millions. The heat of the blast. A thousand kilometers away, clothes will ignite. There'll be global wildfires. Air shock will flatten everything for hundreds of kilometers. Terra Nova will die, Shepard. Not just our colony, the planet. There'll be a climate shift, mass extinctions. The ecosystem won't recover for thousands of years. Millions, maybe. So long story short, it'll be the really bad. The people back on Earth haven't been paying attention. Again, the Batarians burned my home to the ground 20 years ago. They don't change. I've heard all the stories. Slave rings ranching people like animals. Pirate bands burning colonies to the ground. But this is... The Citadel Conventions forbid asteroid drops. Oh, the Citadel oh, Conventions forbid asteroid drops? I wish someone had told the Turians that during the occupation of Shang-Chi. Funny enough, the Turians pick up that orbital bombardment stuff from the Krogans. They made a policy of who did the same thing during the rebellion. My opinion? These guys aren't backed by their government. They've got to be working on their own. Didn't we eventually Batarian learn Balak is a high-ranking official within we'll the Batarian military? You know, jokes aside, it's a shame we literally only ever hear of all the bad Batarians do. Do Batarians even do Batarians anything good? There's that one guy from the Omega DLC, Bray. He seemed pretty all right. Ah, yes, one of the good ones. Where have we heard that before? Hey, it's not my fault Bioware made Batarians so irredeemable that we wipe out 300,000 of them and literally no one cares. So you'll have to go in on foot. Even then, they'll explode if you get too close. Just go slow and easy. You should be fine. First of Simon's engineers is here. Poor guy's name was G. Mendel, which may be a reference to Gregor Mendel, the father of modern genetics. Too bad his genetics didn't tell him to fight back instead of surrendering. Could have at least taken one or two of the Batarians out. Dying cold and alone on the middle of a big rock in space is not a great way to go. Is there any great way to go? If I'm dying, I'm gonna make sure to make a spectacle out of it. Big explosive fireball kind of death. Oh, you think an explosive fireball is a good way to go, huh, Donald? I'll keep that in mind. First of all, you can barely keep your own middle name in mind. Second of all, why do you need to remember that? Don't worry about it, bud. Just sit back and watch the game. Engineer number two coming up, she's called C. Himes. Now that's better, at least she made the Batarians have to blow up the door instead of surrendering to them like that Mendel guy. Donald, you'd be pissing and shitting yourself if the Batarians ever got a hold of you. Nah, I'd give them a punch in all four of their eyes. Imagine having twice the weak spots we do. If I don't make it, tell my family I love You know, I'm surprised they actually had voice acting for this log. Most of the time you find stuff like this is just a text description of what happened. Barack, what are you trying to cook here? I want to see if you can drive down and avoid the blasting caps. That's never crossed my mind before. Gonna get a good running start here. And what the fuck? Invisible wall, pretty lame. Just when I thought we'd actually get to do something cool in the Mako. Well, screw it, the old fashioned way it is. Man, it's a good thing they can't trigger the blasting caps from the console over there. And that the flying rockets aren't setting them off either. If only we had some kind of aerial support that could just drop an explosive payload down on these guys. So Barden Joe Shepard doesn't have to play hot and cold with landmines while being under fire. All right, that's enough pussyfooting around. Time to clear these clowns. 
If these battalions had any balls at all, they would have come out into the minefield to heighten the stakes of the battle. Uh, Barry, you're kind of close to that rocket guy. Oh, it's like that? That dude did not care about the splash damage that rocket caused him. I can't even be mad. What was I thinking walking towards a rocket soldier? Imagine getting through a minefield just to be blown up by a missile instead. Well, that's okay. I'll just run it back. Barack, it's hard to clown you for dying when you take it all in stride. It's not that serious. It's just a game. Besides, I know that was my mistake. And it's all tied up, baby, let's go. Annoying ass rockets, why the hell are they even firing rockets two inches from their face? Calm down, Barry, it's just a game, right? Not so composed now that he set himself up to have more deaths than us. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and put a pin in that, Donald. This is my last episode of Mass Effect 1. The two of you are closing things out. Keep that in mind before you shit talk me. Interesting fact about the layouts of the fusion torches, by the way, apparently there was a little competition between the designers of each of them to see who could make the best layout. This is why the buildings on the asteroid have distinctive layouts compared to the ones we see on the Uncharted Worlds. I wonder who won the competition. I'm a fan of this building we're in right here. I think it has a good mix of open area and cover. The first torch was pretty good too. Long line of sight, the second you open the door and you have an explosive tank right in front of you to take advantage of. It's too bad the rest of Mass Effect's worlds couldn't have uniquely designed buildings like this. Can't be too hard on them. Mass Effect excelled in a lot of other areas, even if the game had to cut corners elsewhere. Goddamn, I'm so glad I picked up shotguns. Watching the enemies get ragdolled is hilarious. It's only a matter of time before we find the high explosive ammunition. And that's when the fun really begins. Well, speak of the devil and he shall appear. Oh, baby, come to Papa. Don't those increase overheating? Just don't overheat, forehead. High explosive ammunition can be trouble on pistols and assault rifles, as it's basically required to use the frictionless materials. On shotguns, it's a bit easier since you're mostly killing things in two or three shots anyway. Are you there? Plus, carnage doesn't generate heat. Not to mention the explosive knockback stacks with the natural weapon force of shotguns, which sends weaker enemies hurling through the air. Don't shoot, please! No! Well, they're cooked. Who's shutting down the torches? Don't negotiate with terrorists. Kate Bowman really stood ten toes down here by not selling us out. Find this problem and deal with it. Ooh, new toys to play with. Thanks, Balak. Get her out of here. All right, let's see what this explosive ammo can do. Holy sh! You just cooked that Baron immediately. Sweet Jesus, listen to that impact. We should have brought Rex with us. I'm sure he'd like some roasted Baron leg. The high explosive ammo is honestly even crazier on a sniper rifle. With the right mods, you can turn one into a cannon that can kill multiple people if they're close enough to others. I've come down pretty hard on Mass Effect 1's gameplay, but one where it clears two and even competes with three is weapon modification. Late game, you get some pretty fun stuff. Hold it right there. This doesn't have to end in bloodshed. Uh-huh, we'll see about that charn. Don't come any closer. We can do this the hard way, or we can end this peacefully. Brother, I think I peace stopped being an option a while ago. Terrorist. Look, I'm just doing my job here. Hijacking this rock wasn't my idea. I signed on to make a little profit, a quick slave grab. You think that explanation That's makes this sound better? Right. This man Charn really said, no, you don't no, understand, no, no, we were only here to grab slaves. The whole blowing up the planet, that was the other guy's idea. We were never going to take this deal anyway. Barden Joe Shepard lost everything to Batarian slavers. These guys were cooked the moment we arrived on the scene. Where did Charn just go? Ha! Dude flew all the way to the wall. This is why I love the high explosives. Here's the final one of Simon's engineers. Poor bastard was just minding his own business and got sniped. They were too scared to face off with a guy whose last name was Montoya. 
You know, he had to be a descendant of the goat himself. All right, we're in the final facility here, and... Uh, what's going on with the Birdman? Garrus, my boy, what the f happened to you? This is probably what happens when dextroamino acid aliens eat and drink the wrong substances. It's like he wants to T-pose on us, but he got stuck. It is actually bonkers that the legendary edition has so many bugs still. What's bonkers is that all of these are appearing while we do our little playthrough. Because I'll put this on my own life. I've never seen this shit happen before. Well, I guess we'll go into the final fight with Garrus stuck like this. Looks like Garrus straightened himself out when the fighting started. Bruh, you served that guy up with one shot and took him down in midair with another. It doesn't get better than this, just ragdolling the hell out of Batarians. Die, human! No, you. You humans. Finally, we're face to face with Balak. You're almost more trouble than you're worth. I'm just getting started. He won't be able to predict what happens to him next. I'm leaving this asteroid. If you try to stop me, I'll detonate these charges. So originally, there wouldn't have been any choice between letting the terrorist leader escape and saving the hostages. Let you go, Balak. Who would claim to want to eradicate organics this for our physical imperfections and tendency towards destruction? Forced into exile, forced to survive on what we can scrounge up. Barack isn't the Don't only one here who can flex his Mass Effect history knowledge. Themselves. And let me tell you right now, Balak is full of shit. The Batarian hegemony was welcomed into galactic community, and then they turned around and bombed a Salarian colony world in 1785. And they annexed an Asari colony in 2115. They were pain in the asses before humans even joined the Citadel races. I'm impressed, Donald. Here I thought I was the only one who cared about this stuff. I have a special interest in shitting on the Batarians, and I want to make sure I got the receipts to back myself up. The Batarians had no right being pissy that humanity was colonizing the Skillian Verge after all the stunts they pulled. Torfin was retaliation for your attack of Elysium. You pushed, we pushed back. That's right. If you don't want the smoke, don't mess with humanity. Balak mad as hell. Barden Joe Shepard just kicked his ass in the marketplace of ideas. And I'm done wasting my breath. Now, if you want your friends to live, I suggest you step aside. So what are you going to do, Barry? The answer is obvious, Barack. You know, I like Kate, I really do, but I want to torture Balak. I'm not letting a terrorist like you go free. Do what you want with the others, but it'll be the last thing you do. I hope this is worth it. Oh, don't worry, it will be. At least they went quickly. I'm gonna enjoy gunning you. Oh, whoa, hold on now, Balak. Why are you running? Get down here and try to gut me. Talking all that shit just to put up a shield, run away, and leave his pets to get absolutely demolished. Come back here, you little bitch. I got something for you. Uh, Barry, you're scaring me. I'm gonna mount Balak's head on the CIC of the Normandy. Now, this is the Barack Obama I want to see get his ass, bro. Dude is scared shitless. Look at him going all the way to the other side of the map just to duck the 1v1. You can't gut us from all the way over there, Balak. Get this bodyguard the f out my way. On the ground now. Nope, I didn't say you could get up yet, boy. Damn, you really pressed the hell out of him. I need that energy from you from now on, Barack. I can only spare that for my biggest ops. <clears throat> you humans think you're so superior. Oh, we don't think it. It's a but simple you know fact, son. Us. I gave you a chance to save them, and you threw it away. <laughs> Who's the real terrorist? What kind of dumbass question is that? It's still you, bro. What's going on with our shields? It's Shepard's Conqueror's hockey. One day soon, the human race is gonna pay for what it's done. That one was for Talitha. You think killing me will make a difference? I love that Balak is trying to have another philosophical debate with Shepard, like he didn't lose the last one. Personally, I'm not trying to hear all of it, just keep shooting him. And that one was for all of Mindwar. What? What do you want? Details. What I really want to do is take your life, Balak, but... Nah, -uh, no buts. Kill him. I gotta agree with Donald here. Balak has to go. When the vids flash with images of your colonies in flames, 
Bro, he's basically begging for it at this point. I wish he'd at least have the decency to cover his mouth when he coughs. Who's your leader? Who's orchestrating all this? I'm through talking. Just kill me. Get it over with. So I'm gonna leave Balak to die slowly here. What? After all that smoke? After all that huffing and puffing you did? You're not gonna finish the job? It's all in the interest of maximizing war assets, Donald. Some things are more important than the damn war really assets. We're too two entire progress. games from having to worry about, Barack. Slowly. <coughs> this isn't over. <coughs> this is just the beginning for the Batarian Nation. <coughs> mm, I'm pretty sure the Batarian Nation will not be present in Mass Effect 5. It's safe. But go off, I guess. This facility is secure. But the Batarians can always attack another colony. Well, I hope someone like you will be around to stop them. You did it. Another hour in our course would have been irreversible. There is no goddamn way that Asteroid isn't still posing a threat to the planet. City most densely populated region. Uh, given the size of the asteroid, did it really matter where it would have hit? But that's not the entire planet would have become uninhabitable. Have you found Katie and her team? Oh, yeah. You see about them, well... Katie and the others. Blew them up with a bomb. All of them? Katie? And her brother? Everyone? How could this happen? I thought you were... Couldn't you save them? Nope. Couldn't have possibly done a single thing about it. You need to understand something. Not everyone out here in the big bad galaxy likes humans. It's not safe. Some days the bad guys are gonna win. You ask me, the good guys made out pretty well today. So this son of a bitch, this Balak, you're letting him bleed to death? All right enough beating around the bush. Balak will not bleed to death if you leave him here. How the hell did he even get out? He might not bleed to death, but we did leave him in a critical condition. I don't think I'll stick around though. Not with the team gone. Too many ghosts. It's time for me to get back and spend some time with my family. Before I go, I'd like to offer you something. Time for the real payoff of this mission. As lead engineer, I get some quality items. Take your pick. The reward you get from Simon will be among the rarest and most valuable items you can get for whatever your current level is. You can pick up Colossus armor for Tali, which could be worth it since it's difficult to get it for her otherwise. I've read the Omni tool is pretty good too. Yeah, but we're selfish. Let me get that human light armor. I could really use some light armor. I hope you get good use out of it. One more thing. You asked me to look into your missing engineers. All your friends are dead, Simon. You found them? Yes, all of them. Their bodies, anyway. Oh. I... I see. Well then, I guess it's... Better than not knowing. Take care of yourself. Be well, Shepard. We owe you. Oh, hell yeah! Look at the fit! Shepard got that shit on him, for real. Well, we're done here, but before we go, we should probably go pay our respects to the dead. Uh, we're not gonna like what we see in there. Yikes, it's rough in here. If Kate had survived, we'd have gotten an email from her in Mass Effect 2, where she's glad to see Shepard is actually alive. She and the citizens of Terra Nova prepare to celebrate the anniversary of us saving the day. Well, they can still celebrate with or without Kate, right? With her dead, a Reverend Bowman will hold a prayer session for the dead hostages on a newscast, where they also mention that Balak is still on the run and at large. See, we did the right thing. Well, we've reached the end of the episode, and next time we're getting into that peak stuff. Barry's time with Mass Effect 1 is over. I'll be taking up Vermeer next time. And I'll get us through the events on Ilos and the Battle of the Citadel for our grand finale of Mass Effect 1. This has been a blast, and I'm sure next episode we'll have some dramatic turn of events. But y'all know how it goes. Stay safe out there, drink plenty of water, get some sleep, and we'll catch you on the next one. It's finally time. Today's the big day. Joe is doing the Vermeyer mission. Before we head off, we should talk to the squad. Classic Joe Biden, always making the good people wait for the things they want just so he can ramble on and Look on. Forward, Come on, these are some of the last Correct. conversations we'll have with the Thank squad. You. Talking to them is worth the trouble. We already locked a romance in. Ain't no need to talk to anyone else. Donald, Vermeyer isn't going anywhere. And besides, I think Rex has an interesting story for us. Then why are we talking to this avian raptor creature instead of Unk? Garrus is telling us how we helped him through his midlife crisis. Crisis. It's important to his character development. Please, what development? He ends up in the same place no matter what. That's true, but Garrus starts coming into his own after the events of Mass Effect 1. When we see him next, he won't just be our protege anymore.
If that doesn't work, I'll do just about anything. Except go back to CSA. I'm done with that. No more red tape. Harvey Birdman's plans don't even make any sense. The Spectre's still answer to the Council. You're still held up in red tape and politics. That in politics. Well, that just goes to show that Garrus hasn't completely thought things out. Which is why he probably ends up on Omega no matter what. Finally, now we can talk to someone interesting. You ever go on any missions like ours before? I do like that Rex decides to open up with us after we help him recover his family armor. If Mass Effect teaches us anything at all, it's that all you need to do to make friends and find love is just help people out with their familial problems. Is that why you don't have any friends, Donald? No one wanted to step up and help you with your mess of a family life? I've been sitting here talking about Mass Effect with you two for a year. The f*** you mean I don't have any friends? Well, hold on now. We're friends by circumstance. It's crazy to think that Hillary might be here instead if she didn't completely fumble the easiest alley oop I threw up for her. Well, let's not get too crazy there, Barry. We'd probably just invite Bill or George instead. Get rid of an old friend. Knew too much. Huh. His old friend turned out to be an Asari commando. Isn't there some kind of theory about Rex's friend here boss. actually being Arya Talok? Arya does admit no. to having Asari commando Korea training and, and is a leader friends. of mercenaries when we meet her. Sort of. There are a lot of clues. For one, Arya says that she's tangled with Krogan besides time. Patriarch before, and in a conversation with Shepard, Arya will first. end it with better luck next time. We spent more Which is exactly the message other, Alina leaves for Rex. But let me guess, Barack, it's not real, right? Which one of you Afraid not. First? Some time ago, someone in the it fan base time. asked Mike Gamble about it at San Diego Comic Con, and all we got was a flat no. All right, well, I'm just going to say Alina and Arya are the same person anyway. I Personally, I would have just taken credit for that little bit of interconnected world building and say okay. yes, anyway, even if it wasn't originally the plan. Realistically, who do you guys think would win a fight between Arya and Rex? Rex is a fucking Krogan who killed a Thresher so Maw on foot. Well, Solo, what kind of question is that? I don't know, Donald. Arya did mop the floor with Patriarch to take over Omega. She would probably end, mess Rex up. I let her pick the location where we'd fight. She chose some old Solarian space station overrun with mercs and smugglers. That way we didn't have to worry about hurting any innocent bystanders. Well, Arya probably wouldn't give a damn about innocent civilians getting caught in one of her fights. So Alina and her probably aren't the same. Arya was probably more of a softy back then. I chased her through that station, used my entire store of ammunition, had to kill a bunch of mercs and use their crap weapons. Imagine just being a mercenary out in the Terminus system, just minding your own business, trying to make a quick buck, and getting completely demolished in the crossfire of a Krogan and Asari fighting each other. Well, if Alina were Arya, it looks like Rex had her dead to rights. Honestly, it's impressive the fight lasted so long in the first place. Aren't Asari supposed to be soft and squishy? Taking on an 800-pound Krogan who has biotics in close quarters is no easy feat. Whoever That's Alina was, sorry, she had to be the it. real deal. I watched the station from a distance. I never saw her leave. And when that place blew, there was nothing left larger than a Turian's right nut. Okay, so apparently so Turians have nuts. To Good to know. Do birds even have nuts? Wait, let me Google that. Like Do not search that on my laptop, Before Donald. I oh, shut up. It'll be the there. least weird thing to appear Alina in your search history since you became president. Just because you don't care about Secret it's Service time. seeing your search history doesn't mean I don't. Have neither of you heard of incognito uh, mode? Oh, you mean the mode for cowards? Barry only uses incognito now. mode, so yeah. Michelle doesn't find out he's searching up all those 3D videos of Miranda. Of all the fucking shit you've forgotten over the years, that's what, what you're able to recall. He wanted her dead. I told him the truth. <laughs> Alina was still alive and she was really pissed. I told him if he wanted to live, he'd need me around to protect him. You're smarter than you look, Rex. <laughs> he kept me on as his personal guard until he died. Natural causes. Working for the same client for their entire He's life is crazy. Krogan don't have a biological expiration date like the rest of us. So working for a Volus for however long they live was probably nothing more than a blip for Rex. Hey, Donald, why don't we have a chat with your girl? I'm glad you finally come around One on Ashley, time. Joe. Whoa, whoa, what did you just say there? Oh, nothing. You know me, always stuttering and rambling on and stuff. It was a hard call. 
but it gave you the strength you needed on this. Someone should probably remind Ashley what Bard and Joe Shepard did on Torfan because I don't think it's an outcome she's going to find all that enjoyable. It is kind of crazy that Shepard was praised for losing three fourths of their unit and murdering a bunch of Batarians that had surrendered. Yeah, I'm sure all the colonists on Mindwar had surrendered too. That didn't stop the Batarians from enslaving them. What's the saying? Sorry. An eye for an eye? Serious. The other half of that is makes the world blind. Well, Batarians have four eyes, so we get to poke three of their eyes out to make things even. When we're done, it'll be different, I swear. I like talking with you, Liara, no matter what the subject. Then let us talk about you. Are you okay? Nah, Liara, I'm not okay. I'm getting more tired every day for some reason. That's nothing new, Joe. You've been getting tired every day for the last 10 years minimum. You know, Liara might be overrated as hell, but she's one of the few squad mates who actually asks Shepard if they're doing all right. People always talk about how Garrus is your ride or die, but Liara literally has your back beyond death. I think we're done with the conversations here. What about Caden and Tally? Listen, I love Tally to death, but she literally doesn't have a thing worth listening to at the moment. Ain't no reason to talk to Caden. He's going to be nothing but a pile of ashes in about 40 minutes anyway. Uh-huh, yep, sure. Okay, well, if we're settled in, we'll be moving on to Vermeer. Commander, I'm reading a signal. Let's Man, this has been a long time coming. There's something about Vermeer that just hits different defense. compared to the other main story missions. Drop the Mako. Even we'll the Mako section is pretty good. I think the environment not having the exact same tone of color helps. Can only look at the dull browns of Pharos or the blues of Noveria for so long. Speaking of which, why is such a lush and beautiful world not colonized by anyone? Vermeer is in the Attican Traverse, which is technically in Citadel space. But it borders the Terminus system, and Vermeer itself sits right next to that border. The political instability of the region due to pirates and mercenaries made the Council write off Vermeer and other habitable planets in the area impossible to colonize. That sounds like quitter talk to me. The USA would have just kicked the Batarians out the area by force. Doesn't Citadel space have to border the Terminus system somewhere at some point? I mean, the galaxy is a giant circle. You're right, but it appears the Council extended the border of the Attic and Traverse from one end of the galaxy to the other, so it forms a buffer between the Outer Council space region and the Terminus. God damn it! Joe, you didn't even make it to the combat and you're already f***ing up. It's a really good thing Secret Service doesn't let you drive anywhere because holy hell, DC would be looking like that one episode of South Park with all the old people driving. Okay, Joe, stop playing. Flip the damn Mako already. Get off my back, man. I'm trying. I swear to God, Halo Combat Evolved figured out how to do this back in 2001. Why is getting the Mako to turn over such a chore? Now that Joe is done proving, there should be a maximum age limit on driving. I was going to say that the whole situation with Vermeer is exactly why the Council has the Alliance trying to colonize the Travers. They want us to take on the burden of dealing with the Batarians and other pirate mercenary groups. The geopolitical, no, the galactic political state of the Mass Effect universe is fascinating. It's a fun read when you've got all the time in the world as a former president. Maybe I'll read up on it. Why don't you worry about the real world politics first, Joe? I don't want to cook you too easily. I think this right here is what all the other Mako sections were missing. Actual objectives to justify why the Normandy can't just drop us down where we're supposed to be. It's not like we couldn't have gotten dropped off right on top of Liara's dig site. No, we had to drive 20 miles to get there. I see you've gone back to the pistol, Joe. I bought one of the Master Gear ones and souped it up. You can soup it up all you want. It'll never have the impact of a well-modded shotgun. How the hell is Caden dead already? Bro couldn't even wait to get nuked and go out in style. He chose to die to some geth instead. I'm pretty sure we've neglected to give Caden proper armor and a firearm. We're the same class as him, so we really shouldn't have brought him along in the first place. I always bring Ash and Caden through this part since it's our final time with the pair of them. You know, there were originally plans to have both Caden and Ashley survive Vermeer. There's even whole voice lines where the two of them thank Shepard and say that anyone else in that scenario wouldn't have been able to save both squad mates. Seems like that would kind of cheapen the mission. Vermeer is supposed to be a turning point and a major emotional impact for the game. I think it just goes to show how good Commander Shepard is. I believe we got the better version of events. Vermeer wouldn't be so iconic within the franchise if it weren't for the decision to leave one of your squad behind. Uh, oh, that's not good. I know they increased the inventory limit from the OG trilogy, but why is there a limit in the Legendary Edition at all? No clue, but I'm gonna need you to trash some of our unimportant stuff before we miss out on something. All right, I guess I'll be the one to do the tedious work. So what are we supposed to do now? 
Stay put until we can come up That's with That's my fucking goat, Kirahi. Kirahi was carrying the Salarians Are as a species here? before Morden came along. I'm the only one of them who didn't sound like Invader Zim sucked an entire tank of helium. There's some interesting cut content about Kirahi. He was originally planned to appear during the finale of Mass Effect 1 during the climb up the Citadel Tower. He would have provided covering fire for Shepard's team. Damn, I wish that were in the game. My man Kirahi standing ten toes down on business. There's also a cut email in Mass Effect 2 that would have come from Kirahi. They sent me to invest. Kirahi is glad to see Shepard is alive. And all that jazz, he promises us he'll send any useful information pieces. our way. So what have you found? He Seven also refers operations. to Morden as a bit of a cloaca. Here, but it's crawling with Geth and very well fortified. What's Saren researching? He's using the facility to breed an army of Krogan. Rex isn't going to like this. Uh, I think Rex is going to like this news quite a bit, actually. Isn't it kind of wild that Saren low-key cured a disease that has existed so for over 1,000 years? He probably had Reaper technology to help him out. Plus, I don't think Saren's methods here were all that ethical. No one said the genophage was hard to cure, it's just that no one has tried since it was implemented. So what's this business with Krogan overrunning the galaxy? Why is that a given? Female Krogan yeah, produce up to 1,000 fertilized Krogan eggs a year. God damn, they gotta have an extreme version of what human women go through exactly every month. Okay, as I was saying, female sure Krogan produce 1,000 eggs a year, they reproduce like true. bugs. The so. only reason they didn't overpopulate Tuchanka was because Krogan are actually not at the top of the food chain there. The Thresher Maws are. Wait, are you telling me Krogan are actually prey animals? Of course, why do you think they have their eyes on the side of their heads? like most prey animals in real we life. No wonder they're so violent. They have to fight giant worms on their way back home from the factory. But when the Krogan were given tons of peaceful worlds for their good deeds during the Rachni War, they started reproducing like damn rabbits. The Salarians were quick to give the Krogan spaceships and nukes, but couldn't think to give them a crash course in sexual education. So what you're getting at, Barry, is that the genophage has some purpose besides just teaching the Krogan a lesson. I suppose the Krogan did need some population control, but I would have preferred airdropping some condoms instead of a plague that causes countless stillbirths for 1,000 years. Not everyone is a genophage defender like you are, Joe. Hey, it ended the rebellion, didn't it? If you say so. But I'm going to keep my eye on him, if it's all the same to you. So. Let me tell you all about my very first Mass Effect run. I did not realize Ashley was serious about shooting Rex. So when I was going through the dialogue with him, I guess I took too long and I was in utter shock when Ash just obliterated him. Bro, how could you let that happen? Surely you had the family armor. Back then, I wasn't super in love with the game like I am now, so I mainly just did main story stuff. Needless to say, I didn't have the armor nor the morality to save Rex. And I was very unhappy with Ashley and left her to get nuked out of spite. Damn, that's crazy. I just used a guide to guarantee the best outcome. Same, why would I deliberately let myself lose the best alien in Mass Effect 1? Well, excuse me for going into the game blind for a completely organic experience. Is that Rex? Dude is over there executing the local sea life. We should probably go deal with that. This isn't right, Shepard. If there's a cure for the genophage, we can't destroy it. So what do you guys I think would be the audience saying, reaction if I just decided to kill enemy. Rex, regardless He's of us having the, the armor and morality to clear this? Really? Joe, I would literally really body slam you with my full weight if you did you that. I mean, I'm not going to stop you, Joe, but you yeah, reap what you sow if you do the unthinkable. Oh, hey, it could be a good idea. How many people do you think actually play the game with Rex dead going forward? Might be a new experience for everyone. According to an infographic released by BioWare back in 2021, only 6% of players had Rex be killed on Vermeer. I haven't seen it, and I don't need to. The only outcome allowed to occur here is Rex's survival. Hmm, I don't know, Donald. I did say we should romance Liara, and while you were in control, you prevented that. Well, I'm in control now. Maybe Rex should pay the price for your decisions. Oh, shit. Don't drag Rex into this. Nah, I'm just playing with you. Scared you, didn't I? No, you didn't scare me. I knew you'd be too weak to do something so controversial. I'll admit you had me worried a bit when you brought up Liara. There was no fear at all. This dude is afraid of his own political party. He'd never be brave enough to do something that the Keep vast talking. majority of the audience would Ashley definitely not approve. All right, hold on now. What did you just mutter under your breath? I didn't mutter anything, Donald. You good? Nah, don't play with me. Uh, Barack, you heard that too, right? Who, me? Nope. I don't like. I didn't hear anything. Okay, all right then. Maybe I'm tripping a little bit. Just one thing. When we find Saren, I want his head. I think Rex is a little hungry. 28 Paragon points is a steep price to pay to keep Rex alive. A few notes about the confrontation with Rex here. If you haven't recruited Liara and haven't recruited Garrus on the Citadel, Rex will just submit to what Shepard wants regardless of your morality. Otherwise, by the end of Vermeer, 
you'd only have Tally and one of either Ashley or Caden. Would have been like the Citadel DLC party, but you got as many people killed as possible. Also, when Mass Effect 1 was being demoed, apparently the majority of people were in favor of killing Rex on Vermeer, which I suppose makes sense. Without any context, Rex is just a big scary alien trying to kill us. We'll need to place the bomb at a precise location. Where do we take the nuke, and how do we get there? The bomb must be taken to the far side of the facility. Your ship um, it's a it nuke. We'll need to Does it really matter where we place it as long as it's in the vicinity of our target? See, that's your problem, Sleepy Joe. You always want to settle. You got to go for the target. We won't be able to meet their force head on. Definitely not. But I think we can work around that. I'm going to divide my men into three teams and hit the front of the facility. While we've got their attention, you can sneak your shadow team in the back. I just hope you survive long enough to be useful. We're tougher than we look, Commander. But it's true. I don't expect many of us will make it out alive. And that makes what I'm going to ask even more difficult. I need one of your men to accompany me, to help coordinate the teams. We'll need someone who knows Alliance communication protocols. You know, we only have the option to give Kirahi Ashley or Caden, but they aren't the only people who know Alliance protocol. The Normandy is literally right behind us, and all of its crew is available. Logically, who would be the right answer here? Obviously, Ashley should go with Kirahi. Caden is one of our tech specialists William, on the crew. He would obviously be the one arming the bomb. This wouldn't even be a debate in real life. Plus, as far as we know, Caden hasn't actually led a unit. Ashley was in charge of the 212 on Eden Prime. I mean, that did end in a squad wipe for Ash. Ash can't be faulted for not expecting a bunch of murder bots and a literal reaper to invade an agriculture colony. Sounds like a skill issue to me. Commander Shepard holds the line on Elysium during the Skillian Blitz with nothing more than the local colonists at their side. Yeah, against the Batarians. Let's see Shepard do that against a Geth backed up by Sovereign. The Normandy's picking me up. How will your teams escape the blast? We will engage the Geth as long as possible. Once the bomb is in place, we will fall back to try uh, to escape the Excuse me, Captain. Your escape plan for the nuclear bomb explosion we're going to set off is to outrun it. Hell, he probably doesn't care. Solarians only live to be like 40. Kirahi and his boys are probably at the end of their lifespan anyway. This is a suicide mission. Did someone say suicide mission? The Vermeer assault operation was clearly what inspired the suicide mission from Mass Effect 2. Peak inspires peak. Let's do this. You all know the mission and what is at stake. I have come to trust each of you with my life, but I have also heard murmurs of discontent. There would be fewer murmurs of discontent if you weren't out here calling this a suicide mission. We would be legends, but the records are sealed. Imagine saving your species multiple times over and not getting any clout for it. Shepard does it and got sent to jail. Y'all are really talking over this peak speech right now? Yeah, I'm sure you need to listen to it, Sleepy Joe. You're the one who needs to take notes on having a proper speech, not me. All right, keep it down already. giants do not seem to give us solace here, but they are not all that we are. Before the network, there was the fleet. Before diplomacy, there were soldiers. Our influence stopped the Rachni. That's Cap. Y'all had to pull the Krogan in to stop the bugs. Shut up, Donald. Kiri is having his Commander Irwin moment. Solarians didn't hold shit against the Krogan. The Turians did. And even then, they needed to drop a plague to win. will stop staring. In the battle today, we will hold the line. Such a goaded speech. Hey, it's all right. I've delivered better. Good luck, Commander. I hope we will meet again. Good choice on the squad mates, Joe. Useful and thematically appropriate. Look at Garrus. He got that Colossus armor on him. I guess even the bird can look decent Good. in the best we'll armor. Push. We'll try to make it to the AA guns, but it might be up to you to finish the job. And Commander, if you see any way to undermine their defenses, we could definitely use the help. So you know how to secure Kirahi's life on this mission, right, Joe? Undermine the Geth's defenses or whatever, right? Well, yes, but there's only one thing that you need to do in order to save Kirahi's life, and it's take out the Geth flyers that'll appear later on in the mission. I'm pretty sure I missed those my first time. Of course you managed to let Kirahi die. Why am I not surprised? In Joe's defense, it's not like the Geth flyers are in your way or anything. You have to take a slight detour to get to them. Um, is the music going to start playing anytime soon, or are we just doing this wrong? It'll start sometime after we get past the communications tower up ahead. Tell me I'm not the only one who saw that Geth disappear just now. I think it went behind the pillar on the left there. Anyway, you gotta keep Kirahi alive so you can see him be a badass during the Sir Kesh mission. If you don't deal with the Geth flyers later on, 
Kira Hay will eventually be shot down by them. And either Ashley or Caden will take care of the communications for the duration of the mission. This might be the best soundtrack in the game. Either this or the Presidium main theme. Nothing beats Uncharted Worlds, which is the song you hear at the galaxy map. Uh, Joe, you're taking on a lot of fire there. Nah, it's good, I got it. The Colossus armor might be good, but it's not that good. You can't just turn your brain off. Oh, God. You're cooked. Joe, don't panic. Attaboy, perfect use of lift. Okay, that guy can have fun slamming into that rock wall back there. Color me impressed, you might actually clear your last episode without dying. For crying out loud, don't put that pressure on me. Just think about it, Joe. If you succeed, it all falls on Donald to not die for the finale, or he'll be the one with the most deaths in Mass Effect 1. Think of the bragging rights you'll get. Oh yeah, that's super fair. I have to do eye loss in Battle of the Citadel. I have to be perfect for two missions while Joe only has to do Vermeer. Shouldn't it be light work for someone of your skill level? Maybe if I weren't on this whack-ass Sentinel class you picked, I wanted to play soldier. The only way you know how to play the game is by face tanking rockets with immunity. Sentinel is legit one of the best classes, and I don't know why you keep pretending it's not. Don't forget about the Geth flyers, Joe. I'm just clearing these Geth so they don't shoot us in the back. A rare million IQ play from you, high explosive ammo, can damage enemies even if you only shoot the ground around them. He's learning, he's evolving. God, I remember just running through here and not noticing the flyers before I got completely demolished by them. I'm pretty sure those crates weren't in the original Mass Effect, so you really didn't have much room. Well, with these Geth drones being dealt with, Captain Kirahi's survival is guaranteed going into the trilogy. He'll personally contribute 20 military strength to our war assets in Mass Effect 3. However, that's only if he doesn't end up giving his life to save the Salarian Counselor. What a complete waste that would be, a goat like Kirahi dying for either of the Salarian Counselors. To be fair, Valern isn't that bad. He's probably the least annoying of the bunch. Not exactly a tall order. Sparatus is consistently an annoying bastard. And Tevos is uncooperative during the Reaper War. I feel like us hanging up on her isn't doing that situation any favors. Are you going to stop hanging up on her? Ha, ah, hell no. I'll do it every time. Watch the laser. Okay, damn, look at Joe learning how to position himself. You see that, Donald? That's how you use the shields to block a sniper. Okay, you little rat, you've really been waiting to bring that back up, haven't you? I got a long memory, buddy. Joe, I know lying is the name of the game in our profession, but you could at least tell less obvious ones. I don't know if you know this, but there are actually two entries to Saren's research facility here. You can either go through the door that's right behind us, or you can take the passage that goes underneath the building instead. Is there any difference at all? Not really, it all loops around in a circle, so just do whatever you want. Damn, kind of crazy we're just gunning these Salarians down. We're not even gonna try to restrain them? Their names are literally indoctrinated. What the hell are we gonna do to save them? Joe, you've been practicing off camera or something? I guess I'm finally getting the hang of Mass Effect 1. Well, that proves that. The first Mass Effect is definitely the easiest. It is at this point in the game, we're close to unbeatable as things are. We've got access to base security. You should be able to cut the alarms from the Might even be able to trigger alarms on the far side of the base. It'll clear out the guards for us, but they might be- Contrary to what Garrus says here, this decision has no real impact on the Salarians. The only thing you lose by triggering the alarm is the experience of the enemies that spawn up ahead. I really dislike how making what seems like a smart tactical decision rewards you Paragon points. What do you want? I told you everything. I Here we have a Solarian whose mind is an even bigger bowl of mashed potatoes than Joe's. It tried to break me, but it couldn't. I shut it out. Yeah, bro, I don't think you can shut out indoctrination. I love this entire scene because we rarely get to see how goddamn scary indoctrination really is. well on reconnaissance six days ago. Glad to answer, sir. Never any questions from these bastards. Just whispers and poking. Got it. I wasn't going to call attention to it, but is the battle music really appropriate here? I think it's on now, so it can swap off when things here get scarier. Experiments, but I don't know what for. The effect of incessant whispering on my shortening temper. Who knows? Yeah, okay, even I'm able to see this guy is definitely not normal. There is another Salarian here in this base who isn't indoctrinated. 
but I think you'll need to backtrack to go get him, no. Joe. Uh, screw him. Damn, that's cold, Joe. I'm surprised Ashley to hear that from you. Company. Bro, I know you're saying something under your breath. I heard you that time. I don't know what you're talking about, Donald. Are you sure you aren't indoctrinated like Private Menos here? Hearing whispers is a clear sign of indoctrination, Donald. Maybe we need to lock you up with the other Solarians. Let me out. Let me out. Let me out. Let me out. So, it's a good thing we didn't let him out, right? Is that even a question? If we had opened the cells, Menos and the rest of the indoctrinated Solarians would have attacked and we'd have to kill them. I mean, they're dead regardless. Either we let them all out and we shoot them dead, or we leave them there and they get blown up by the nuke. Uh, hello? Those guys didn't expect us to come to other way around. And here we have Dr. Droya, so much for the Krogan not having any doctors. Though I'm not sure how husks are supposed to contribute to solving the genophage. Where the hell did my health go? The doctor back there has neural shock. And I think something behind us blew up. Also, there are some cut voice lines here. Dr. Droyas would reveal that the reason he's working with Saren is to save the Krogan from the genophage. He'll also be shocked to see Rex here getting in the way of his cure. You can try to convince the doctor that Saren is up to no good, but he won't listen, and we'll have to kill him. You know, we don't have to destroy the cure here. We could just save it for later. We could barely get the council to cure the genophage during the Reaper War. Ain't no way they're gonna do it now. Don't shoot. Please, I just want to get out of here before it's too late. Yeah, go ahead and shoot her. Damn like Who that, Barack. Shouldn't want? we at least talk to her first? Rana is no good. In Mass Effect 2, we'll catch her mixed up with Jador during the mission to recruit Okir. We won't be able to do anything about her then. But she doesn't seem that bad right now. In Mass Effect 3, we'll see an Alliance News Network report on indoctrination will reveal that Rana was indoctrinated all along. She'll set off an explosion that kills nine Asari and wounds a dozen more, after which she'll take herself out. It's highly likely she was indoctrinated here at Saren's research facility. Can I go? What were you studying here? It's that ship, Sovereign. It emits some kind of signal. Undetectable, but it's there. I've seen the effects. Are you sure you only saw the effects, Doctor? Are you sure you haven't felt them too? It's called indoctrination. Direct exposure to the signal turns you into a mindless slave, like the Solarian test subjects. But there's collateral damage, too. Okay, well, she just admitted to collateral, collateral damage, damage, which definitely includes her. Sovereign signal is too strong. Spend too much time near the ship, and you feel it like a tingle at the back of the skull. The only way you could know it feels like a tingle at the back of the skull is if you're also indoctrinated. She hears the whispers, too. She's cooked. I guess this is why you go through the dialogue options. It happens to everyone at the facility. My yeah, including you, dummy. For a doctor, she has a shocking no, lack of deductive reasoning of skills. Happens to me. Does she really think she hasn't caught a trace Tell of indoctrination signal. herself? Signal's not exactly the right word. There is some kind of energy field emanating from the ship. It changes thought patterns. Over time, days, maybe a week, it weakens your will. You become easier to manipulate and control, but it's a degenerative condition. There's a balance between control and usefulness. The less freedom a subject maintains, the less capable it becomes. Yeah, you're banned from life, sweetheart. Whoa, that's a pretty renegade move from you, Joe. It being a renegade move to execute someone who is obviously indoctrinated is pretty goddamn stupid. I just did what I was told. I didn't have a choice. I'm I just sorry. did what I was told. Where have I heard sorry, that one before? No, no! You know, instead of putting her hands up and saying no two times, she should have tried throwing up a biotic barrier or something. Not every Asari actually trains their biotics. Yeah, and that's dumb as hell. You can move things with your minds and create durable layers of protection, and you're not training it. Matriarch Ethida was right. The Asari need less dancers and more fighters. I'm surprised to hear you of all people say that, Donald. Yeah, I don't need the Asari to spend the entirety of their maiden stages dancing in Korra's Den or on Omega. They're hot as hell no matter what they're doing, so they might as well be kicking some ass instead. I'm sorry, is this not the third goddamn time we're seeing this cutscene? We see it once on Eden Prime, again with Shiala, twice with Liara, and the time we're looking at here. So five times in total. BioWare must have been real proud of this, and I can't blame them. It's a pretty crazy thing to see your first time. Fun fact about the Prothean vision, since this is among the last times we're gonna see it in this game. 
The images we see are actually photographs taken by Casey Hudson. It's a combination of stakes, ribs, circuit boards, and screws. I think I liked it more before I knew that, Barry. You gotta pick and choose what you're going to demystify for us. Knowing the Prothean vision is actually just photos of beef is crazy. Well, whatever, super iconic moment ahead. I get the feeling something bad is about to happen. Gee, thanks, Rex, I never would have guessed. You are not Saren. What is that? Some kind of BI interface? Rudimentary creatures of blood and flesh. You touch my mind, fumbling in ignorance, incapable of understanding. Dog, I'm getting fucking goosebumps all over again. There is a realm of existence so far beyond your own, you cannot even imagine it. I am beyond your comprehension. I am sovereign. Someone tell the giant space bot to put the damn thesaurus down. We get it. You're super intelligent. Artificial intelligence always has to flex their vocabulary on us. Reaper. Is Garrus dumb? It's clearly a robot. Why would the passage of time matter to it? It's interesting that the entity we're speaking to here is called Sovereign, and its purpose is to bring about the beginning of the Reaper invasion. Yet the leader of the Reapers is called Harbinger. I don't get it. Uh, a Harbinger announces the approach of something, and a Sovereign is the ruler or leader of something. Sovereigns and Harbingers' names don't match their respective roles. There is an entire galaxy of races united and ready to face you. United? Eh, I don't know about that one, Shepard. Ignorance. The cycle cannot be broken. Cycle? What cycle? Cycle this, cycle that. Why don't you cycle yourself into the club to pick up some women, Sovereign? Calling the vanguard of our destruction maidenless is crazy. All the motherfucker has done for the last 50,000 years is look at galactic society develop. No wonder he's so lonely. Why would you construct the mass relays, then leave them for someone else to find? Your civilization is based on the technology of the mass relays. Our technology. By using it, your society develops along the path as we desire. We impose order on the chaos of organic evolution. You exist because we allow it, and you will end because we demand it. Yeah, we'll see which one of us is left standing next episode, you big bastard. Where did you come from? Who built you? We have no beginning. Liar. I know your origins, but I won't tell you yet. And trust me, Sovereign, you definitely have an end. We're not too far from it. Ugh, I forgot how up its own ass Sovereign is. It makes sense. It isn't answering any of our questions, and for good reason. Why should it entertain having an equal conversation with a being it views as inferior? It would be like if I stopped on the sidewalk and talked to an ant. No, you're not Legion, you're Sovereign. Get your Mass Effect character straight, dummy. Machines can be broken. Your words are as empty as your future. I am the vanguard of your destruction. This exchange is over. This exchange isn't over until we exchange these hands. The amount of stuff packed into Vermeer is one reason it's got to be one of the most iconic missions in the trilogy. I'd say it is the most iconic, even more so than the suicide mission itself. It's crazy that there's no hub area for us to explore and basically no side missions, yet there's so much content packed into it. What did we say during the missions ranking? Everything is about the mission and our squad, and it resulted in an insanely good assignment. In fact, I think Vermeer could have formed the basis for the entirety of Mass Effect 2. Getting Rex's family armor and leveraging that to get him to stick by us is just like the loyalty mission system and getting everyone to accomplish their jobs on the suicide mission. Mass Effect 3 is more my speed, but even I'll admit the focus on our favorite characters is what made the series memorable.
Not much further now. One more set of enemies to fight before we reach the bomb site. Vermeer might be iconic, but it's light work. Lucky you getting the mission after Barack bought good weapons. What the f Apparently the weapons and armor don't matter. Bro, your reaction time is completely shot to hell. You had a million years to duck behind something. I thought that was the laser that sabotages your gun. Since when did the Geth Hoppers have assassinate? Oh, Joe. There are three types of Geth Hoppers. The Geth Stalkers, Sappers, and Ghosts. The ones with the sabotage beam are the Stalkers and Sappers. The one that just clapped you is a Geth Ghost, which are only found on Pharos and Vermeer. That's fucking bullshit. Why is the sabotage beam the exact same color as the assassination one? It's not fair. Sounds like a personal problem to me, Sleepy Joe. That'll teach you to let your guard down just because you think something isn't going to be fatal. You better lock in, or you're 100% going to have the most deaths of Mass Effect 1. Bro switched to the shotgun. He's pissed for real now. Uh, what the hell happened to Rana's body? Ooh, hell no. I don't like that one bit. Get out this room before we get jumped by her spirit or something. No way did that Krogan just eat two carnage blasts. Hey, Joe, calm down. You're kind of playing like Donald here. And it's working. Get in there. Let's go, Brandon. What in the malarkey? You were saying? OK, Joe, I was liking the motion you were putting out there, but trying to go blow for blow with a Krogan on the Sentinel class is something even I wouldn't have done. All right, Joe, this video is already running up on 40 minutes, and we got a whole ass boss fight to go. I'm going to need you to lock the f in. Do not let that Krogan run up on you again. I think it bears repeating how unbelievably lucky you were that the Krogan warlord on Therum wasn't as aggressive as it was supposed to be. How many goddamn shots to the dome does it take to drop these guys? He had immunity activated. It's a good thing you hit him with stasis. Thank God that's over. It isn't over until you get past the Geth ghost that killed you first. Moment of truth, Joe. Did the laser just disappear or am I crazy? Don't mess with me. For once I'm not, I actually don't think it's going to shoot. Apparently you and Rex had the same brain cell on this one. Two simultaneous carnage shots is crazy. There's another ghost. Don't panic, you've got it. Attaboy. I guess you aren't a lost cause after all. Good God, we finally made it. So much for me having the most deaths at the end of this because there's absolutely no way I'll die at all next episode. Never mind twice. Pride come before the fall, buddy. Where the hell were all of these other fully suited Marines during this operation? We should have had all hands on deck for this. At the very least, they could have joined up with Kirahi so his people wouldn't have been sent into the meat grinder with only Ashley backing them up. Bomb is in position. We're all set here. Commander, can you read me? The nuke is almost ready. Get to the rendezvous point, Williams. Negative, Commander. The Geth have us pinned down on the AA tower. We've taken heavy casualties. We'll never make the rendezvous point in time. Give me one good reason the Normandy can't run over and grab Ashley and then come right back over here and grab us. Or at the very least, we could have dropped some of the spare Marines off to reinforce Ashley and the Salarians. It's okay, Commander. I need a couple of minutes to finish arming the bomb. Go get them and meet me back here. We got a big decision coming up here. It's not a decision. We already know what's gonna happen. We're going to go rescue Ashley and leave Caden to die. Yep, Donald is right, Barack. There's no decision to be made here at all. I'm glad you finally plan on sticking true to your deal, Joe. Yep, you got a romance, Ashley. That was the exact deal we had. Uh, Donald, I like you, so I'm gonna just warn you now. But are you seriously not aware of what's about to happen? What, Joe clearly agreed with me. No, no, he did not. What the hell are you doing, Alenko? At least he didn't agree with what you concluded the decision would be. No matter what. Only that there was no decision to be made. Whatever Joe has decided, he's made his mind up about it. Joe, tell Barack he's talking nonsense. We can handle ourselves. Go back and get Alenko. Uh, Joe? Get on your knees, Donald. Excuse me? Pause. Get on your knees and beg me to save Ashley. Have you lost your goddamn mind? Oh no, my mind hasn't been this clear since 2016, Donald. 
If you want me to rescue Ashley, you need to beg. This is ridiculous. Our deal was you pick Sentinel and I romance Ashley. You can't do this. You did romance Ashley. You've engaged in a romantic relationship with her, but nothing about our deal said I had to save her, Donald. Bullshit. Barack, help me out here. For the last time I am not getting between this, you two need to settle things once and for all. Yeah, don't look at Barry. He can't help you right now. I'm the one with all the power here. Now do as I told you to do. Oh, I see how it is, you fucking snake. The doddering old fool thing was all an act. You're as much as a piece of shit politician like the rest of them. You're surprised? I've been in this game for over 40 goddamn years. Now stop yapping and get down, Donald, low, real low, and beg me to spare your girlfriend. I'm still waiting, Donald. I fucking heard you, goddamn it. Fine, I'm getting down. Look. Huh? I never thought I'd see the day. Well, Donald, don't you have something you should be asking of me? No, begging of me? You goddamn piece of shit. Well, that wasn't very nice. Maybe I will save Caden anyway. Okay, okay, listen, Joe, please, from one man to another, I am begging you to spare Ashley. I know I've been tough on you, but it's only because I want to see the best of you in these videos. Don't bring Ashley into our disputes, please. I'm actually shocked. That sounded genuinely sincere. Donald, is what you just said actually true? Yes, I know how tough it's been for you playing Mass Effect on Insanity for the first time, but I'm genuinely impressed with how little you've died. I can't stress that part enough. I thought for sure you'd be on double digits. But that aside, please save Ashley. Nope. Malenko. Goddamn, Radio Joe, Joe, that was heartless. You motherfucker! Okay, I trust we've all gotten that out of our systems. I'm surprised you were able to jump like that, Donald. You came at me like the guy who did a flying tackle on that female judge. I'm more impressed with how fast your legs moved, Joe. After seeing you struggle up those stairs, I was sure you couldn't run like that anymore. This is the biggest load of bullshit I've ever experienced. Well, I might as well deliver a few facts here. As of 2021, 60% of people saved Ashley, and 40% of them saved Caden in the Legendary Edition. In the original trilogy version of Mass Effect 3, Caden had an abysmal survival rate at only 17%. See, we did the thing most people don't do. Time for people to experience something new. Yeah, justify it however you want, you damn reptile. Also, another interesting fact, at some point during Mass Effect 3, 64% of people did not encounter Rex in the original trilogy release. This might have to do with people jumping into 3 without playing 1 or 2, and the game defaults to Rex being dead. Defaulting to Rex being dead is diabolical. You know, it really does make more strategic sense to leave Ashley behind here anyway. Whatever you need to tell your guilty conscience to make yourself feel better, Joe. Joe has a point. Caden is a biotic tech specialist who has been on our crew for a while, while Ashley is just another gun. At long last, we're encountering Saren. Why does Saren get the super cool hoverboard? You know, originally, Saren's hoverboard was intended to also be used by Geth Troopers as well, but they decided to make it exclusive to Saren. Ain't no fucking way his shields work three times in a cutscene. Saren straight up has the strongest shields in the entire Mass Effect continuity. I know Rex and the Vermeer survivor are sick to their stomach seeing this. Now we finally get to learn about Saren's motivations. Do we actually believe a word coming out his mouth? I don't see why not. How about all the damn Reaper technology he clearly has implanted all over his body? It's perhaps a bit confusing, especially when Shepard is shocked to learn Saren let himself be implanted. However, the original concept for Saren had him without all that technology all over his body, and he would later change to reflect the version we see now. BioWare seemingly changed their minds on this, but didn't address the story beat where Saren allows himself to be implanted. Trillions dead, but what if they had bowed before the invaders? There would still be trillions dead. What kind of question is this? Is submission not preferable to extinction? Got me really fucked up, I'd sooner die fighting live. than let myself be controlled by some giant space now you bots. See why I never came forward with this to the council. We organics. Okay, well I think we can agree with Saren there. No matter what side of the argument you're on, the council absolutely wouldn't listen to any of this. But if we work with the Reapers, if we make ourselves useful, think how many lives could be spared. Think of how many lives could be killed though. Like you have any room to talk about who could be killed after what you did? Dangers. Had hoped this facility could protect me. So Saren is aware he's indoctrinated? At least he's aware he could become indoctrinated, but is in denial about how far he's fallen. 
I've studied the effects of indoctrination. The more control Sovereign exerts, the less capable the subject becomes. That is my saving grace. Yeah, until Sovereign decides it no Sovereign longer needs, needs you and it turns you into a vegetable. My mind is still my own. For now. But the transformation from ally to servant can be subtle. I will not let it happen to me. The copium is palpable. Why are the Geth following Sovereign? They believe Sovereign to be some kind of god. The bots are over here deifying the giant eldritch murder ship from eons past, and we're expected to trust them later on in the trilogy? Sovereign does not desire the pitiful devotions the Geth hurl at it. Saren, you know this, and you still think you can expect Sovereign to spare organics just because we submit to it? But as tools, they are useful. They will survive the coming invasion. If organic life is to survive, we must also prove we are useful. We useful for being melted down into biomass, Tell me why pushed through Sovereign tubes, and fed into a giant human-like robot. Is. Maybe we can find a way to stop them. The conduit is the key to your destruction and my salvation. Sovereign needs my help to find it. That is the only reason I have not been indoctrinated. Whatever tiny bit of Saren's actual personality still exists is in utter denial. Bro is neck deep you you in indoctrination at this point. You're already under its power. No, Sovereign needs me. Saren is huffing it. It's insane. I've been promised a reprieve from the inevitable. This is my only hope. Saren is already well and truly beyond help by this see, point. I wasn't exactly in any Sovereign rush to save Saren anyway. He sabotaged Anderson's attempt to join the Spectres, and he hates humans because his brother died in the first contact war. You know... The war Turian started. Sovereign is a machine. It thinks like a machine. If I can prove my value, I become a resource worth maintaining. Yeah, and you know what we there do with no resources that are useful? Conclusion. We use them, you dumbass. You're literally being used. You were a specter. You were sworn to defend the galaxy. Then you broke that vow to save yourself. I'm not doing this for myself. Saren, more than once in this Sovereign conversation, you've succeed. said... You were looking to save yourself. My way. You were seeking a reprieve from the inevitable. Survive. I'm forging an alliance between us and the Reapers, between organics and machines. And in doing so, I will Is this save not more just the synthesis ending? All the more reason that ending doesn't make but any sense and is wrong. It can be inferred that Saren is meant to represent synthesis, but I'm pretty sure that was unintended. All right, Joe, you got this. God willing, you get absolutely fucked from 12 different directions. Hit the pause button some more, Joe. Shut up, I was trying to get a read on the situation. Oh God, everything is happening. Okay, think this through, Joe. What do you need to do to win? Focus, Saren. There you go, that's what I like to see. Who the hell is that over there? It's one of the guys we saw helping take the bomb off the Normandy. Oh, that's it? Good job, Joe, and thank God I thought we'd be here a lot longer. Don't pat him on the back too hard. Bruh, where the hell are Garrus and Rex? Help! Garrus, Rex, Caden, and that random Marine are for real watching Shepard get jacked up by Saren. Hold this right, you bird. Saren just said, fuck it, I'm out of here. Yeah, I think the nuke that's about to go off from about 20 feet away is more important than trying to run the fade. I cannot fucking believe what I'm watching here. Get over it, Donald. We were probably gonna ditch Ashley in Mass Effect 2 anyway. Well, I suppose this makes for a decent end to Ashley's character arc. From hating and being distrustful of aliens to fighting and dying alongside them. Besides, you said dying in a big explosion was a good way to go, Donald. Your girl is going out the All way right, you wanted her to. On. I did not say I wanted Ashley to die in a giant explosion. Don't twist my words to make what you did seem justifiable. I can't believe that Ash didn't make it. For once, Caden and I are in agreement on something. I too can't believe Ash didn't make it. We had to leave her behind. Saren has to be stopped at any cost. But why me? 
Why not her? She would have made it if we just romanced Liara instead. I don't know what to tell you. It is a bit odd to save Caden when we're already a sentinel ourselves. Our roles overlap. But if I'd done my job, you wouldn't have had to make that call. Caden, I'm not even going to let you blame yourself. Williams there were a lot of ways we could have gotten that. Ashley out of there and saved you too. And her sacrifice was made in vain. Yes, sir. I'm. We'll get it done. Sad music uh, done. I guess we're all good now. For interrupting, but I have an idea. I think the beacon you found in Saren's base was similar to the one you found on Eden Prime. It may have filled in the missing pieces of your vision. I might be able to help you put all those pieces together. God damn, Liara is fucking relentless. Again, don't you? The second Ashley is out of the picture, she's trying to embrace eternity again. Liara just like me, for real. Gotta give her points for being persistent. Commander, there's a combo nearby. I can link us in if you want to report back to the Citadel Council. If we must, you know, Joker. Warn him about Sovereign. Set the link up, Joker. They need to know. Patching it through. I hope you don't plan to cut us off like last time, Commander. That will Which entirely depend on us getting the option too, Counselor. Saren is formidable enough without an army of Krogan serving under him. No, don't tell me I can't hang up on them this time. Sovereign's the real problem. I guess we have to engage the these three clowns at least Krogan. a little bit. We're next. Yes, we saw mention of this on your report. Sovereign, Ascension Machine. A true artificial intelligence, this news is quite alarming. If it turns out to be accurate. Oh my fucking god. Why didn't anyone record the conversation we had with Sovereign? What the hell are the Omni tools for? The single most unrealistic thing about Mass Effect is that we have computers built into our arms and no body besides Tally uses them to record things. It's highly possible Saren is using false information to throw you off. With balance. utmost disrespect, Our counselor, it's highly possible you're a dumbass. Get him out oh. of here! Looks like we lost the signal, Joker. Understood, Commander. Why don't I make some runs around the ship before we close out for the day? Sounds good to me. You can talk to the squad and we'll begin the finale by going straight to the Citadel to get the final mission started. Commander. Kind of messed up of us to ignore Joker outside of the down initial down conversation the call between at and the Williams start of the game. Does he even say anything? I'm he so has a one-liner after every main story mission, no but it's not really all that important. The mission is more important. We'll stop by Joker soldier. more often oh, in Mass Effect that, 2 and 3, as there are some developments there hard, worth yeah. seeing. Saren's still out there, Joker. Hold it together. We need you. Don't worry, I won't let you down. I want to be there when you make that son of a bitch pay. Trust me, Joker, you're going to have a front row seat to what happens to Saren and Sovereign. Anything you need, Commander? I wanted to see how you're dealing with Ash's death. Dealing, sir. Sorry for anything I said back there. Adrenaline. Perhaps you two could also apologize like to each other. I meant everything I attempted I've to do and every word that left my mouth. It's a good thing you cut away when you did because this video would have broken terms of service with the vitriol Donald was spewing. I didn't stop and agonize over it while everyone else was in danger. We've got work to do, Alenko. We'll remember her later. You're right. I can't let this get to me. Not now, anyway. Thanks for the advice, sir. It was an honor working with you, Commander Shepard. How exactly did the Solarians make it onto the My Normandy when Ashley didn't? Sure, he was confident they could outrun the nuclear the explosion we set off. Maybe of Solarians can tap into the speed force. I just choose to headcanon that any of my whoever is with the Solarians sacrificed themselves so they could run and catch up with the Normandy. Commander. Things got heated back on Vermeer. Actually, Rex, the argument we had wasn't that crazy. Respect your choice. We kind of settled things amicably. Did, right? Oh, shit. I just realized we had a lot of good equipment on Ash that has gone just for good. Sure oh, great. So we lost good. Ash and everything she had on her. I don't think it's that Sarah big a deal. No one else on the squad could have used her armor. No matter what it takes, I'm gonna hunt I think she had a decent him. assault rifle, though. I like the sound of that. So long, Rex. Well, we're at the end of the line for this episode, and next time we'll finish Mass Effect 1. It's looking kind of empty over here. Why don't I just leave Shepard standing here, staring at the space that inhabited the love of their life? Don't ever let Joe try to convince you he's the paragon one of the trio. This dude is as evil as I am, but at least I'm upfront about it. With all arguments put to rest and a deal broken, we'll join you next time for the end of Mass Effect 1. Until then, stay safe out there, drink plenty of water, get some sleep, and we'll see you on the next one. How long are we gonna stand here, Donald? For as long as it takes for you to feel guilty for your actions. We don't got time for all that, brother. Uh, fine, all right, loyal viewers. We're here with the finale to Mass Effect 1. 
On my left, I got Barack, and on my right is a dirty wife killer. Come on, Donald, you know that was good for the content. I was honestly at the edge of my seat watching things unfold. Yeah, it must be real nice to be on the sidelines when you have nothing to lose, Barack. I'll remember this when you want to romance Miranda. We're definitely romancing Jack anyway. Oh, hell no. Gentlemen, we'll get to that plot point when it's time. Right now, we have the finale to this Mass Effect Forwarded game to get to through. Citadel, Commander. We got confirmation on those reinforcements. Ambassador Udino wants us to report back to the Citadel. The Council's massing a joint species fleet to deal with Saren and his geth. Sounds too good to be true. It always Just is. The Council not about to do shit. the Citadel, Joker. I want the Normandy at the head of that fleet. Yes, sir. Good job, Shepard. Thanks to you, the Council's finally taking real action against Seren. Wow, what a rare occurrence. Udina is actually he praising us for something. Don't get used to it. It'll be short-lived as he prepares to completely f*** us over. Just one reminder as to why Udina absolutely doesn't deserve to be a counselor. I'd argue that being such a snake is the exact reason Udina should be a counselor. Bro's gonna fit right in with all these reptiles. Anderson is too good-hearted to be among these demons. Ilos is only accessible to the Mule Relay, deep inside the Terminus Systems, Commander. If we send a fleet in These pussyfoot the motherfuckers have the Turian and human fleets at their disposal, the and they're afraid of getting Zellin's into a little scuffle with the Terminus systems? What the hell do they no even have over there? Some blue over. suns? Eclipse? I don't know, man. Arya's empire of mercenaries isn't to be messed with. Terminus systems won't start a war. I can be discreet. You detonated a nuclear device on Vermeer. I wouldn't call that discreet. Spare it us, you f***ing raptor. The Turians dropped orbital debris on Shanxi and leveled city blocks. Don't come at Barden Joe Shepard about being discreet. I'm surprised to hear you say that, Barry. I was going to jump down the bird's throat first, but I guess Barack hates them more than I do. I don't hate Turians. I have no beef with the race, despite their unprovoked attack on the Alliance. I do dislike Sparatus, however. I don't know. Sovereign's the real threat. At least the so Turian is up front and honest with his dislike for us. You have seen the Tavos is over there feigning civility when she absolutely has no respect for Shepard or humanity. Better than the Salarian who kind of just exists. Bro doesn't even really do anything in Mass Effect 3. We're all screwed. We have to go to Ilos. Real long pause here. It's like listening to one of Joe's speeches. You always got something smart to say. Yeah, any sympathy you earn by pretending to be well-meaning but incompetent flew out the window the moment you betrayed me. I'm coming after you every chance I can get now. Joe, you know as well as I do that Donald never lets a grudge go. We're in for the long haul with this one. Speaking of never letting a grudge go, Udina, my boy, you got about two years and six months. Ah, the timeline is closer to three years, Donald. There's a decent time skip between the end of Mass Effect and Shepard's revival in two. You goddamn nerd. Fine, Udina, my boy. You got about three years. And then you're going to get what you deserve for, for this betrayal. It really be your own it's people no stabbing you in the back. You. The council can handle this with my help, of course. Man, look at this. We should be getting a little moment with Ashley right now, but instead we're just sitting here alone Commander, like some lonely kid Captain at Anderson. school. I'm sure Ashley is looking down on us with a smile on her face. She should be looking directly at us with a smile on her face instead. You got to let go, Donald. What did he want? Only said to meet him in that club in the wards. Flux. Oh, look, it's the terra firma protesters. I don't particularly care that Ashley is dead, but it is a shame we aren't going to get to see her calling out the terra firma party for their bullshit. What do you mean bullshit? Terra firma has a solid platform. Humanity first, America first. Oh, no, Donald. I understand why you might vibe with Saraceno here, but terra firma ain't the real deal. You know, I always forget to bring Ashley along for this conversation. What does she say? She'll jump down Saraceno's throat for talking about Shanxi as if he was there. Ashley will also call out Terra Firma for being full of racists. Terra Firma is right. The first contact war was an unjust attack on humanity. Be that as it may, Terra Firma isn't any good, and Ashley would agree with me here. No one else will. Uh, I thought the how exactly is Ashley's rhetoric from the beginning of the game any different from what Saraceno is spouting right now? Perhaps oh God, here we go. But it's a valid question, Donald. There's a clear distinction between Ashley's general mistrust of aliens and the extreme views of terra firma. Their platform goes well beyond humanity being independent. They want us totally isolated from the galactic community. Ashley also doesn't plan on going around looking for conflict with aliens. She might not like that Garrus and Rex are on the Normandy at first, but she's willing to work with them all the same. Ashley is just a little quirky at the beginning. She would have gotten past it if we just let her. Sorry, I mean if you had just let her, Joe. Besides, Terra Firma is caught up in ties with Cerberus, which we know Ashley damn well wouldn't approve of. Our core value is that Earth must stand firm against alien influences. Politically, he does know he's speaking to a council specter right now, case. right? Yeah, a bit late on Earth standing firm against alien influence. 
Earth's so finest marine is literally under the council's payroll. Excuse me, I don't believe you. Hey, whoa now, little bro. Don't talk to Liara like that. You and I might see eye to eye on a few things, Charlie, but that's my squad right there. We live in this galaxy, Mr. Saraceno. We can't pretend that what we do affects no one else. No, of course not. My apologies. I Damn, bro folded the first time he felt some pressure. Saraceno is probably a poor debater. The only reason he's head of the party is because Cerberus killed his rival, Claude Minot, who had him beat by three points. I'm a uh, Donald, what the fuck are you doing? He's Without Ashley vote. keeping me grounded, I have nothing to lose. It to hell with the aliens. Look at what you did, Joe. Donald we has nothing left to lose now. Hey, if you wanted me to save you. Ashley, you should have since stepped in, Barack. Well, since Donald endorsed Saraceno here, we'll hear a news report in Mass Effect 2 about terra firma gaining seats in Alliance Parliament. Just another casual W for me. I do not vibe with this at all. Funnily enough, if you don't endorse Saraceno, we'll hear about him pleading guilty to the crime of tax evasion. Citing with Saraceno is completely unhinged, Donald. Yeah, well, buckle up, because it's far from the only unhinged thing I'm going to do today. You only have yourself to blame for this one, Joe, without Ashley. I just have nothing. You broke him, Joe. Oh, please. He's going to forget all about Ashley when Samara shows up in Mass Effect 2. Did someone say Samami? Yes, how can I help? Okay, never mind. This cutscene decided to cut in. Ah, we have two little Citadel assignments here. This one with the Solarian is Shells the Gambler, which is unlocked if you do read his quest line. The guy who got cut off earlier gives us the assignment called Negotiator's Request. Seems odd to throw in a random assignment when we're kind of racing against time here. Well, it's not like you have to do them. Yeah, we're not strapped for time. I'll talk to the Solarian first. Well, if anyone cares to know, this quest, like many other Citadel quests, bears a resemblance to a cut subplot called Citadel. Cheaters never prosper. But you were Shells, the Solarian here, would have been played by someone named Beck. The character Beck would have also been involved in another cut subplot called Citadel, Oculon Syndicate, wherein Commander Shepard would have taken a deep dive into the Citadel's criminal network. Put simply, Shepard would involve themselves with the Syndicate, working against it or for it. But either way, it would be destroyed. Familiar faces like Harkin and Fist would be involved, and Beck would be someone who gives us some jobs. What is up with all the cut content in Mass Effect 1? Some of it actually sounds pretty damn good, too. Mass Effect was a pretty ambitious game for BioWare back in the day. They spent a lot of time working on new technology, a new engine, new dialogue, and combat. The developers were forced to make a lot of compromises. Well, I'm glad the game is so good in spite of all that was lost. Better than I can say for Andromeda. Andromeda isn't that bad. Honestly, my tune on it is changing a little. Bro's been hanging out with Hillary a bit too much. Soldier, I've got a major situation, and I need help from somebody with humanity's interests at heart. Uh, why does this guy give me tweak vibes? Commander, good call, Joe. Elias is on stimulants. Oh, now I remember this guy. He wants us to help him get his fix. Is there anything to know about this, Barack? What am I, a search engine? You might as well be. You just went into a whole yap session about two entire cut subplots to the game. Well, there is no cut content about Keeler. But depending on how you act here will determine his success during negotiations with the Solarians. If you give him the stimulant, he'll bring billions of credits to the Alliance using unreasonable requests and hardline tactics. If you give him what the depressant, exactly? his assistant will oh, negotiate instead, terms, which will give us a more fair compromise with the Solarians. Sort of what thing? the hell is the lesson supposed to be here? Do drugs and you'll get billions in additional revenue? Joe, you literally have to get you hopped up on a concoction of stimulants to stay focused in these videos. Be I'd be willing to bet Joe would have three times the deaths if we let him play the game natural. Cope, you guys just don't want to accept I'm better than you thought. Yeah, I'd die less too if I was taking Adderall. Is your assistant incompetent or just inexperienced? worse. He's an alien sympathizer. This guy should go join up with Terra Firma. I'm sure they'd get along. Maybe a hot take, but the guy who doesn't need stims to negotiate effectively is probably the better guy for the job. Interesting you should say that sleepy Joe. Yeah, yeah, f*** you. Getting you your drug fix is not going to help him out, Donald? Yeah, I'm not interested. Let's just go talk to Anderson. I'm glad you came, Shepard. I heard what happened. Yeah, Anderson, it's crazy how we bend over backwards I know, I'm sorry. for the council this entire game just for them to turn around and ground us. To be totally fair, I'm thinking they aren't too appreciative of us hanging up on them in every conversation. They all think this is over, but we both know it's not. Not that I have a problem with it, but Anderson really has complete faith in everything Shepard says without question. I think at this point in the story, Anderson has his doubts about the Reapers, but he definitely knows Saren is up to no good. We can get them to bring the Normandy back online. 
Stealing the Normandy shouldn't be that big a deal. The flight lieutenant proved himself worthy of flying it by taking the ship out for a joyride. Anderson says himself that he wouldn't trust the Normandy with anyone other than Joker. Seems stealing the ship is a prerequisite for him. Hear that, kids? Want your dad to give you his Hellcat when you turn 16? Just take it out for a spin without him knowing? What's the plan? I can unlock the Normandy. Does anyone ever send Anderson to the Citadel Control Center? No, that is legitimately the wrong decision. If you send Anderson to Citadel Control, he'll headbutt one CSEC officer, and then while he's unlocking the Normandy, he'll be shot in the leg and arrested. Pretty boring. And you get Anderson hurt in the process. Now sending him to Udina's office, that's the right decision, no debate. It's one of few canon events in every Mass Effect playthrough. He won't just stand by while you use his computer. Tally, sweetheart, Udina ain't gonna have much of a choice. Anderson said hopefully he won't be there, but deep inside he's praying that Udina is in his office. treason, a capital offense. Aren't we all about we to be charged with treason anyway? Yes, but there's some cut content at the end of the game where Anderson tells us all the charges against him, Shepard and the Normandy crew are dropped. I should hope so, considering we literally saved them, well, some of them from annihilation. You'll have a better chance if you go after the Ambassador's computer. I was hoping you'd say that. The Ambassador has made this Ha! See, Anderson does want to go after Udina. I can't blame him. Udina has been a pain in the ass the entire game. I'll take care of the lockdown. You get down to the Normandy and tell Joker to stand by. Oh boy, I'm gonna enjoy this. Anderson? Bro's moving with absolute purpose right now. I didn't send him. Udina has absolutely no goddamn survival instincts at all. How do you see a six foot three big angry looking motherfucker pull up on you like that and not stand up ready to defend yourself? I'm not gonna lie to you, Barack. Udina could have gotten up and he still would have gotten one now. punched. Anderson is a fully trained Marine. Also funny story about the scene where Anderson clocks Udina. Well, maybe not so funny if you're Udina's actor. Apparently during the motion capture session, the cinematic lead who was suited up as Anderson accidentally did knock Udina's actor in the jaw for real. He was understandably not all too pleased about it. I guess stunt doubles were outside of the budget. I'm pretty sure the crew will have a thing or two to say about us stealing the Normandy. Oh, damn it, no sign of pursuit. A high-speed chase is the last thing we need right now. They wouldn't even be able to keep up. Plus, the Normandy's stealth drive would make it difficult to pick up. Saren's still out there. Maybe we'll get a chance to play hide-and-seek with Sovereign. Sovereign wishes all we were going to do to it was play a game of hide-and-seek. So you need something? I have to go. All right, see ya. Can't believe we stole the Normandy. Damn, even Presley has a take on the situation. Who would have guessed the bald guy had a taste for danger? Little fun fact about Presley, he was among the reinforcements for Elysium. During the war hero origin story, he'll reminisce about Shepard's achievements during the Blitz. A little late for that one, Barry. Oh well, this mission is about as relevant as Presley is going to be until he meets his untimely end. It's strange. Chakwes didn't say or do much in Mass Effect 1, but it's nice of her to ride or die with us here. There was originally a little scene with Chakwes, Jenkins, and Caden at the beginning of Mass Effect. Jenkins would want a demonstration of Caden's biotics, and Caden would oblige despite his headache. This will all be over soon. Okay, I guess Liara doesn't have anything to say since we rejected her. Doesn't Chakwes tell a story about that happening in Mass Effect 2? Or am I making that up? It'll come up when you have a drink with her. In that version, Jenkins seems to enjoy being knocked on his ass by Caden. But in the original situation, Jenkins is a lot less enthusiastic. Well, that's what he gets for pestering Caden about his biotics. Hey, whoa now. Don't talk about our Lord and Savior Richard Leroy Jenkins like that. Shepard does do a lot of living in just the events of Mass Effect 1. We fight off the first Geth invasion in 300 years, expose a corrupt specter, Fight a Krogan Battlemaster in an active volcano, kill a millennia old giant plant, fight a bunch of extinct bugs, and then we set off a nuke. Suddenly, the events of Mass Effect 2 pale in comparison to what Shepard has to do here. I, for one, am looking forward to helping Miranda, Tally, Samara, and Thane deal with their familial problems. What about Jacob? What about him? Good point. But I'm right behind you, Shepard. It's the least I can do. I think now is a good time to set the stakes for things here. If you've been keeping track, I am currently sitting at three deaths in the game so uh, far. Commander. Donald is also sitting pretty at three deaths, while Joe has five. If Donald dies twice, he and Joe will be tied up. 
if he dies three times, well, we'll have a new president who's worse at mass effect. Yeah, going to tell you right now I'm not dying at all. Damn sure not matching with Joe. You might want to save all that hot air for when the shooting actually starts, Don. How convenient of them to not have Garris and Rex here. Just makes it easier since you can technically not have either of them at this point. Drop us in the Mako. You need at least 100 meters of open terrain to pull off a drop like that. The, the one time we actually need a runway for the Mako and the planet we're landing on doesn't have one. It just drop us on foot. That would go poorly. Even if you could walk the entire duration of the Mako section of ILOS, you can't take the conduit on foot. You'll just die immediately. suicide run. We don't... I can do it. Atta boy, Joker. The kid can't Joker. dance without shattering his legs, but best believe he can fly a ship better than anyone else. Joker, drop us right on top of that bastard. In the OG Mass Effect, you'd see that damn black blob effect on the characters if you had a new AMD CPU. Once again, Intel clears. Incoming! You two, keep moving inside now. Amazon delivery. Damn, just a couple seconds sooner, and we could have landed the Mako right on top of Saren and ended things immediately. That would have been gold, and Saren gets crushed into a blue paste, and we roll credits. We have to get inside this bunker before Saren finds the conduit. Is there a particular reason There's we can't, no you know, blast through the door? door? Joe, these are the ancient ruins of the Protheans, and Liara would lose her mind if we just shot the place up. We're about to shoot the place up regardless with all the Geth Saren left behind. All right, Donald, let's see how you get through things. Good luck. I don't need luck. I have ammo. It's a damn shame we didn't bring Liara to this mission. She'd be fangirling over all these ruins. When we get to Vigil, Liara would have wanted to spend more time talking to it about the Protheans, but its programming is limited. Not that it matters, considering we're literally racing against Saren to prevent the extinction of the galaxy. Not exactly a good time to pick up on some Prothean trivia. Couple of facts about Ilos. It was once sought out by the Quarians as a potential settlement after their exodus from Rannoch. After the events of Mass Effect Salarians will begin studying the ruins, the Batarian government will also want in on some of the relics. The last thing we need is the Batarians getting Prothean ruins. Oh, hell no. The Geth Armature Siege Pulse Cannon is not to be underestimated. What was it you said earlier, Donald? I'm not dying at all? No, no, absolutely the f not. I will not let you of all people have fewer deaths than me, Joe. You don't deserve a happy ending after what you did to Ashley. Right now, the only one here having a happy ending is me. Obama stocks are through the roof. Well, what are you going to do about it, Donald? You got the entire fight here on ILOS to go. And then you have Battle of the Citadel, plus the fight with Saren. I'm going to stop playing around throwing for content and lock in. Throwing for content, he says. I'm sure the two deaths during the Neveria mission were you throwing. Totally believable. OK, but real talk for a second here. Barrier is low-key kind of dog shit as a defensive power. It's less Barrier being bad and more Sentinel being an absolutely squishy class. The increased shielding just isn't enough. I cannot f***ing believe I had to play this dog sh class all for Joe to go back on what we agreed upon. If it makes you feel better, Sentinel becomes the tankiest class in Mass Effect 2. It won't matter because we're switching to Vanguard next game. Whoa, I didn't agree to that. Your opinion ain't worth a damn to me anymore, Joe. Okay, well I am the one who's starting us off on Mass Effect 2. And I prefer to have Bard and Joe Shepard keep a uniformed class throughout the trilogy. But Sentinel is so mid and Vanguard is so fun. Um, I really don't want to play Vanguard. Bro is scared because he knows the second he has to actually charge and fight like a man, his deaths are going to start ballooning. Vanguard isn't even good in Mass Effect 2. Half the damn game, you can't charge anything because of the way the arenas are built. Sounds like a skill issue to me. OK, Donald, let's you and I set up our own little deal here. Why should I trust you? You and Joe are cut from the same cloth. Listen, dog, I got no beef with you, and you got no beef with me. So here's what we're going to do. I pick Sentinel in Mass Effect 2, and we go Vanguard in Mass Effect 3. You both seem to be forgetting there's a third party here who might be the one deciding our class by the time we get to 3. Joe, if you have the fewest deaths at the end of Mass Effect 2, then you will be allowed to decide our class in 3. Whoa, hold on now, Barack. Donald, relax. That's never going to happen. Mass Effect 2 is literally the hardest in the trilogy Joe is going to get torn apart especially if he plays any of the Collector missions. Oh, you're right. So true, Barack. You know I can hear you, right? Well, are you going to tell me otherwise, Joe? Why don't you take the deal and try to prove me wrong? Fine, you're on. I do not trust that slimy-ass snake to stay true to his word. Don't worry, Donald. Joe might betray you, but he wouldn't dare do the same to me. 
Ain't that right? Uh, yep, you know it, Barry. Damn, I didn't know that was the power dynamic between the two of you. So, boys, we're all in agreement? A deal between three gentlemen? Yes, I guess so. Brock, you could have saved us a lot of trouble if you had just negotiated like this during the whole Liara and Ashley debate. Yeah, uh, I was kind of interested to see how that would turn out. To be honest, I didn't think Joe would really go all the way like that. Didn't think he had the balls. You got a lot of heavy hitters coming up next, Donald. A Geth Prime and we're on foot? There's absolutely no way you're clearing this without one death. Who the hell do you think you're talking to? I'll slaughter all these damn bots in the name of Ashley Williams and the 212. This is for Eden Prime. Donald got a mental amp. Bro is a whole anime character. Thanks for the advice, Tally. Are you not even going to activate the Geth armatures, Donald? We have the decryption for it. I don't need those. All I need is my shotgun, my squad, and my energy. OK, apparently Geth Prime's ancient. Uh, Joe, you might want to start sweating. Donald is legitimately cooking. Nah, no fucking way does he manage the entire rest of this video without dying. Well, that's about all the combat left here in Ilos, so he's clear for now. Good fucking job, Donald. Light work, negative reaction. Mass Effect 1 isn't shit. You're the worst of the three of us, Joe. Yeah, yeah, keep talking. It'll be all the funnier when you inevitably screw up. Come on. I have a distinct memory of struggling to find this stupid-ass console because I never noticed the walkway. Get your eyes checked, bucko. To be fair, everything kind of blends in here. That's a chance we'll have to take. Hold on. Something's happening. Too late. Unable to... Invading fleets. That can't be a Prothean. He doesn't sound like a Nigerian prince trying to get another $100 from me. Uh, did you just say another $100 from you? Bro fell for one of the oldest tricks in the book. Well, the Protheans were a galaxy-spanning empire, and they encompassed many different races. The person we're hearing here might have a different accent. They may not even be of the same species as Javik. Just one of the subservient races. I do kind of wonder what the Prothean language sounds like. Do we know what any of the aliens sound like in their native tongue? In Mass Effect. Basically, everyone uses real-time translation software in their Omni-tools, or even implanted in their clothing or jewelry. It seems like everyone is communicating in the same language, but in reality, everyone is using their mother tongue. Too bad it would have been cool if Mass Effect had multiple fully fleshed out languages for the alien species. Well, some of the aliens don't have any need for a language as we know it. Hanar, for example, communicate via bioluminescence. Elcor mostly communicate through scent, slight hunt, body movements, and barely audible now. infrasound. We should go. So the real-time translation is a necessity in some cases. Communicating through scent sounds like a goddamn nightmare. Imagine two Elcor meeting up one day and one of them smells like absolute filth. If this were simply an automated trap... This moment right here is probably my favorite moment in the entire trilogy. Speaking to Vigil is absolute peak. Right up there with speaking to Sovereign for the first time. Hey, you want to know what would be a great idea? If one of us opened up our goddamn Omni-tools and started recording the Prothean VI with crucial information that we might want to relay to the appropriate authority figures. Nope. Apparently that common sense decision is simply beyond us. Anderson will tell us in you Mass Effect 2 that Vigil is no longer operational, so all of Shepard's claims are unverifiable. Was one of Which is annoying as hell, because even in the year 2024, we're pulling out our phones to record the most mundane bullshit imaginable. Looks like some kind of VI program. Pretty badly damaged. I do not sense the taint of indoctrination upon any of you. Wait, wait, Unlike wait, hold the fucking phone. What now, Sleepy Joe? Vigil Perhaps noticed Saren passing by earlier and demonstrated the ability to put How up a barrier curtain that trapped us so we could come talk to it. Yes, that is correct. Why didn't Vigil trap Saren and his geth within the barrier curtain and keep him there until we showed up? No way are you only this coherent when you're trying to point out flaws in writing. Well, Vigil's energy sources are basically on life support at the moment. But the barrier like curtain and this conversation so we're having with it will be safe. are probably about the last of its resources. Are you some kind of it might not have been able to keep Saren trapped long enough. Plus, it would be pretty bad if Saren found Vigil himself and destroyed it. We'd have no clue what the Reaper cycle is. Uh -huh, likely story. Let's be honest, plot-induced stupidity is a common trope in these games for the sake of keeping tension in the story. Joe, you said that talking with Vigil was up there with talking to Sovereign, and I believe that's deliberate. Where Sovereign 
instills us with fear, Vigil gives us the hope. Is the heart of your Sovereign refuses to give answers to our power. questions, instead just as grandstanding us, about being superior to us. While Vigil answers all our questions to the best of its ability, he empowers us to save the galaxy. Okay, I know I tried to take a jab at the writing, but that's actually pretty deep. Is this what they were trying to teach us in English class when they ask us why something is a certain color? Yes and no. The whole, the curtains are blue thing is a critique about people finding subtext in areas the author likely never intended. Will be destroyed. Now it's entirely possible that I'm wrong about Vigil paralleling Sovereign, but the dots are definitely there for you to connect. The careful to keep the greatest secrets of the Citadel hidden. That is why they created a species of seemingly benign organic caretakers. Come to think of it, why haven't we exterminated the keepers, the keepers when we know the they're slaves of the Reapers? Functions. The Prothean sabotage made the keepers all but useless the citadel, to the Reapers. To use it and since they still maintain the upkeep of the Citadel, it's probably for the best we leave them be. Don't the keepers also maintain a permanent population or something? They really are bugs. You kill one and another one shows up to replace it. the Reapers invade. How do the Reapers survive out in dark space? We have only theories. The researchers here came to believe the Reapers enter prolonged states of inactivity to conserve energy. I've always wondered if the Reapers this noticed the Andromeda Initiative the leaving the Milky Way. If those bastards noticed and didn't stop them, then I have even more reason to destroy the Reapers. State, they, they could have saved us from Andromeda. The Andromeda they Initiative set off the towards the end of 2185, no one which is the year Mass Effect 2 takes place in. The Reapers were probably flying in from dark space at the same time as the Nexus, and the first wave of Arcs were heading out. They might have missed each other, or the Reapers just ignored it. Kind of makes me wonder if any other cycle had the idea of just leaving the Milky Way. It's worth remembering that the only reason we had time to plan the Andromeda Initiative is because the Protheans delayed the Reaper invasion. Right. Sovereign had already tried to have the Keepers activate the Citadel Relay, but it failed. Crazy to think how Mass Effect one's events could have had us in the middle of the invasion itself. If that had happened, we'd be totally cooked. The Citadel would have fallen immediately, and every council world in the Terminus systems would fall next. I'd like to imagine Commander Shepard would have gotten the job done anyway. It's a comforting thought, but not even Shepard would have been able to save the day. The galaxy would be unprepared, and worse, it would be ununified. Hell, we could barely get the council to help us deal with Saren. Just goes to show how impressive the Protheans were. They got ganked, but still managed to fight for what seemed like centuries, coming up with at least two separate backup plans in the form of the Protheans on Ilos and Javik, who is still taking a little nap on Eden Prime. These indoctrinated servants became sleeper agents under Reaper control. It really be your own people that do you the worst. This seems like foreshadowing for Cerberus's inevitable betrayal. Within a few centuries, the Reapers had killed or enslaved every Prothean in the galaxy. They were relentless, brutal and absolutely thorough. Not thorough enough, it seems, considering we're speaking to you, Vigil. Where did the Reapers go after they conquered your people? Our worlds were stripped bare, harvested by the indoctrinated slaves. Everything of value, all resources, all technology was taken. Well, that can't be entirely true, Certain considering we discover multiple Prothean ruins and artifacts on numerous planets. Back through the Mass Citadel Effect is literally predicated on us coming across a Prothean them. beacon. All evidence of the Reaper invasion had been wiped away. Only their indoctrinated slaves were left behind, abandoned. Mindless husks, no longer capable okay, of... Okay, now this kind of hints at the existence of the Collectors. At least it's clearly where Bioware got their inspiration. The genocide of the it wouldn't have made much sense for the Reapers to let their agents go to waste. What do the Reapers Just like the Keepers, the Collectors proved to be useful tools. This pattern of genocide over and over? The Reapers are alien. Unknowable. Perhaps they need slaves or resources. More likely they are driven by motives and goals organic beings cannot hope to comprehend. Ironically, the Reapers were created with a mandate to preserve organic life by an organic species. Big fuck you to the Leviathans. They better keep their asses in that ocean. The Leviathans are the only species more deserving of hate than the Batarians. Tell me what I need to do. The conduit is the key. Before the Reapers attack, we Protheans were on the cusp of unlocking the mysteries behind mass relay technology. Ilos was a top secret facility. Here, researchers worked to create a small scale version of a mass relay. The Protheans must be the most advanced cycle the since the Leviathans, the considering the they made network. their own relay. 
makes me wonder if the reapers were a little late to harvesting the Prothean cycle, or if the Protheans just had an insanely quick evolution. Pretty sure the catalyst didn't intend for anyone to get so close to mimicking its technology. It just goes to show it doesn't matter how many eons old a bot is, the indomitable spirit of organics will always find a way. And our facility went dark. The personnel retreated underground into these archives. There's a ton of Prothean DNA here that we could use for cloning. If Okir and Saren can breed an army of Krogan, I don't see why we can't breed an army of Protheans. Now that would make for an interesting alternate universe to the Mass Effect franchise. Instead of looking for the catalyst, we create a horde of Protheans. Decades, centuries, the Reapers persisted, and my energy reserves were dwindling. Seems odd considering that every Prothean beacon we've found has seemingly had plenty of power to relay any amount of information it needs. First support staff, then security. One by one, their pods were shut down to conserve energy. Well, probably better to die peacefully in cryogenic sleep than to get harvested or vaporized by a reaper. Even these were in danger of failing when the reapers finally retreated back through the Citadel relay. There were hundreds of stasis pods out there. You just shut them down and you killed them? Sometimes you do what you gotta do. You couldn't let everyone die. Better to sacrifice some so others could live. This outcome was not completely unforeseen. My actions were a result of contingency programming entered on my creation. I bet they didn't tell the non-essential staff about this. At least they're being honest and saying that some of the staff is non-essential instead of pretending they are and treating them like shit anyway. still alive. My actions are the only reason any hope remains. When the researchers woke, they realized the Prothean species was doomed. There were only a dozen individuals left, far too few to sustain a viable population. That sounds like quitter talk Yet they to vowed to find some way to stop the Reapers There's no information from on how Protheans a way to break but the only cycle 12 forever. Individuals? And they knew the Even assuming they're the equally male and female, they would have been beyond inbred. Aren't they under the so what? Of the they develop a the weird jawline and their skin the turns a random shade of blue. Before At least the species will survive. The At that point, I would just give up to the be keepers honest. to activate the Citadel relay. After decades of feverish study, the scientists discovered a way to alter this signal. Using the conduit, they gained access to the Citadel and made the modifications. This time, when Sovereign sent the signal to the Citadel, the Keepers ignored it. The Reapers are trapped in darkness. No wonder Sovereign sounds so damn upset when we speak to it. It's probably pissed it couldn't do the one damn job it's supposed to do. You just know Harbinger is sitting out there at the edge of the galaxy, clowning the fuck out of Sovereign. Bro's supposed to be the vanguard of our destruction, and he couldn't do one damn thing right. Now the rest of the Reapers have to fly back into the Milky Way all slow. And the cycle of extinction will begin again. I'll take Sovereign down, somehow. There's a data file in my console. Take a copy when you go. Vigil, do you perhaps when have you a data file that contains a recording of this discussion? The station. We really need to be able to convince three program. dumbasses that everything you've said is true. Now that would station. be too easy, Joe. It might give you a chance against Sovereign. It would really be a shame if this conversation Wait. with Vigil took too Where's long and Sovereign mess? activated the relay in the I middle of it. Well, at least we'd probably be safe here on Ilos for a little Sarah. while. He will lead you to your destination. What happened to the survivors from the Conduit Project? They used the Conduit to gain access to the Citadel. But the Conduit is only a prototype. The portal only links in one direction, so they were trapped on the station. I do not know what became of them. I then. wonder what happened to their bodies. No one comes across the bones or fossils or Protheans on the, on the Citadel. The I Keepers keep things neat and orderly. They probably dead. disposed of whatever remained of the Prothean scientists. It would have been real nice of them to leave some the kind of message for the Asari when they found the Citadel. Well, knowing how the Asari completely bungled the advantages the Protheans already Sarah left them, that message Grab wouldn't that have done us any favors. The one you call Saren has not reached the conduit. Not yet. There is still hope if you hurry. There, the conduit. It's incredible. How the hell did a few dozen Protheans make a whole mass yeah, relay that big? Space magic, I guess. Yeah, it's a good thing easy. Saren didn't leave some kind of bomb behind him to destroy the relay. That would have been bad. Really bad, actually.
Not only would it keep us from following him if the conduit is anything like the other relays, its destruction would wipe out this entire star system. Well, the council can't say we didn't try to warn them. They probably should have been closer to the mass relay so they could blast immediately upon entry. Yeah, uh, the Citadel fleet was definitely not prepared for this at all. Doesn't feel like the council really heeded Shepard's warning. So much for the Turians having the greatest fleet in the galaxy. Well, time for the Destiny Ascension to prove itself. That ship better not be all big for no reason. Little fun fact here. Matriarch Lidanya, who is the commander of the Ascension, is supposed to be the darker colored Asari. Their models are wrong here and will swap back to the correct ones when Shepard makes their council decision. Citadel Control, do you copy? Citadel Control is a little preoccupied at the moment. I really feel like we're screwed here. Not yet, we got 40 seconds to get our asses through the conduit. Hold on a second. Wasn't Saren on foot when he entered the bunker? How did he take the conduit? Huh, good question, Joe, I'm not sure. It's kind of a miracle that the Mako itself can withstand jumping through a mass relay. We're lucky it didn't just blow up during the jump. The Mako might handle like a drunk rhino, but you can count on its durability, unlike the M44 Hammerhead. If we'd been on that, we'd have been vaporized by just the Geth Colossi. Good to see all hell breaking loose here on the Presidium. Gotta admit, pretty neat idea to have what originally appears to be a statue be the key to saving the galaxy. They low-key give it away if you speak to Caden on the Presidium. He'll comment on a low hum that's coming from the Relay Monument but I wouldn't blame you if you either missed it or just ignored it. Well, no wonder I didn't get it the first time. That requires me to actually speak to Caden and care about what he says. Maybe you'll grow to appreciate Caden as a character now that he's here and Ashley isn't, Donald. Never gonna happen. I'll never be able to look at Caden without knowing that Ashley should be standing in his place and that it's all your fault she isn't, Joe. Get over it, you big baby. Bro, what did the Keepers do? They didn't do the one thing they're supposed to do and open the Citadel Relay. Of course, Saren and Sovereign, by extension, are pissed off. Kind of feels like we're too late if Saren is already at the controls. Just be glad whatever Saren and Sovereign need to the do to open the Relay they're isn't instant. The Goddamn Sovereign is Don't massive. The they call them Sovereign-class the Reapers for a reason. Bro is a whole unit of measurement. Does he think pointing is going to make Sovereign stop? Yeah, uh, definitely don't move out the way. Totally sit there while the massive two kilometer long space Leviathan charges at you at near the speed of light. The Citadel fleet gets utterly eviscerated in this battle. The Turians lose 20 cruisers, each with a crew of 300 people, even if you do choose to save the council. I wonder what's going on with the people down on the Ward Arms. Were they seeing all that mayhem before the Citadel closed up? Are people down there shitting themselves seeing Sovereign? According to Avena, most of the damage being done is on the Presidium. A lot of civilians are dead, but it doesn't look like people in the Ward suffered too much. Though Korra's Den will be shut down permanently. No, not Korra's Den. It'll be replaced with the Dark Star Lounge in Mass Effect 2. Less raunchy of a place, but a club all the same. Okay, again, we're really lucky. Whatever Sovereign needs to do doesn't happen right away because it's already hooking up to the Citadel Tower. I think it would have been pretty cool if there were a timer on the Sarah's climb up the, the tower. Sounds Soon annoying as hell to me. Outside. Only because you would struggle getting up the tower. Time limit or not, this will be light work. You got a long way to go, Donald. Plenty of room for mistakes. Goddamn, the scale of this scene is immaculate. Mass Effect 2 and 3 just don't do it like this. Devious glazing coming from you, Barack. You're doing tricks on it, Barry. All right, let's see if Donald is full of shit, or will he actually pull through? Choke, 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 choke. Choke on these nuts, Sleepy Joe. Joe, you're kind of making me want to root for Donald's success, not gonna lie. God damn, that one didn't even have time to react. I love this section of the game. You're strong enough to just obliterate anything so you can run straight through. Like you're actually racing against time. High explosive ammo is great for this area. It's somewhat interesting that this should be one of the hardest sections of the game, but thanks to the low gravity, you can kind of just insta-kill anything with biotics or high weapon force. Donald, why did you start waving out of control there a few seconds ago? I don't know, I think someone sneezed or something. Well, whoever it was should get his together so he doesn't screw up the recording.
Uh, this is looking kind of bad. Yeah, for you maybe I'm popping off. Can't say I'm surprised after Donald cleared that platoon of Geth on Ilos, I was convinced he'd max out at four deaths. Not if this Geth sniper kills him. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me. Can't get fooled again. Perfect use of stasis, Donald. That's what I like to see. All of a sudden, this guy wants to use the powers instead of using the shotgun he loves so much. This area here is interesting. So long as one of those two Krogan are alive, you'll have Geth destroyers spawning. Fourteen of them can spawn in the legendary edition. Oh, sh**. We should have gotten Rex different armor. I thought he was one of the other Krogan. It's pretty funny watching the Geth just run it down mid. I do kind of miss them doing that in the later games. It was pretty damn stupid, but enjoyable. Try to box it, Donald. Yeah, no, I'm not nearly as dumb as you are. Someone on the Citadel is not going to be happy when a 700-pound Krogan lands on their house. Jesus Christ, biotics are so goddamn free in this game. Geth Prime with rockets, it's time for a death. I sidestep these in my sleep, Joe. Yeah, I'm calling it Donald isn't getting another death. I haven't seen motion from him like this since 2016. You got two options up here, Donald. You can continue forward and get through the Geth turrets. Or you can head down where you'll face off with a bunch of Krogan. In my opinion, the Krogan are the easier fight. I'm pushing through the turrets. Bold decision, buddy. Uh, Donald, you could easily make it through the Krogan with biotics. If you get tagged by these rockets, you're cooked. I hear and respect your advice, Barack, but there's something I need to get straight. A real fucking Marine pushes straight through no matter the cost. I'm not gonna take the easier route. I'm gonna get an absolute victory where the odds are stacked against me so I can leave no doubt that I'm the better player. This is what Ashley would have wanted. Well, here's hoping to your success, Donald. If there is a god, you will get absolutely demolished by these rockets. Trust me, Sleepy Joe, if there's a god, he damn well isn't on your side at the moment. Thankfully, being on a tech class does give us an advantage against the geth and turrets here. Plus, we have carnage, so we can do damage from long range. You're welcome. I was the one who set us on the sentinel path. If we were on soldier, I wouldn't even need to worry about getting hit by a rocket. I'd just sprint through and take everything out as I move. This is looking good, Donald. There's no goddamn way, bro. That death at the beginning of I Lost was a fluke. All it did was get me to clutch up. And that's how you can do it. That last rocket scared me for a second. It's over, Joe. You lose. It is not over. You have a whole boss fight to go. It's true there's still one last bit of combat to go, but I seriously doubt Donald will drop the ball there. Bring me, Saren. We're back where it all started, the Citadel Tower, the place where Shepard became a specter and exposed Saren for his treason. Seems like a lifetime ago, to be honest. It's too bad we never get to fight in this part of the Citadel ever again. It's definitely one of the best arenas, great scenery with a lot of cover. Time to finally catch this fade, Saren. This fight with Saren will play out essentially the same way it does on Vermeer. Geth troops will also spawn in over time until you defeat the big boss. Of course, we won't have to worry about fighting Saren on his hovercraft again. Just sit back and watch as we talk no jutsu him. I was afraid him. you wouldn't make it in time, Shepard. Had to wipe out a few hundred of your followers along the way. Sorry if I kept you If Saren were a real You've boss, he would have stopped Sovereign running and just fought us on Ilos. In a few minutes, Sovereign will have full control of all the Citadel systems. Good, that gives me a few Relay minutes to convince open. you to lose a game of Russian roulette. Turn. I'm heading to that master control panel, and you can't stop me. You survived our encounter on Vermeer, but I've changed. This is where Saren's appearance would change, Sovereign from looking like a normal Turian to one implanted with Reaper tech. Fancy hardware is not There's a mod you. that gives him a typical appearance earlier in the game so that this whole implanting Vermeer, plot point actually hits. About what you said, about Sovereign manipulating me, about indoctrination. And so he let himself be implanted with even more of Sovereign's technology. Funny how what happens to Saren is basically the same fate as the elusive man. Strengthen my resolve. Now my doubts are gone. I believe in Sovereign completely. Being indoctrinated is completely scary. Saren 100% believes he did the right thing by letting Sovereign implant him to remove his doubts. But all that's done is let himself be given to the Reapers in totality. Don't you see that? The relationship is symbiotic. It's about as symbiotic as a tapeworm living inside you is. A union of flesh and steel. Listen, I'm all for enhancing our bodies using technology like in cyberpunk, but without the whole mind control thing. Is indoctrination just the Mass Effect version of cyberpsychosis? Not too far off. 
Though cyber psychos don't necessarily become beholden to a greater power. They're just kind of crazy. The Reapers don't use organics. They devour and discard them. As soon as the conquest is over, you'll be cast aside. I had no choice. Uh, you could have tried telling the Council. Uh, really, Joe? No, I'm playing. Saren wouldn't have had any more success than Shepard did with the Council. You could have resisted. You could have fought. Instead, you surrendered. You I guess this leads to the question. Is extinction preferable to submission? Submission might be better, but it's not really an option when it comes to the Reapers. The only entities that submit to the Reapers and might survive are the Geth, and that's only because Sovereign finds them easier to control than organic. I'm sorry. It is too late for me. No, it's not too late at all, Saren. There's still one way to stop this. If you've got the guts. Goodbye, Shepard. Thank you. It is actually crazy that Shepard got up and told Saren, you won't take your own life, no balls. It's like when Naruto made Nagato use the Rinna rebirth technique. I mean, once one of the bros says no balls, you have no choice but to follow through. 25 renegade points for saving the day, a well worth decision. Vigil's data file well, we work. finally reached I've the big final decision of the game. Wait, it's not really much of a decision, gone. Barack. Maybe I already said what was going to happen here. He what do you mean? Let's cut to a clip. See if you well, I can't say for food. certain which one of us will be in control at the end of Mass Effect 1, but if it's me, I can tell you for certain we'll have a different set of alien counselors in Mass Effect 3. I'm a president who sticks true to his word. The OG counselors are cooked. It's not the decision I would make here, but hey, far be it from me to stop you from killing them. It's not like I like the counselors or anything. You are kind of condemning 10,000 souls aboard the Destiny Ascension to death, many of which include Asari. There's plenty more blue beauties out there in the galaxy. Besides, if we do step in and save the council, the Alliance will lose eight cruisers, totaling 2,400 people between them. I do like that the more renegade members of your squad advocate killing the council. And the more Paragon one is in favor of saving them. Believe it or not, you can create situations where people like Ashley will be in favor of saving the Council, while Caden will advocate sacrificing them. It all comes down to how you handle them and Garrus throughout the game. So Donald, you're really going to let the Council die out of spite? Sure, getting back at them for all the BS is a bonus. But the real objective here is to weaken the council races and give humanity a pathway to the top. Well, well say so long to Tevos, Valern, and Sparatus, the they will definitely not Keep be in Mass Effect 3. This software. also secures our path Let to being renegade. Die to save the galaxy. A tough decision. Easiest decision of my you life, to be honest. The, right the only reason I don't agree with this is because I would have liked to rub the oh, Reapers in their faces in Mass formation. Effect 3. Wait Gotta wonder what survivors shot. of the Battle Nothing of the Citadel had to be thinking, knowing that the Alliance Nothing appeared matters. and pretty obviously let the Council get vaporized. Realistically, I think this would start a war. No way do the Turians not spin back for this. The birds are welcome to try. They'll regret not finishing us in the first contact war. Round two won't be so pretty for them. See, look, the Asari commander and the navigator swap skin tones. You'll never be able to unsee it now. Goddamn, that was cold as hell from Joker. Bro heard her yapping and turned the comms off. Does the Destiny Ascension not have escape pods or something? It shouldn't be too late to save the Council. I'm guessing all the funding for it went to that giant ass gun on the Dreadnought. Well, there goes the Destiny Ascension. Some things to point out, the Ascension grants 70 war assets in three. Instead, we'll keep the war assets that are lost from the Alliance, 1st, 3rd, and 5th fleets. On top of that, Rear Admiral Mikhailovich will also survive the battle. Oh, f I forgot he would survive if I did this. No takebacks. Mikhailovich isn't that bad. Plus, he apparently is invaluable to the Alliance during the, the invasion. He'll be promoted to Admiral and is tasked with rebuilding and upgrading the ships. I guess we can let his disrespect of the Normandy slide. I gotta point out again how I have unreal respect for Shepard for having the biggest brain in all of fiction and sending someone down to double tap Saren to make sure he's dead dead. Is it really so hard to just cap the bad guy one extra time? Like, come on, you've seen him survive the impossible before. Get down there and finish it. He's dead. Saren might be dead, but Sovereign? Nah, the Reaper has some unfinished business. Can't blame Tally and Rex for that. They shot him in the head and he didn't move. I guess the rule should be to triple tap instead, perhaps stick a grenade down their gullet. This transformation is sick, not gonna lie. Well, time for Donald to get this last death and tie up with me. Of all the people for me to get killed by, you think I'm getting killed by Sovereign and Saren's body? 
please, you'd have been better off praying for a random get sniper to end me, and that didn't happen. It's too late, Joe. The record has been set. Barack has three deaths, I have four, and you, my friend, you have five. We'll see, buddy, the fight ain't over yet. Personally, I think Donald has this in the bag. The Saren fight isn't actually that difficult. However, some Geth will spawn in to make things a bit more challenging. This is what the synthesis ending turns you into, people. Pick destroy. Funny you should say that when Saren is glowing with the same red light as destroy. I am sovereign, and this station is mine. And I am Donald, and this W is mine. Try to sabotage me? Nah, I don't think so. I'll do it first. Why didn't either of you tell me you can cancel an enemy sabotage with your own? You're the one that picked this class, Joe. You ought to know that yourself. It is a bit sad that this is just a glorified Geth Hopper fight. Yeah, I think Donald has this Joe. He's not playing around here. The only thing difficult about this damn boss is how high his shields and health points are. It's turning this X-rated gun with high explosive ammo into a pea shooter. I think the Geth are starting to spawn in. Don't need to worry about them. The only thing that matters is killing Saren. What the fuck? He's just being ragdolled now. That was so embarrassing for Sovereign, they had to cut away to something else. Damn, that laser is no joke. I believe that one of these ships might be the SSV Hong Kong. It's the only frigate that gets taken out regardless of your decision in Mass Effect 1. It'll be melted down and reconstructed just in time to get caught up in the Reaper Negative. War during 2186. Chance. Gotta give that Joker points for expertly no navigating the, the destruction here and keeping everyone alive. He's the best pilot in the galaxy for a reason. It's super cringe that the cutscene recharges Saren's shields. No goddamn way did Rex's fat ass just eat one of my shots. It's a really good thing Mass Effect doesn't have friendly fire. Time for a little bit of airtime, Saren. It's all the floating you're gonna do before you plummet straight to hell. You're sending bro on a roller coaster. Well, sh I can't believe Donald really pulled it off. There was never any doubt I'm always gonna be better than you. Don't get so hopped up on being second place, Donald. Oh, don't worry, Barack. Now that the record with the Scarecrow over there has been set straight, I'm coming for you. That's the end of Saren, and now it's time for the vanguard of our destruction to get the hell out of here. What's the matter, Sovereign? You was popping all that good shit a second ago. What was it Sovereign said on Vermeer? You exist because we allow it, and you will end because we demand it? Well, 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 how the turns have tabled. What kind of vanguard of destruction gets destroyed itself? If I was Harbinger, I'd be f***ing needed. I left this guy in charge. This has to be an utter embarrassment for Sovereign. Left to be the vanguard in the Milky Way for 50,000 years with nothing to do but watching organics. Couldn't do the one damn thing it's supposed to do and open the Citadel relay. Had to enlist the Geth and Saren for help just for that to fail. And now it's being destroyed by the very organics it was forced to observe for millennia. What a sad and pathetic existence. Snuffed out by a guy who has glass bones and can only pull a robot for a girlfriend. I've always wondered why Shepard gets the credit for killing Sovereign when Joker obviously takes the killing shot here. Damn, I can't believe Shepard would steal Valor from Joker like that. Unfortunately, the pieces of Sovereign will rain down all over the Presidium. It's a good thing Go. none of this causes indoctrination. One last screw you from Sovereign here. It took a swing at Shepard. I'm pretty sure Rex is fine, but I would definitely be worried about Tally. One suit rupture and she's screwed. Kind of like that we did this with the oldest and youngest members of the squad. It's over. You're safe now. Where's the commander? Barton Joe Shepard has met his end in a glorious sacrifice to save the day. Yeah, that's Cap. Shepard is perfectly fine. I was trying to set a little mood here, Donald, but fine. Ruin the whole thing. If Mass Effect 2 is anything to go off of, Shepard dying here would just be ignored and you'd start up as if nothing happened. Okay, Anderson trying to help Rex to his feet like he's not a 700-pound giant space dinosaur is a pretty goddamn funny visual. As if Sovereign could kill us with a little bit of debris, we walk that off. Looks like our arm is broken, but it's nothing but a flesh wound. Now that's a fucking hero shot, Barden Joe Shepard the goat. Look at that goddamn smile, man. Ah, 
Uh, Udina jump We've scare. Got your message, Ambassador. What's all this about? No need to get worked up, Captain. I'd like to end this meeting with all my teeth still in place. You should thank me for what I did. Uh, why is the sovereign the theme playing here? Kind of ominous for what should be a I happy ending. Captain, we did kind of just kill the council know? and a That's bunch of other people too. So here. now humanity we gets to claim to its rightful place at the top. To the council. Commander Shepard did the right Damn straight, thing. I did the right thing. Okay, so Udina is about to propose we fill the council with nothing but humans and we'll have a human chairman. And while that's a nice idea and all, it makes absolutely no goddamn sense. None of the council races would ever allow humanity to just suck up all the power without a struggle. For some reason, this situation frames the other races as if they don't have entire fleets back home to exercise their power. The council was always holding us back. When I saw the opportunity to get rid of them... That is a crazy thing to admit out loud. Even Anderson was left even flabbergasted by that so one. And he's Captain usually on our side for everything. True. Sacrificing the council assured our victory over sovereign. I hate the that being a hard ass puts me in alignment with Udina, but that's the cost of being a true renegade. Will you pick Udina as counselor, Donald? Absolutely the hell not. Udina is just going to end up there anyway, and on top of that, Anderson doesn't like the job. Listen, I get all that, and I do feel bad for putting Anderson in this situation, but he's going to have to take one for the team. There's one thing that the history books will show, and it's that the first human counselor was David Anderson, not Donald Udina. We can't let this snake be first in the records. I can respect that. plates to bring them in line. The other species are scared. They've never faced anything like this before. They don't know what to do. They want us to step forward. That's a fitted cap. I guarantee the Turians are not in favor of letting humanity Your run things. The birds are just going to have to accept that we're the new galaxy the police force. Of the council. That's what humans are capable of. That's how we can defeat the Reapers. Udina really talking about all this stuff when he about damn near prevented Shepard from saving the day by grounding us. Well, he's a career politician. It's not surprising that Udina isn't exactly very self-aware. right. I may not like it, but we can't deny the truth. Given everything you've done, Commander, the Alliance will want to know who you think our chairman Interestingly enough, the Council decision used to not be saved in the original Mass Effect. When you imported into Mass Effect 2, you we could just change your mind answer. when you spoke to Miranda. Someone like Captain Anderson. Unless you had the Mass you Effect Genesis case. comic, of course, then Captain, you'd make your choice you there. For this? However, I believe it saves in the legendary edition instead. I'm surprised. Doesn't Udina do usually right disagree with Anderson being so the counselor? Now? I think he only does that when you save the council. It seems he's more mellow when he's trying to set up the whole human council. After all, Anderson being the chairman doesn't mean Udina can't still be on the council. God, I wish they had gone through with the fully human council idea. It would have been so sick. Shepard's right. We're headed for war with the Reapers. If we lose, it's the end of all life as we know it. And no other species in the galaxy truly understands what it will take to survive. All this bluster from Anderson just for us to spend the majority of Mass Effect 2 not actually dealing with the Reapers directly. Mass Effect 2 trades plot progression for character progression, and I'm here for it. Yes, sir, look at that renegade backdrop. A perfect fit for this Commander Shepard. Hard to believe it, but we finally did it, boys. Mass Effect 1 is complete. With no romance, all because Joe had to be a jackass. We could have romanced Liara, but no. Come on now, none of that. This is supposed to be a happy occasion. Yeah, real easy for you to say when you weren't wrong. You two are going to have to achieve peace before we get to Mass Effect 2. We can't afford to be divided there. We could lose out on good endings. We'll figure it out, Barry. Well, we're back where it all started. This has been a great experience. The journey in Mass Effect 1 has ended, but don't worry. This isn't the last you've seen of us playing together, despite all the arguments and disagreements. We'll pick things back up with Mass Effect 2. The journey of Barden Joe Shepard isn't over yet. I knew you'd warm up to the name sooner or later, Joe. Let's not get crazy. Still can't believe our Shepard looks like Mr. Potato Head. OK, all right. Well, you guys know how it goes. Stay safe out there. Drink plenty of water. Get some sleep, and we'll see you. For Mass, Mass Effect, Effect 2. Effect 2. Joe, goddammit! I didn't have much faith, and I'm still disappointed. Give me a break. It's been a long video, and I'm tired.